Why? Let's go! This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fuck, then come. Hello, beautiful people. It is Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, October 25th, 2022. And this sports show starts right now. Football it is glorious because football provides us with all of the emotions. We get excited, we get happy, we get sad, we get mad. But today we're mostly glad because a friend of ours had a night that nightmares are literally made of. Yeah. AQ Shipley will be on the stage all day today on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. We'll go in the trenches with him later. AQ, it's great to Let's see you. Baby, Let's AQ. go. Let's go. Let's One go. half of the hammer, Don Cowboys, Tone Diggs is here. I can't wait to hear what your big brain is thinking about the state of the NFL and the game last mm -hmm. night. The Toxic Table is here at Ty Schmidt and at Boston Connor. Last night, the Chicago Bears. Bird out. At Viva Lazito. That's right. Yep, Chicago perhaps. Bears fan. Oh, yeah. A president was on with the Mannings last oh, night. Yeah. Don't sleep on Barry O. What a dream come true <laughs> yeah, for yeah. Zito yeah. last night was. The Bears beat the Patriots 33-14 in Gillette Stadium. <laughs> the Bears get a massive win in halt or delay. Bill Belichick passing Papa George Hallis for the number two overall Love in wins there. for a head coach in NFL's history. And before we talk about the game, let's hop on a train from just yesterday. You say could, I just don't think we can put it at could anymore. I think we will see him oh. tonight move up to 325. <laughs> I do, I'm legitimately, I haven't been this confident oh, no. in a Patriots game in two, three years. Legitimately. Oh, oh no! no! Setting up for you to oh, be yeah. me and Todd. Sure, yeah, sure, you, that's fine. It could be, but let's keep in mind, we have all watched the Bears on primetime. The Bears just are not a good football team. Oh, no! I that might be 41 to 3, one extra field goal. Alternate spread, wow. are you going to change it a little bit after seeing the fog over there? Yeah, this morning I took him at 13 and a half. Before the show, I took him at 20 and a half. And then after the show, I'll take him at 28 and a half. Oh, oh no! no! How much Bill loves football history. What better way to honor George House, an all-time great coach, by beating the fuck out of his team? Give me a good night. 325 wins. What a fucking dog. Oh, no! no! Lose to the Bears tonight. Been, don't better, lose to the Bears. Don't worry. Don't worry. You hear me? Don't worry. You better, know what I'm going through today. You better not fucking oh, lose to the Bears. I don't know what you're going through because we've never had a big dumb dipshit as a head coach. Oh, oh my God. Oh, no. Sorry. You lose to the Bears? Sorry. You lose to the Bears? Yeah. Guess what we're going to be saying about Bill Belichick. What's that? Yeah, this guy was once a good head coach. Now yeah. what is he? Oh, he's just a miserable big dumb dipshit. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Turns out Matt Patricia's a better offensive coordinator than every single team in this room. Think about that. <laughs> Think about that. Oh, no! It was fantastic to abort the Oh No Express. Connor, your team got its ass beat last mm. night. <laughs> you had so much confidence going into that Monday night football matchup that was supposed to be historic. You repeatedly, like we just saw on the train there, yeah. just banked on it, banked on it, banked on it. Here we are, Tuesday, October 25th. Your team's fucking dead. You guys lose to the Chicago Bears no. on oh. Monday night football? Wow. Oh, oh no! no! Your thoughts, Connor? At home, nonetheless. He was the Chicago Bears in. Monday Night Football. You know, it is what it is. Football is football. You know, yesterday you said, you know, all these things that happened the week before doesn't matter for the next week. And here we are proving that that is true because the Patriots have looked so good these last two weeks before yesterday. And the Bears have not. And then we come out on a, on a night that was supposed to be remembered forever for the Patriots. Realistically, you know, not only is Mac Jones coming back, maybe – re-establishing himself as the future of the New oh, England no. Patriots. Oh, Not no. only did Bill Belichick get a haircut from the photo that you posted, oh, no. he looked unbelievable. Not only were you know we were supposed to set that record for Bill Belichick oh, against the team, no. passing the coach of the team that he coached for, oh, but no, we got our asses no. kicked. And not only did the minus 13 and a half alternate spread hit, bet not hit, 
Not only did the minus 20 and a half spread bet not hit, what? not only did the minus 34 and a half bet spread what? did not hit, uh, none of my bets hit. And because of that, I will not be able to gamble at FanDuel or anywhere for the rest of my life, I don't think, because of those <laughs> losses. However, you know, it's a humbling experience. I'm very glad that we, we're getting this game out of the oh, way. Oh, listen to this. Wow. Okay. Oh, the humble corner. Week seven. Ty, you sit next to him every single day on the toxic table, and are you, you're going to look ahead? Is that what you're about to do? Did I hear you were about to just move on? You were going to look ahead? Oh, of course. We're always on to New York, but I'm just saying I'm glad that we're getting this game week seven and not, you know, week 15, so the wheels really do. Uh, you guys, I mean, that was an embarrassment last it night. It was. Okay? And I'm not saying it's an embarrassment because they lost to the Bears. The Bears appear to have a weapon in Justin oh, Fields. Oh, yeah. And our sources have told us that Justin Fields maybe did ask for a little bit more opportunity to run the rock Storm because the we office. we had <laughs> stormed. The there you go. <laughs> Sounds like Is that it. the actual information? Right into Getsy's office, he stormed in, kicked the door in, and said. I want more run plays. Okay. I want to win. And that's an interesting thing because a lot of quarterbacks are saying, I don't want to run the ball as much. I don't want to take as many shots. I don't want to be hurt. I want to think about the longevity of my career. And what we were saying after the last Bears game is, you know, longevity of a career is good. But if you can be great, you're going to make a lot more money. Your career is going to be a lot better. Yeah. They need to utilize what makes Justin Fields potentially great, and that is he is a specimen. He is a great athlete. He runs hard, has good vision, and seems to be a little bit of a dog no. in the open field. They started drawing up plays for him to run. I think we'll look at a couple in, in the trenches later with A.Q. Shipley. But Justin Fields showed up and showed out on Monday Night Football. The Bears' defense did as well. Bailey Zappi got a couple shots in. Mac Jones did not. Mm. Mm. Not even a few. I mean, he got benched early. Ask Ian Rapport, how long's the leash? How long's the leash, <laughs> you know, on, mm -hmm. yeah. on old Mac Jones? And he laughed and he said, well, if Mac throws three picks, we all know what we're all going to be saying and what's going to be happening. Didn't need to do three. Only threw one, had two other three and outs, and that motherfucker was out of the goddamn game. Bailey Zappi's in there. Bill Belichick spinning a web that that was planned all along. We're going to play both quarterbacks in the second half. Just got a little bit out of hand. There's no reason to put our quarterback just, just came back off injury in the game. Whatever the case, miscommunication seemed to be everywhere. Bailey Zappi said he didn't know he wasn't starting until we all found out that Mac Jones was starting, and that was like at the kickoff of the game, right. actual game time decision. Very interesting stuff happening out of New England. I think we can all agree on that. This isn't normally the New England Patriot way. There's a little disarray. Uh -huh. There's a little miscommunication. And do you hear the way he's speaking, Todd? Do you think the fans noticed that and they've quit on the season already, Todd? Yeah, I think so. I mean, that's the one nice thing about, you know, like our situations is, hey, that happens on Sunday. You get over overreaction Monday, and then you can kind of put that to bed, and then you start looking ahead to the next week. When you lose on Monday Night Football oh, in primetime. Yeah. Only game in town. Only Every game team. in town. and you Yeah, and you look as bad as they looked last night. You got a one-way ticket to Poopsville, and and, that, and that's boom. yeah, boom. on the Oh No Express. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the Oh No Express. Uh, yeah. one-way ticket to Poopsville, boom. boom, and you're plopping right out of the cave. That's right. The Oh No Express is coming out of the cave because you think the lights at the end of the tunnel. You're getting there. It is hellacious in the Oh No Express in the middle of that tunnel. You see nothing. It's pitch black. Then you see the light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, things are happening. Then once you get out there, guess what? Poopsville. Boom. Boom! It's not the light at the end of the tunnel. It's actually a fucking train coming back the other way. That's right. That is what the Oh No Express is, and it felt like the Patriots were on it all night last mm -hmm. night, Todd. It did. Well, and, you know, I mean, Connor just yesterday was thinking, hey, I'm, a, I'm on a first-class ticket, you know, flying uh, Qantas Air to, to wherever my next destination yep. is. He's on uh, Drake Air? Exactly. Uh -huh. He's on Drake Air. He's sipping, eating caviar, drinking oh, champagne. Oh. Right? Oh. We're going to the playoffs, and then this morning. He's got a coach seat on the Poopsville train to Poopsville. Boom. <laughs> and, and it's not fun, but that's the way it goes. That's the NFL, baby. That's the NFL, baby. I mean, it's wild. We were talking about it yesterday. You know what would make sense for this NFL season was if the Bears would beat New England yes. on Monday night in Gillette. Yep. Because the way New England was going and the way the Bears were going, like trying to figure it out, are they going to be a team? Are they not going to be a team? They're still below 500, but fucking A, if I'm a Bears fan, shout out to Barry O and Viva Lazito. Oh, yeah. Fair I think, like, you have a lot of promise for what Justin Fields could be, what the offense could be. There was a play last night, AQ, like, as soon as he came in, he said, hey, let me show you something. Justin Fields makes a check. It was supposed to be like a run or whatever. Sees a blitz coming, makes a check, calls a screen. We're fucking out the gate for a touchdown. Yep. Like, that's Justin Fields taking command of the offense, having confidence enough to fucking do it, as opposed to the conversation being, he's trying to figure out how to breathe in big moments, yeah. which was happening this season, which is a bit alarming. But, yeah, on this particular play, you go back to the beginning of that thing. AQ pointed this out. I guess we don't have the very, very beginning. But at the very beginning of that play, he sees the blitz coming from Bentley, I believe, on the right side. Mm -hmm. They kind of come in, and he makes a check like this to 
to his helmet. Old tight end, because he realized the message. It was probably supposed to be a different play. They turn it into a screen outside. We're out. Boom. Touchdown. That's Justin Fields reading the defense, having confidence to call it, making the right call, and then them executing and fucking scoring. Like, if you're a Bears fan, how much different is this than the last, like, what, seven years, basically, other than the year where oh, the yeah. double doink happened, where you had no hope for the offensive side of the ball? Feels like on Monday Night Football against the Patriots, who are always going to have a good defense, who are always going to have a good scheme. Remember, they make you play left-handed. That's literally what people say about Bill Belichick's defenses. The Bears were able to fucking move, and Justin Fields was able to operate. And him showcasing the run and then planning some more runs. I think the Bears fans should be very pumped about what they saw last night, AQ. Do you think so too? 100%. I, th I think that was awesome to watch. It was really cool to see because you're right. Bill Belichick takes away what you want, what he wants you to take away, right? And so they have not shown this. This was literally Getsy Fields getting together and saying, hey, listen, we need to do this. So they have not shown a ton of QB runs. They have not shown a ton of this read option stuff. And so when they come out, Belichick hasn't seen it. And it hits, and it was cool to see. It is. So is that what people are going to start doing to Belichick? Hey, he's mm. going to make his play left-handed. Cool. We know that. Let's put a whole new fucking game plan in yeah. here that might make our team better than it's ever been, and we might use this going forward. If Justin Fields is going to be the runner, and if Justin Fields is going to be the threat that he's going to be that he showed he could be last night, mm. are you fucking worried, Darren Green Bay, about the fucking Bears? Mm. Are the Bears being a problem for you as well? Well, we'll see. I mean, they have the same record as as the Packers right now, but it does – like – Hopefully he can stay healthy, but you watch that last night. It is kind of like shades of Robert Griffin before he got hurt. You know, it's like he, he has great arm talent. I don't know about him, you know, throwing like the... He threw a dart last night, though. There was a fucking... He threw like a javelin last night. That yeah. I, I was like, damn, okay, guy's got an absolute hose. In it. And he can throw the deep ball. So it's like if you have to account for that, and then also it's like, hey, at any point, whether it's a design run or a scramble, like this guy can get 10 yards, 12 yards anytime he wants. Did you guys think, what, are you guys hurt? Or was it, what, what do you think it was last night that made you guys look so inept against the Chicago Bears in 2022? I was also told the best D-line ever yesterday, by the way. By who? Oh, by Boston Connor over there. Oh, Boston Connor? Right over there, yep. Don't Don't know guy. This guy? That guy right there. He said the best D-line of all time. What happened? What, what did happen? Last I mean, aside from Judon, our best D-lineman was out, but they lost their starting center, I mean, two plays into the goddamn Love game. You, so it really doesn't make that That's big a of a sad, difference. That was a sad ride. Yeah, though. yeah. They need not show, <clears throat> I mean. Yeah, what are we doing? Just respect. Can we get a far angle of him getting carted off and just say, He's getting carted mm -hmm. off. I'll just let you know. He d he looked like just a sad, sad man, which, by the way, he's getting carted off. It's a terrible time in his existence. Home team only because the away guys can't even give the thumbs up to the crowd on the way out. You yeah. Know, like, that's a good moment when a guy for the home team gets injured and he can give, like, a salute or a thumbs up. You don't get that. Hey, Lucas, we hope you're all right. Hey, sorry about it, man. Peace, 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 peace. Godspeed on the recovery. Um, but, yeah, he's out, and they still were able to do their thing against the Patriots. Yeah, I mean, they beat the fuck out of us, and we might stink. We might be middle of the pack, and that's why, you know, I'm so grateful for teams like the Buffalo Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs because if there weren't those two who are just levels above everybody else in the AFC, it would be heartbreaking right now. For instance, if you're a Bengals fan or a Chargers fan or you can even probably throw the Ravens in there, Having those guys during this era of Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes is going to be so such a bummer for those this fan bases, those here, cities, isn't it? Because oh, yeah. they're going to be heartbroken for the next ten years, and I don't have to be heartbroken anymore because every year I can go in and say, "There's no way we're winning the realistic Super Bowl this realistic expectation." Exactly. Same and why thing. is that? Because Tom's not there anymore. I, I don't know. Because is that what it is? Well, is that what it is? Patriots, is that what it is? Patriots is it because Tom isn't there anymore? Is that why you guys aren't good anymore? Is that why you have no expectations going in? Patriots have the same record as Tom Brady and the Bucks, So I wouldn't say go that far just yet. But it is a much different team when you don't know who the guy is at quarterback. Like the, the team you saw so last the quarterback the controversy happening yeah. in New England, not just in the media, in the locker room as well. Yes. The team had no idea what's going on. Yeah. And I assume that this was just Bill's idea, a way to motivate and keep everybody uh, fresh and not judging anything and just going to work. Matt gets work on Saturday. I guess Bailey Zappi got to work all the other days. And then when Bailey Zappi comes in, he throws one ball down the left side, incredible catch. Then the touchdown that he throws, incredible connection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. But everything got better 
for the Patriots as soon as Bailey Zappi went in. It was like a zap of electricity whenever old Zappi came into the Patriots. Now, that certainly fizzled off and did not do much the entire second half at all. But that's an interesting situation to be happening in New England of all places with the greatest coach and GM of all time, knowing that that type of shit doesn't normally lead to success in the NFL. College, maybe. NFL, I don't think a quarterback controversy is a good thing to have in the middle of the season. AQ, your thoughts on it? Not a good thing at all. I mean, you cannot do the platoon system. So if that's their game plan going forward, which he said it was, right? That's basically what Bill was saying. Was like, yeah, eh, it's playing all. Who knew that? Us. Me. Anybody else? <laughs> no. Okay. It's so was it a plan or was off. it just your idea? Yeah. Because if it's in your head, did like Matt Patricia, Joe Judge knew that they were gonna they were gonna be rotating, and is it just after each pick he was gonna change back to the other person? And when Zappy did, it was already out of control. So he was like, uh, we already lost. Like what? I don't. I don't think I understand at all how he's gonna sell what he was thinking. But he doesn't have to sell it. No. 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 He doesn't have to sell it at all. But nonetheless, you don't expect that type of shit to be happening in a New England camp at all. I Ever. Think, over the last 20-some years. No, because that. also, like, if Max starts 9 of 10 for, you know, 120-some yards and throws a touchdown, like, he's not getting benched. He's staying in the game, and he's going to continue, you know. It, it just it makes no sense. Like, he, he got benched because he wasn't playing worth the shit. Yeah, well, that's not what Bill said. And is Bill saying that because he might go back to Mac here after how Zappy did, and he has to keep Max, you know, moxie? He's right, got to yeah. keep his level confidence. of confidence at something, so he goes back in there. I did enjoy, I did enjoy a left hand high five from Mac. Does that? Yeah, great, smiling. Because Mac, you know, from all counts, right? Everybody likes him. Yeah, yeah except for, for sure. that one fake um, story about Mac not being liked that came from somebody who worked at the stadium or something. Yeah, yeah. DM to a DM. from a random guy to a quote unquote insider, which could create a dangerous narrative to create out of nowhere, especially with how and what that guy was going through. Yeah. So very interesting that that one just went unchecked and let everybody think of, oh, Mac, not a good teammate, even though he is, by all accounts, oh, yeah. right? Everybody absolutely loves the guy. Yeah. I mean, Jacoby Myers came out and said something about Mac working as hard as he could to get back, and then he gets booed. Zappy chance happened. Disgusting. Then he gets back. Yeah, Jacoby said it was disgusting, right? Oh, I said it's disgusting. Oh, Jacoby said it was ugly, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, you said it's disgusting. I Zappy Chance, first three and out. Yeah. Uh -huh. This dude just got back. There's Zappy Chance faintly. I thought it was Bailey they were chanting. It was clearly Zappy because of the later mm -hmm. chance that I had heard. But as they were going to break, it was a faint. I'm like, well, I actually went back. I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Are they already doing this? Because just a couple years ago, when he came into a preseason game in the third quarter, the place went absolutely crazy. Yeah. Guy makes a Pro Bowl. We're going to a Super exactly. Bowl. Oh, how things can change in three fucking weeks. This yeah. guy yeah. is now getting somebody else to chant it. That's the NFL. That's the name of the game. But I thought I found that to be wild. Um, but it's because of how much success Zappy was having. Yes. And Zappy comes in, has immediate success. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this is about to be a runaway. The Bears hold, mm -hmm. hold, 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 <clears throat> and fucking come back. Not only just come back, come back and dominate. And I think that a lot of credit should be given to Eberflus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. He was with the Colts. Wide. A sure. lot of credit should be going to Sirioi. Yeah. Over there in Philadelphia. Really? He was with the Colts. Sure. You know? So that's what we do here. Okay, we create great football sure. minds. That's right. And great football coaches. Yeah. Sign old go. quarterbacks who are expensive. All right. And ship those good coaches out. All right. And promised at least two Super That goals. is the – that's – He's deflecting again. That is. Yeah, you are. Don't be – Hey, we're talking about the Colts and their coaching staff. No, we were talking about the coaches who were coaching at other places who just so happened to come from Indianapolis or oh. be a head coach factory like that Washington football team was back in the day. And does our future – Look like theirs. Oh, no. Oh, oh I mean, no. a new name no. would Keep be the sweet. train off. Keep the train off. We do not need to get on the <laughs> oh, O-No Express. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> we do not need to get on the O-No Express yet. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's a chance. Oh, Sam oh, Ellinger, no. he's going to be great. Yeah, he, <laughs> Sam, if, if anyone could save the organization, it's Sam Ellinger. You see this? Fucking 12 different quarterbacks in the last, like, four or five years or whatever? Well, well there's only one look. person to blame for that. Who's What's that? Fucking like Mr. Architect himself. Oh, come on. <laughs> Who's that? I think he's talking about Andrew Luck. Yeah, he's oh. right. No, he got hurt. Oh. He got injured. What do you want? That's like That happens in football. Yeah. Andrew gave his, I think, his liver, his kidney, his shoulder, a bunch of his ribs. Got hurt playing. I assume a spleen. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably. Teeth, certainly amount of time and a brain investment to this team, sure. to the city. He was getting his dick kicked in on a regular basis, and that's not great for – on and off. Of yeah, yeah way to go. He could, he could have retired in April, though, not nine sure. days like before the season started. Well, that is something that if you're 
Chris Ballard and you're being asked about the creation of the team that you got to put together here in Indianapolis. He's probably mentioning that a lot. But that was, you know, we've had some years to correct the cycle is True. what everybody sure. else was saying. True. And 140 some million dollars has been spent <laughs> on quarterbacks. That stat came out from Spotrack. And we yeah. know we've been paying a lot of people. But Luck was a guy. He's a generational player. You got to play alongside of him. You played with a lot of good guys. Luck on the football field was an absolute fucking dude. Incredible. Incredible at football. Incredible. I mean, he was unbelievable. He was so talented. And then you see these injuries happen, and he walks away, and you're like, oh. God, missed he it. could have been one of the best ever. The NFL fans missed it. I, yeah. I think NFL fans missed yeah. out on it. Now, I know you're in Pittsburgh. You're in Iowa. You're in New England. You're in Chicago. Pretty you're up. in Michigan. Bruce is in the Upville. Yep. Dirty's in Virginia. Bill's out here in Indianapolis, so he got to see it. Mm-hmm. I got to see the luck, like the way mm-hmm. luck. He's so, he was so fucking good, so talented. People saw him on primetime, won a bunch of those. People saw him in the playoffs, were able to make a run at that one time until we lost by 50, but people didn't have all the air in the ball. Yeah. So right. you, yeah. you, tell me if that's, you tell me if that's fair or not. Still I got a banner from him. You're damn right, but didn't get to see him on TV as much. So I don't think everybody really fully – they understand that Andrew Luck was good, but I don't think you fully comprehend the motherfucker was mm-hmm. – he was a guy. He was top guy. It would be Mahomes, Allen, and Luck right now at the top of the AFC. Would be fucking epic to watch yeah. if it would have happened. But obviously his career gets cut short because of injuries and also opportunity outside of football that is real high society. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're talking like some of the best jobs on earth. Like people go to school, pay a lot of money to go to school, have to have the best brains on earth to get these jobs that are very high paying. And I think a lot of freedom and a lot of artistic, you know, like everything in there, he just, he just fucking just gets to do like, yeah. am I going to continue to ruin my body? Okay. Potentially brain mm-hmm. with this, or am I going to go take one of the most highly sought after jobs in the fucking world whenever I want it because of how smart I am off a of football field? Like, I think that needs to be talked about a little bit more. Like, Luck was a once in a generation fucking dude. He retires nine days before a season starts because the injury is already accruing again and not wanting to get back into it. And I don't think I've talked to him or anybody has talked to him publicly about what he has and why. And I'm excited for that documentary at some point that's going to yes. come mm-hmm. about how it all unfolded really behind the scenes. But then that puts Ballard into like a desperation mm-hmm. cycle almost. And that desperation cycle got very expensive. And now here we are after week seven in fucking Matt Ryan, who is owed 24 million this year, another 12 and a half or 14 next yeah. year. So like 30, 40 million dollars. He's benched after week seven. And it's like, what does that mean for everything else going on? I have no idea. But maybe Sam Ellinger just goes on a fucking tear. Mm-hmm. Maybe Sam... What did he? What did he do? What's that about? What are you hey, talking? What are you, about? Come on, what Al? Well, there's two things, right? Whoa, whoa, oh, yeah. whoa. No, there's one thing. Sam Ellinger. Yeah. Well, the first thing. We're that back. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's Matt McConaughey. That's right. Yeah. He's tweeting Sam Ellinger. Hell yeah! Look, made for the moment. Moment. Hashtag. Hook them. All right. All right. All right. Hook the him, Colts are fucking McConaughey's team now. Uh, uh, the Colts uh, are running uh, with uh, Sam. Uh, we oh. used to uh, stink, but now we're good again. Cause oh. We're back with uh. Sam and Matt. Let's go, dude. What are you talking about? Why'd you give me a little side eye? You don't think this guy could be the guy? I seen his ass, his trunk. He is huge in the bottom. He is a great athlete. Now, does he have the experience and you know, the understanding of what NFL defenses are, aside from just watching film alongside Matt Ryan and Carson Wentz and stuff like that. No. And is he getting baptized into the NFL in week eight of an NFL season when every team basically says, you really get rolling around week eight, and he's just getting dropped into a team Mm -hmm. that, you know, hasn't really been excellent at much of anything. It's not set up for success for Sam, I don't think. It's not the best situation. But just like McConaughey said, this motherfucker was made for the moment. We're going on a run. You don't believe that. What's that all about? The side on, eye. AQ. AQ. This has nothing to do with his ability or what he may bring. This has everything to do with optics. We talk about optics a lot, do we not? Sure. In sure. exotics. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here's what happened. Yeah. The minute. The minute that was announced yesterday, that entire locker room said we just gave up on the season. 
Which you gave up on the season. Can, can they I don't believe it. They like Sam. They say hook him. Not a chance. Yeah. Not a chance. So does the locker room not watch practice and be like, well, Sam's arm doesn't look like a noodle, so maybe we – I think it. at the end of the day, you go out and you put all your trust, faith, money into Matt Ryan. You make a trade. You go out and do this. This is, hey, we're going to the promised land with this guy. And the minute I you – I thought so. The we minute, were on a train. Uh-huh. The minute you move away it's from that, oh, no. the locker room goes, wow, oh, we're rebuilding now. No. Yeah. No. Not what I – I heard everybody in there said – it's fucking Sam time. Dude. Yeah, that's right. Everybody's just playing. In, everybody. There's fucking stairs from one side of the locker room to the other this Hell morning because yeah. the team rode in on their fucking cows, dude. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? We mailed it in. You this it. guy doesn't know. You have no idea about the power of a Texas Longhorn. Their men's basketball team about to win an Addy. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sam Ellinger about to win some games mm-hmm. for the Colts. University of Texas might become my second favorite fucking university on earth yeah. in a matter of weeks in this entire thing, pal. Tennessee gave me a great morning. Yeah. No great night. App State was very. App State was really cool. Mm-hmm. Kansas also fun. Uh-huh. But well, fucking Texas, I'm a coach of the men's basketball. That's right. So, okay, they gave cool. me a job. What am I supposed to you do? You McConaughey are best friends. Yeah. Hang out on the weekends. Kevin Durant. I haven't met the director of culture, Matt McConaughey, yet. You smoke vitamins with Kevin Durant <clears> probably <throat> after you guys win the natty. Oh, I love Kevin Durant. Yeah, he's the man. And, again, they're not testing for dope in, in the NBA this year. <laughs> so I can make the NBA. That's right. Yeah. So can Foxy. Well, yeah. uh, you know. Foxy fucking 38 to 50 on this Dr. Dish, pal. Yeah, but if, you know, one of the, one of the guys in the NBA puts their shoulder into Foxy's chest, he might die. Oh, you're court. talking about that Kobe. Yeah. I'm uh, putting my shoulder right through yeah. this motherfucker's chest. Yeah. Pal. That was, that was awesome. awesome. And I don't want that, that awesome. to happen. That was awesome. <laughs> He's For America, he did that. That was unbelievable. Uh, for America, he did. And went to, to his brother with him right before, just yeah. to, oh, you pal, it's good to see you. Be pals with him. And then the next day, boom. boom. First play. That's brothers. I guess. I, I mean, that is uh, it's certainly a level of competition that I respect and appreciate people having. And if you keep that into your adulthood, I get even more respect and appreciation for yeah. the amount of effort that takes mm-hmm. to be that competitive all the time. But that's why that mama mentality is something that very few can attain and very few can accomplish. Paul Gasol was probably so fucking what, why Rattled. is falling? <laughs> what, is, what? You guys are going to beat us anyway? What? Yeah. The fuck? What are we Come even? on. Okay, I guess that's cool. Yeah, this is going to be a tough game. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. That's right. So I'm meeting Sabrina mm-hmm. and learning about Sabrina Ionescu. The way she like analyzed, like she's, you know, that's why Kobe and I think that's why Kobe had Kendrick such an affair. Yeah, the way people were talking about her, mm-hmm. we're like, wait till you meet Sabrina, and I'm like, I can't wait. All time leader, triple doubles in all of college basketball. We went 39 and one or something. COVID canceled the national championship. Ooh, yeah. She didn't even get to like experience a national Last championship year. or whatever. Yeah, whenever she was at Oregon, and then now you know she's a world champion, dominant in there. And I asked them, I'm like, what type of, you know, she she's a dog, huh? Like she, and they're like. Uh, yeah, and they broke down this conversation or interaction they had with her after she had, like, I don't know, probably, like, 25, 15, and, like, 11 or something. <laughs> she missed some layup in, like, the first quarter. So then she stuck around in the fucking gym for, like, seven hours afterwards, like, doing the whole thing. I'm like, see, that's the effort level mm-hmm. that nobody else has. Like, th- that takes effort, and everybody technically has it. Everybody mm-hmm. technically can give effort and can control it, but just your mind being like, I will never, ever, ever do that again is just something that not a lot of people have and can attain. I think that's what the separators are. And now it's leading to a very public divorce. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately. You know, when it comes back to our sport, it's hard to turn that off. Competition is a funny thing, isn't it? Dude, competitive drive, some people have. It's insane. Like, look at Bill Belichick. I put that tweet out last night because they were going through all of his accolades, yeah. and we were like, you know, kind of taking a trip through Bill Belichick's fucking life last night on Monday Night Football. And they show this picture of him. Same exact fucking costume. Hoodie, sweats, cut off. Mm -hmm. Looks like an absolute hilarious asshole at what he's doing. The amount of time that this dude has had to invest of his life, not just coaching, right? Coaching takes forever. We talk about how long people that are coaching the NFL, how long they're in their office, how long they're doing whatever they're doing. A lot of people call it desk watching or whatever the case it is, and it's all bullshit. But nonetheless, that is the culture of the NFL, and I think they do that just as much as everybody else, if not more. Then on top of that, he has to out-scheme everybody because he has four different defensive uh, strategies every single game. Offense are changing every single game. But he also has to scout the talent. He's the 
GM. He also has to negotiate with fucking everybody through the week. They're picking up people. They're picking up people during for special mm -hmm. teams because the bottom half of their roster gets hurt or gets cut. They're having workouts. They're having to scout them and sign them. Negotiate with their agent. Well, we want a little bit more guaranteed because we're taking. We have an offer to work out with this team and this team. He has to make all those fucking decisions while coaching and doing the whole thing. And he's done it for like fucking fifty years. He's going to yeah. do it. The amount of time he has invested in the game. Like, I think that is worthy of, like, appreciation. Like, hey, thank you for what you've done thank for the you, game. Thank you, Bill. Love you, Bill. Now you can immediately follow up and say, like, what has his life been other than football? Mm -hmm. And I assume there are moments where he accidentally starts slipping into that thought. But he has that competitive level that everybody – that those people that are at that top level have where it's just – a never-ending pursuit of getting better, doing more, accomplishing it, and just not allowing yourself to ever just get off the mission. That type of shit not a lot of people have, and I think that is what's missed in the conversation about Bill Belichick because he, you know, there was Spygate and, mm -hmm. uh, right. and there was Deflategate. Mm -hmm. That's like fucking 40 years ago. He's still coaching. Yeah. So, so, like, from when Spygate was happening, he's still every fucking day doing the same thing he's been doing for that whole time. That is a full commitment to the game, and I think we should we should say thank you to him every once in a while. Mm -hmm. With that being said, Eberflus and Justin Fields went in there and just fucking ruined his entire Fair celebration enough. evening. Yeah. Dump, There's dump. other people that are doing the same exact thing, but I think what Bill has accomplished, just strictly from a work ethics standpoint, should be commended, personally, I think. Yeah. Well, and we had Sirianni on earlier this year, and he said, you know, like, to be honest, like, I don't have a whole lot of hobbies outside of football. Like, this is what I love to do. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, it's like a lot of people, yeah, they love football, but then it's also, you know, you have, whether it's fishing or, you know, whatever these guys do in the off season. like, I don't think it's crazy to think, like, he loves football more than anything. You know, his kids and his family notwithstanding, but, like, he doesn't have a whole lot of things that he cares about outside of football, and that's fine with that because that's what happens What's when What's the you percentage of people you think are like that? Because you got like two, three from each sport, it feels like, almost like. The one of ones? Like the people that are just like way – because I think it's all competitive. I think it all relates to competitive fire or juices or however you do that. The people that are the most competitive seem to be the people – now you have to have talent. There's always those assholes that have no talent but are super competitive <laughs> and get upset when they lose something. It's like, bro, fucking look in them. You, you stink. Yeah. You stink. <laughs> Yeah, but I hate losing. It's like, well, then fucking don't do this because you stink at this. Like, you see those people at gyms and at workouts and stuff like that, guys getting actually upset. And it's like, like people that get actually mad at golf and let it ruin their entire lives because they're golfing and they're not in a PGA. It's like, yo, bro, you are never going to be at the point. Like, I don't even think your swing could be molded into being, hey, me neither. Hey, you and I mm -hmm. seem to be on, on similar pitch. But allowing that to get there. Like, some people have those competitive juices, but they don't have necessarily the talent. If you know what your talent is and you have that competitive juice that nobody else has, it's like I feel like those are the motherfuckers that break through forever, and those are like the icons. But the amount of sacrifice that their brain forces them to go through yeah. is something that I don't think that's the reason why I think they are what they are. Well, and it's cool for Bill, too, because, like, you've talked about how B.A.'s kid turned 40, and he was like, holy shit, he's 40. I've missed all these years. Bill connected with his dad very well because of the fact that they're both so involved in football, and now both of Bill's sons coach for the Patriots. So even though his life is all football, he still has that, like, other part of it where it's like, yeah, I'm doing this, but I also get to do it with my kids. And Well, that's, that's an awesome thing to tell your kids. Hey, you want to see Dad? Yeah. You're going to have to learn football. Yeah. Pick, a, pick up pick a, a fucking headset. Okay. Yeah. You can play lacrosse with your friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But if we're ever going to really see each other, it's gonna be in this building. you're going to be watching the desk. <laughs> yeah. And if you're watching your desk, you might as well learn what football is. Uh, you were a coach for what? One year? Two years? Uh, I don't even know if it made it a year. It might have been eight months. It's Come a on. different level. That fucking commitment. It's crazy. It it's is crazy. crazy, especially when you don't watch film and then the quarterback yells at you for being a fat bum. Uh, that, that doesn't help either. That happened to you? Never Tom, happened to me. Tom but the did moment, that to you? No, the moment Tom told you that you guys uh, you're so much better than you're fucking playing right yeah. now. <laughs> what the hell? After going to a wedding on Friday night, he did that to you. I didn't. I thought this I year know, was that. the first year That's that that sad. happened. That's sad. No, but there was the very first start I had down in Tampa with Tom. We played in Carolina, and we beat him up pretty good. Ronald Jones, ironically. They just lost pretty good to Carolina. Yeah, they but did. 
Are you the X Factor? Okay. They need Whoa, we'll think of that next yeah. time. Remember that long run next they had? They, they, they put AQ in, and then Ronald Jones ran for like 90 yards. Right up the gut, right up his ass. Right behind right him. Right there. there. Yeah. I remember that. 200 yards rushing. Big day. Big day at the office. But. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> Neither here nor there. But <laughs> at the office. <laughs> but That is your office, isn't it? There was a play the where trenches. there's a lot of stuff what? going on, and I come up, and I make the mic point, and I'm, like, making the call, and then I forget the fucking snap count. Here we go. And mm-hmm. then I'm like, oh, here we go. I'm just not going to snap the ball here. I don't know what it's on, and I don't want to snap it early because I don't want them to scream at me like, you know, other quarterbacks have, right? So I don't snap it. Everybody else jumps. AQ, snap the fucking ball! Nice. I'm like, oh, here we are. I'm in the game now. Uh-huh. I'm in the show. <laughs> I'm right, in the show. Here we go. I did it. I did it. What was that like it. second, third play? Or? No, it was it was later in the game. It was like third quarter. But you, so but luckily you, we had a win at that point. We you were probably okay lead. with it, though, because he was at every practice that year and week and wasn't missing stuff, and That's he was exactly invested right. and stuff. That's exactly right. He was the <clears> ultimate <throat> professional. I don't know what's going on right now. Oh, so if it were to happen like Sunday, you would not be able to take it? No, listen. What I was just I was we don't need to put be this harder to take it. Barbarian be meathead hard. into a spot right now. But the conversations have to be happening. We we talked about it I think yesterday with uh ah, who gives a fuck? I forget who it was. We were talking <laughs> with somebody, AJ and I were talking about how I do like, maybe it was rap sheet. I guess it would have had to have been rap sheet yesterday. Yeah. We're talking about rap sheet about how like those conversations are happening though. Like in meetings, in locker rooms, away from Tom. There's a lot of people going, We appreciate Tom. Okay, we understand Tom's good. We love Tom. Some of us want a Super Bowl because of Tom. But also, like, hey, pal, there's some shit going. That stuff's starting to happen. They got to start winning, you know, or it's going to get <laughs> – I don't want to say it's going to get ugly, but it will get ugly, I think, down there with some people. I honestly believe that it will potentially get a little bit ugly down there. The, the funny thing is winning corrects everything. 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 Like, every little detail that gets exposed when you're losing gets overlooked when you're winning. So – he starts winning, same thing, right? Like in anything. You start winning, all that shit gets forgotten. He talked uh, on his Let's Go podcast yesterday. Took some accountability, it sounded like. Mm-hmm. Excited about uh, turning around and can't wait to hear what Aaron says <laughs> at 2 p.m. today. I'm excited for this conversation. We, in our Aaron Rodgers Tuesday history, this is unprecedented <laughs> third season, mm-hmm. Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Hell right? yeah. First year MVP, a lot of wins. Yes. Second year MVP season, a lot of wins. Mm-hmm. This year they started three and three, and everybody was like, <laughs> mm-hmm. "Haven't had this happen in twenty whatever the case was mm-hmm. for Lafleur and Aaron." This year, under five hundred, first time. Mm. What will Aaron say on this particular Aaron Rodgers Tuesday? Can't wait to hear his response. Yeah, I mean, like I really have kind of listen. They have not looked good. They've looked terrible, and they're about as close to dead as you can be. But then you watch that game last night. It's like any it. team can get fuck any it. team. Yeah, why can't yeah. they beat the Bills on Sunday night? The only difference, I think, is because he's mentioned it. Like, people aren't looking at the Packers and saying, oh, this team fucking sucks. They're three and four. Like, the Packers are getting every team's best shot every single week because they are the Packers and they have Rodgers. But this league is unpredictable. Like, who says they can't win on Sunday? Who and they, says? And they, can't, and they need to. So Joining us now is a man who probably has the answer on whether or not yeah, I'm sure. the Packers are going to turn around. Tampa and Tom are on the same page. What's going on in Seattle? How's vibes in Seattle, mm. especially with the wins that they've been accruing and the way they've been doing it without Russell Wilson? <clears throat> What's going on with Lamar Jackson? How about Chicago? Ladies and gentlemen, the man who knows everything <laughs> about the NFL, Jordan Schultz. Yeah! Oh! Schultz, how you doing? What's up, big time college game day? I see you, big dog. Yeah, Schultz, trying to be like you one day, you know, trying to own one penthouse in New York, not ten like <laughs> your family. But, um, hey, Schultz, how, how, how have you been? We haven't talked to you in a while. What have you been? Just I miss gr- you, man. I'm doing well. Doing well. I miss you guys. All is well. Almost midway through the season. And, uh, listen, I mean, it, it can't ask for a better time of the sports year. I got the playoffs, baseball. My Mariners are out. But, hey, whatever. Who cares? Yeah, the Mariners <laughs> stink. The Mets are out. Pirates Pirates didn't make the World Series this year either. No, Maybe next year. Which is a damn shame. Uh, are you strictly football now, or are you still dabbling in basketball? I didn't hear you even mention the NBA's happening, and I think that's where you used to be, right? I Listen, I am a football guy. I love that gridiron. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I, I still got my hoops background, my, my, my passion, my ability – to be a slow Jewish basketball player who can make threes. I mean, that's always my passion. Hey, respect. Uh, let's dive into the NFL here. Uh, let's talk 
you know, you know a little something about Seattle. I think you have a Seahawks helmet literally right over your right shoulder there. We all know your ties to Seattle with Starbucks, not to be confused with dumb Starbucks. No. Mm -hmm. Actual Starbucks mm -hmm. and Seattle as a whole. Uh, Schultz, what are the vibes like? Yeah, yeah, you yep. love the Seahawks. Yep. Yep. Whoa. Yep. yep. Oh, that's a cool hat. That's a cool hat. You good hair day today, though, too, so don't yeah. put that. That's smart. Yeah. What is the vibe like in Seattle? Because I think going into the season, we all assumed once you trade Russell Wilson away, this year's going to be a wash. 70-whatever-year-old Pete Carroll's going to have to rebuild this team. They were saying, no, 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 we like our team. Now Geno Smith is balling. Pete Carroll seems to be celebrating with everybody. They knew this was going to happen, and what are the vibes yeah. in the building, Jordan? Yeah, I mean, I, w before the season, Patty, I, I was told that we feel, this is the Seahawks, we feel like we're going to be competitive. I know Ian said the same thing. Like, everyone counted them out, especially in the NFC West, but they felt like Geno was going to have a good year, maybe not at this level, but they felt like we're going to be able to run the ball. And I think the two biggest surprises to the outside world, but not internally, are Kenneth Walker and Tariq Woolen. They might be the third team ever to have offensive and defensive rookie of the years. And I mentioned Woolen because... He's a fifth-round pick out of UTSA, 6'4", 220, jumped 40 inches, 42 inches, ran a 4'3". When I talked to DK about him, he basically said, this guy is very similar to me just playing DB. Physically, we're very similar. He's a freak. And then you talk about the, the rookie, Kenneth Walker. This guy was a two-star recruit, goes to Wake Forest, splits carries, ultimately goes to Michigan State, wins the Doak Walker, wins the Walter Camp. Now he's a star, 168 yards, two tutties against the Chargers. Basically, with him, it's like, yeah, it sucks Rashad Penny got hurt, but this guy is one of the few bell cows in the league right now. Like, how many running backs are you seeing getting 25 carries a game? That's him. So you complement that with DK, uh, as well as as well as Lockett, and the, as well as Geno's played, and that's what you're seeing. So DK, uh, he had tests done. He'll be out for a bit, right, with the injury. They have a couple injuries over there in Seattle, right? I mean, I talked to him yesterday. He said he felt good. I know he wants to practice today. Uh, Pete does not want him to practice today. They have the Giants on Sunday. Whoa. I oh, think so it's going to be tough for him to come back and play Sunday considering he has the patella. He's already had knee issue. He had a previous knee issue with the patella. Sunday, I think, is going to be tough, but I know he wants to go. Okay. Huh. So I, I think it's going to be tough. I, I just think realistically, you also mentioned Tyler having some injuries. They have been. This is about the time of the season where we see guys start to get hurt because there's so many injuries piling up in the middle of the year. I, I just, to me, this is a big stretch for Seattle because they've overachieved. They're four and three. Now they got the Giants who are six and one and they've overachieved. But like, I, I almost feel like this is a who's who game. Okay. So hey, Schultz, he's obviously at the bottom of it. Oh, yeah. DK Metcalf seems like he's going to be back next week. Don't expect He's him. in good spirits. I mean, he, you know, he's a competitive guy. Like, he wants to play. It's just, it's tough to play on a knee. Schultz, we appreciate that information. We'll take that into our brains and act accordingly. Good for fucking DK. Go. Yeah. Good for DK, because I think just a couple of days ago, that was a very different vibe. I'm sure. happy he's going to be uh, back. Let's bounce around to another injury, and I don't love, you know, just going injury to injury here. J.C. Jackson's out there uh, yeah. with the Chargers. That's obviously sad. Brees Hall out. Offensive mm -hmm. lineman from the Jets is out. Is there anything that is still waiting, anybody that's waiting on tests that might come out this week that might, you know, also be out for some time here? I would... I would I would just look at Evan Neal with the Giants. Yeah. They're a left tackle, a right tackle out of Alabama. Um, they've really bookended it, right, with Andrew Thomas and Evan Neal. And I think they're still trying to figure out how serious that injury is. They lost Bellinger, their tight end, who's played well. Um, that would be the other one for me. But the J.C. Jackson injury, I mean, he hasn't played particularly well, but they did yeah, they sign him to him, a right? massive yeah. deal. Yeah. And, um, you know, they have high expectations for him, so that, that does hurt them. What a bad experience. The Brees Hall injury is incredibly mm -hmm. sad as well. We'll watch him in Detroit. Good. Yeah, the Brees Hall injury really sucks because he was playing lights out football. Oh, the yeah. Jets had a great one two punch with him and Carter. Oh, but yeah. then they make that move last night that Ian broke to get to bring in James Robinson, a 24 year old back who averages four and a half yards per carry, 18 total touchdowns. He's similar to Brees. Like he can do some of the same things. I don't know if he's quite as explosive, but that was a really big get. And to me, if I'm a Jets fan, I'm fired up because. It shows me Joe Douglas and company are saying, we want to win right now. Well, Woody Johnson has an Instagram account now. Of course, he wants to win right now. He sees those comments. Uh, you uh, you said Christian McCaffrey was going to play 
uh, in the first game there, well before anybody. Hey, hey before anybody else. Hey, go, and we don't know if that was a shot in the dark or an actual <laughs> inside source, but what are you hearing about Christian McCaffrey? <laughs> what are you hearing about Christian McCaffrey's workload going forward? It seemed like when they were giving him the ball, he was having success. And later in the game, if he would have been given the ball, he might have taken some home run shots there because he's just a different type of back. What are you hearing about them going forward with Christian McCaffrey since it appears if you have an inside source? Yeah, it's, it's all out now. I mean, that was – that first game was, let's get him accustomed. Let's try and get Kyle to scheme up some stuff in the red zone. They didn't have a lot of red zone opportunities. The game got away from them. I think they felt like, okay, he's in great shape, but he doesn't really know the playbook at all. So, But I think now moving forward, you know, Christian's a smart guy. I don't just want to say, oh, he's a Stanford guy, but he's a smart dude. He grew up around the NFL, obviously, with his dad, Ed. He really understands football, like, at a high level. It is all out now. I think you're going to be looking at, 20-plus touches a game. They have just Dev Wilson there. They got back Ty Davis-Price, the kid they like at LSU. But this is going to be the Christian McCaffrey show. I cannot wait to watch that with Shanahan. AQ Shipley in the trenches host has this San Francisco 49ers team on it every single week. Mm -hmm. They might lose games. AQ's like, they'll be good in the end. Mm -hmm. In the end, they'll be good. They'll be sound. Ain't that right? I I, I agree. I agree. Okay. Hey. There you go. Let's go. go. Life mine. Thank you. Uh, Connor has isn't it always uh, grain, of, grain of salt with Chelsea? Grain of salt? Uh, <laughs> yep. Yep. All right. Respect. Uh, Connor, your question for Jordan Schultz. Yeah, Schultz, what's the status with what they're thinking with Geno Smith? Obviously, right now they have like a top five pick. Would you see them taking a Strad or a Bryce Young? Or do you think that they're going to sign Geno and kind of ride with him these next few years? That's, that's one of the biggest questions in the NFL. You know, he's basically making three and a half million this year, he signed a one year deal. He's 33, and I think on paper, 32, I think on paper, you would say, well, Seattle's probably going to move forward with the quarterback. I I don't necessarily think that's the case. I'm not saying they're not going to consider drafting a quarterback in the top five, uh, but this is a guy in Geno Smith who has played like a top eight guy. You know, he has, not only is he not making mistakes, but he's winning you games. You know, I think the Arizona game is a good example where he didn't have his fastball, but he did just enough. They're calling enough plays for him to entrust him with the offense that tells me Shane Waldron, uh, the OC, and Pete Carroll really believe in what he's doing. I think if Geno had his way, they would love to find an extension this season. Like, let's not let it wait till the offseason. I don't know if, if John's going to do that, but I can tell you that Geno wants to be there long term. Like, if you think about him, he's very comfortable in the offense. He loves the city. I talked to him last week. Like, he's a happy guy right now. He would love to be there long term. I don't know if they're quite there yet, though. Jay Z fly out to talk to Schneider, get that deal done. I mm-hmm. believe uh, Gino is part of Rock Nation. I believe mm-hmm. yeah, still yeah. is one of the first signings. I think of Rock Nation. Excited yeah. to see if he can get the long term deal done. Bringing Will Anderson. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I also saw Bruce Irvin. I think is playing for them again. I fucking love Bruce that. Bruce Irvin's back, but also Gino Wasserman now. Wasserman guy. Oh, he left Rock Nation. I think he's it. I'll, I'll just say Wasserman. Let's just leave it at that. It's not Jay Z. I don't guy. think I know what Wasserman. Wasserman aren't they an advertising agency or no? No, Wa- Wasserman's got a ton of dudes. Yeah, no, they got. Oh, they, got, they, they got your guy Najee Harris. Nosh, 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 Wasserman. Okay, here we go. Hey, congrats, Wasserman. Go, Let's get that deal done for Gino. Let's get that yeah. guy paid. He's found a home. He's throwing darts. He's playing the best he's ever played. And thanks to Rock Nation taking a shot on Gino. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, thanks for everything. Thanks Thank for all you. the business. Thank you, Rock Nation. Thanks for all the business, everybody. Tony, your question for Jordan Schultz. Schultz, there's a lot of uh, big names being thrown out here before the trade deadline. What's uh, what? A couple big names you're looking at that you think may might get dealt here. What are you hearing? What are you hearing, Schultz? What's the oh, temperature? I like that. Um, bigger than McCaffrey? No, I, the, it's the, already, the happened, name, already the happened. The guy that's come up the most that when I talk to teams is Brian Burns. I mean, a, a, the whole league wants him. And oh, Carolina, like everyone thought when that rule got fired, this was going to be a full-on fire sale. I don't think they ever really thought that. I believe they were offered two ones for Burns and turned it down. Um, he is someone what? that the entire league, feels like is a superstar. But I think you start to think, okay, is there anybody else in Carolina? The name that comes to mind is Derek Brown. You know, third-year guy to Auburn, has kind of quietly played really well, former first-round pick. I wonder if he would be available. The Panthers do like him, but if you think about the right asking price, that would be someone that I would I would feel like maybe a little bit more realistic to get dealt uh, and a guy that teams do like. So you think about two defenders there. Uh, obviously, Denzel Mims, as we mentioned, mm-hmm. Kadarius Tony. I, I, you know, 
Darius Slayton's another guy, but the Giants really like him. Um, I think I, if I'm the Packers, I, I'm going to go out and try to get a wide receiver. Obviously, Randall's hurt. You know, Dobbs been up and down. Watson's been a little bit hurt. They need a receiver. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they go after something. Yeah, Lazard, I believe, is a little bit injured yeah. as well right now. Um, Brian Burns, they turned down two ones. For, they're not going to trade him, right? That no. that that was no, basically – that was sending a message to everybody whenever that gets leaked publicly. Like, hey, the Panthers have turned down two ones for a trade request for Brian Burns. That was them telling everybody, we're not trading this guy, right? Yeah. I assume that's what you're – how you read that as well and your people? Yeah, it, it, well, or, or like if you want him, you know – Pony up even more. Like, we're this is not. He's 26. He hasn't gotten paid. I think they feel like he's going to be a part of the long term, long term future. Jeremy Chin. That would affect. Um, I, yeah, I think you're probably right, Pat. Yeah. So I, if I'm giving up more than two ones and I got to pay the guy, that sounds like a terrible deal. Yeah. But I mean, he's a player. He's a hell of a player. Another free agent that is out there who hasn't signed with anybody yet, but the Chiefs. You know, they refigure. Travis Kelsey's contract to open up $3.455 million. Then it comes out that that had nothing to do with the man I'm about to ask you about. Odell Beckham Jr., yeah. does he still have his options? You talk to OBJ, you and Schultz and OBJ chit-chatting I, I, a little bit? Full transparency, have not talked to OBJ, but have okay. talked to people around him. And Ooh, I know the Rams still have his good. rights, per se. I, I just I think given what's, it's, what's happened, I, I would be surprised if he, if he ends up back in L.A., uh, from what I was told, his rehab has gone well. He's getting closer. He's he's not there yet. But what a coup it would be for a team like Green Bay, who we know liked him last season, right, to bring him in for, for what they hope to be a stretch playoff run, a vertical guy who was probably going to be the Super Bowl MVP before tearing his ACL. So I think Green Bay's on that radar. radar. You mentioned Kansas City. I know Travis really wants him there. And that would make a lot of sense to add him and, and KC as well. I think every player wants OBJ on their team. You yeah. just said that Rams have his rights. That's not is that that's the first I'm hearing that. I didn't know that. I, I just thought they had the opportunity to exercise it if they wanted. That was my understanding. But um I don't think I think it's irrelevant now because I just don't think he's gonna end up there. I don't think they have that. Do they? Is that right? Okay. I don't know. No, you tell me. I don't that was you were the first that's the first time I've ever heard I, that. Are you hundred percent sure they, of that? I, I thought if Les and Sean wanted to bring him back, they had the opportunity to have you know first go, if you will. But I guess maybe maybe I maybe I was told wrong. Ah, Schultz, I don't know that. That would be a big piece no, of information. I, I'm pretty yeah. sure. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's the case. But I, but again, I just you know I don't see that happening. I to me the best case scenario that'd be a massive piece of information. Yeah. If that way, if that was true, that's a big piece of information on this OBJ watch show, Schultz. Like I think. Like, you just dropped kind of a bomb in the middle of that thing. And if you're saying – I've never heard that before. Maybe it's like if OBJ – if they want him, that's where OBJ wants to be. Maybe it's that Oh, time. you think like it's – he was told like OBJ wants to be in a Ram. So if the Rams say, hey, we want you back, he's going to go, go there. there. Contractually, though, saying the rights thing, that's a whole different story. No, 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 no. no. I, also, they, they kept his locker, dude. Like, they – they had really felt like there was a real chance for him to come back. They kept his locker open. Leave the light on. It was at Sean's yeah. wedding. Ooh. Like yeah. they, they had open communication. But you know, OBJ is the one that tweeted out like they offered me nothing, basically. So, so then they had to make an offer. So that means the rights weren't there. Got it. Yep. Boom. All right. So he can go anywhere the fuck he wants. That's right. Uh -huh. he, can, he can go. Yeah, he's a free agent. Yeah. But you just said his rights. Never mind, Schultz. We're on. We're saying the same thing. We're saying the same thing. You and I. I think we're saying the same thing. We are now. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Ty, your question for old Schultz. Schultz, what about uh, a guy like Jerry Judy, who now there's kind of a little fire that he might get moved? Do you think there's any validity to that? What would that, you know, cost compensation wise? And also, are you hearing any rumblings about Nathaniel Hackett potentially getting shit canned here soon if the Broncos don't turn oh, things gosh. around? I mean, the, the the dumpster fire of all dumpster fires has been Denver. You mentioned Judy, a guy that quietly has been discussed from other teams is KJ Hamler. Um, I think you know the asking price for him is less. He's a speed guy, hasn't really been ingratiated to the offense. Um, I think when you're talking about Judy, a former first round pick who's still on his rookie deal, uh, uh, the asking price would be extremely high, a two or a three. Um, it, that's a lot to give up. And in terms of Hackett. My understanding was they wanted to give him as much a runway as possible. This was before the season to really develop that relationship with Russ that he had with Aaron, you know, that, that allowed Aaron to vouch for him and say, this guy's a, a legit coach. You know, he, he, he's really, he knows what he's doing essentially. So I would be very surprised 
if if Hackett does not keep his job through the season. I'm not saying that's the right thing because I think he's in over his head, but I can tell you that they feel like there's no upside to them firing him right now. They have a massive contract with him. It would be a huge buyout. I just don't see it happening. Uh, Now, obviously, they have the ownership that has the money to buy Mm -hmm. out of whatever, and they weren't the ones that necessarily decided for this particular deal. But firing a guy seven games in would be awesome. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, we've we've seen enough. All right, we're with I, Russ anyways. For whatever reason, we got to move on. I just seen you put a tweet out there. You're doing a show with AJ Dillon. What is that? Is that a weekly thing? How's it? Where, no, where? we just we, we we just got off, and um, he's he, I, have you had him on? He's a great guy. Oh phenomenal. yeah, sauce, dude. Yeah, phenomenal. I mean, you know what he, he said? My my quads are for are for go, not show. I'm 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 here to run people over. I am the quad king, not Saquon. He told me he he uh, he, said. <laughs> he squatted six fifty as a high school senior. Yep, remember it. That's a lot of weight, mm-hmm. which is insane. I was there, yeah. Uh, or six thirty, whatever it was. So, um, but no, one of the things he said was too that that stuck out was, you guys know this. I don't think fans know this is how funny Aaron is. Like he said, you know people view Aaron as, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers, super serious guy, but he's like the greatest. He's a great guy to hang out with. And he said one of his first experiences in training camp, he has Bakhtiari, Randall Cobb, and they're joking around. And he comes in, he's going to try to be all serious in the huddle for his first time. He's next to Aaron Rodgers. And that was his first, like, welcome to the NFL, where it's okay to joke around if, if, you know, you're you're doing your job. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I can't wait to listen to it. I appreciate you joining us. How's Starbucks doing? You guys okay? (laughs) You guys everything okay, Starbucks? We're doing all right. Um, I see you got one of your little refresher, lesser things there. What is What is that? (laughs) You're a pig, dude. Okay, this is a green tea. This is a green tea, Okay. One Splenda in there. You know, when you put all that shit in there, all that soy, loy, almond stuff, it's 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 sugar. I don't put anything in it. No liquid cane sugar. Would oh, you guys straight. sneak into okay. these drinks? You guys sneak uh-huh. into these drinks? Sneaking you guys sneak yeah. into yeah. no liquid time. cane sugar? Batting up the kids in, in America. Why, why don't you Bullshit. make it a little bit more apparent that you guys are sneaking in liquid cane sugar? I'm I, doing I keto. I'm like, give me the green tea. And I'm drinking. I'm like, this is so good. Then I do a little Googling. They're like, you got 700 grams of sugar. Yeah, it's this like, is why you got people super gluing themselves to your desk. Yeah, yeah. this is what happens because you guys are sneaking liquid cane sugar into these things. Anyways, no liquid cane sugar. Uh, give me one Splenda, and I'd like a little extra ice to keep this thing cold. Now, right. I did see a video that if I can get a cup that's this big, I can dump it into a cup that's this yeah, big. Ex- yeah, yeah. You can save 28 cents. Why are you guys doing this? Why, you guys, why, 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 you guys, why don't you make this one big? Why are you guys ripping 28 cents off of people, Schultz? I have, a, I have a question. I have a question. Yeah, when I, am I allowed to come to Indianapolis, check out the new studio? When, when is this going to happen? Whatever, dude. What are you talking about? Yeah. Nobody yeah. whenever. Immediately. I, I just, I didn't know if, listen, I, now that you're doing the game day, I didn't know if you allowed people <laughs> like me to come into the studio. Like what me? That what, what does that even mean? What Like me? What, what does that even mean, Schultz? What, what, insiders? No, you, no, no. I Like Seattle, I, you know, the, the old oh. Starbucks. I didn't know if you wanted me in the vicinity of your <laughs> opera. Oh, because... Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you yeah now that I thought about it, I don't fucking need to be. You guys are charging an extra 28 cents yeah, for uh-huh. the same amount of liquid. What? And speaking of liquid, the cane sugar. You guys are just sneaking it in the back door. Yeah. Can't have it. Your cake pops stink now. Whoa, really? Hey, don't don't disrespect the cake pops. Cake pops are awesome. I'm just saying, they're not as good as Elite what they product. used to be. Elite product. It is Elite product. All right. We appreciate you. How much did, today did you say that's accurate, you think? Uh, about 68.8. Hey! hey, 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 hey ladies and gentlemen. I gotta George. figure out this Odell thing. I think I, can, I think I confused you. No, no. Confused no I was not yeah, confused right. one in that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it was me? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Played yourself. Whenever you say rights, right, so that's 65, like... 65%. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, that'd be Ladies and gentlemen, George Jones, we appreciate it. Hey, oh, he might be right about that, though. I mean, yeah. we hadn't heard it anywhere else, and it would change the entire conversation about OBJ's free agency because he wouldn't be a free agent. His rights would be owned by a team still. It's kind of how I am with the Colts still. Yep. Mm-hmm. That, that's my situation where I can't really do mm-hmm. anything with anybody unless the Colts let go of my rights. Not saying I'm in the OBJ situation, but whenever you say rights, that is exactly what I'm like. Oh, I'm so that he can't – what's he taking a the tour for them? Because exactly. the Rams yeah. would have to decide it. So I think that's where the miscommunication happened in there. I think that's the only case. Yeah, that's what I – like, it's not right. So I took it as, like, if the Rams want him back, that's where he'll go. If the number's there. 
What he said about DK, though, was pretty nuts. Yeah, he's back, wants to play. Yeah. Let me see. Pizza, excuse me. You're not practicing. We're out. making a playoffs. Everybody on, out yeah. here thought we stunk going into the season. We got meaningful games. We can't get you hurt right now. No. Come on. No. It's week eight. Come on. Who cares? It's only October. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. What were you side eyeing about? You were the whole something time. Jordan did. You were side eyeing. Yeah. The rights thing. Yeah, r- r- that's a big deal. That's where I was. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, we were having a He's full. Not a restricted uh-huh. free agent. Yeah, I hadn't heard that. Words have meaning, Schultz. You got to choose them carefully. Well, that's why they're exactly. spelled. That's, that's right. exactly right, Nick. Because they they words do have meaning. And he's trying to cast spells on he's us. He's trying to cast spells. Hey, that's Bruce Lee, by the way. And Aaron Rodgers. Boom. That's right. That's like a Bruce Lee. Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers. Like Michael Scott and Gretzky. Boom. 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 All right, Connor. Oh. Had a rough night last night. Mm-hmm. We Rob went on the Oh No Express earlier. Yes, All the boys. Cold train. It is cold, cold train. train. It's a whole new world on the other mm-hmm. side of that trip, too. Dusty. When you get off that train, because you're on that train, when you get off that train, it's a much different world. Just eating poop. Much different era. Yeah. Yep. Much different time. Mindset. Mm-hmm. How's the future look? Not great. Why? Just got off the Oh No Express. Uh-huh. Why were you on the Oh No Express? Well, I thought my team was going to win by 38 points, yeah. and they ended up losing by double digits to the Chicago Bears at home. Oh, the yeah, Express was full. All right. Thank <laughs> hey, you. What do you want to give away if Connor makes a shot? Uh, eight people, $500. From you. It's too many. AQ. AQ's got 100 kids. He will give eight people $500 in an incredibly irresponsible financial decision. If Boston Connor in his socks, fresh off the O, no, express. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. 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 Bounce the ball, hit you in the face. (laughs) Oh, no. no. Boom. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Bang. Good for you, dude. Football. 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 Yeah. Super Bowl. Woo. Woo. With the swish. AQ Woo. will give eight people $500. Who retweet this video? Unbelievable. Say something nice to somebody because the world is filled Thank you, with the Oh No Express. Yeah. And people don't need to hear it all the time. If only Mac Jones could have done that last night. Oh, oh no! Oh, Listen, I'm, can you imagine your rookie quarterback leading you to the playoffs, making a Pro Bowl, and then some guy comes in and beats the Browns and the Lions? You're like, this guy's the best quarterback ever. Let's boo fucking Mac Jones. You're talking about all New England Patriots. Yeah, games. it's yeah. disgusting. Yeah, whoever was booing, I will say. Well, the Col- booing or how about the Zappy change? Shame for Zappy. Yeah, I could see that in the moment. But just he- drunk. Exactly. There's four jerseys. You just won two games. But if you were booing Mac, I mean, come on. Wake the fuck up. Well, everything will get better after that make you just had. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Say something nice to somebody. Put your cash tag in there. Retweet the video. And you might be one of eight winners that AQ Shipley will give $500 to. So thank you, AQ. Thank you, AQ. Thank you. Thank Very you. generous. Uh, we'll be back in five minutes with AJ Hawk with a beautiful hour two on this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, October 25th. Cheers. Take five. Bye. Bye. Pat McAfee used to hold balls for Adam Vinatieri. Now I'm in his home state. College game day is absolutely electric in Brookings. College game day has made the voyage to Brookings, South Dakota, to experience a game with the best fans in college football. I unfortunately cannot attend because I have a game this Sunday, so I sent a man I trust to make my picks. A man who is my holder for almost a decade. Please be nice to him. Welcome this week's celebrity guest picker, Pat McAfee. Go big, go blue, go Jacks. Let's see Auburn. Yes, everybody saw this. The best fake punt in the world. What do you think, Pat? I absolutely loved it all the way up until execution time. That is not one we like to show in the brand headquarters and punting and kicking world. Oh, dance off. Oh, let's get weird. Oh. Yes. Oh. Duck that, huh? Bang! Right on oh. the top of the dome. That makes it a lot easier when you got a dummy standing right in front of you like that. Running, running. He's oh! Hi, Daniel Russo! Wax on! Wax off! Knee to the face!
Yes! Go! Yes! Go! Yes! This is the state of the country. They celebrate by doing shotguns. And I'm a big fan of that. I'm going to the University of Virginia Catholic. That was great. Whoa! And when the Jackrabbits take the field, they're alongside all 800,000 South Dakotans. The Dakota Bunker was in Fargo for far too long. Today, 5 o'clock local time, the Dakota Marker is back in beautiful Brooklyn, South Dakota. The military school, they might be the Jackrabbits, but they're the goats today. Ladies and gentlemen, South Dakota State with the win. I told you I came on your radio show that we were going to get you on top of the day. Not only are you incredibly intelligent and handsome, you're a man of your word. You picked North Dakota today, so I, I had know. to bury you. That's okay. But it's been nothing but incredible. The college game day crew is hospitable. In South Dakota State, I think we can all agree, they showed up here. Yeah. But I loved it. I've watched the show, obviously, forever. And yeah. it's on in every single NFL locker room. Like you uh, yeah. So this is a big time deal for me, my family, my friends. All right. Not a bad little day here. Appreciate you, boys. It's from the training room with the Colts. AJ Watt tweeted. Text from every human that I've ever done television with, like since way back in the day. They're like, we knew this day would come. Quick managers, old teammates. I mean, you don't get to trend on Twitter often anymore. They make it damn near impossible. Go up onto a stage with a couple legends and talk some shit in front of the incredible South Dakota fans. <sighs> what an awesome opportunity. When are we gonna watch that? What is it? What is the show? Um, it is Max. Jude? It is. Please. Max is homesick from school. Right. Oh, Jude. Oh, Godspeed. That doesn't sound very NFL players will be the only great thing you'll be able to watch on TV. I cannot uh, say anymore, but perhaps I'll be on. Max, what's the name of the show he was on? Max. Ma say it, Max. Tell us Max. Max. What was say it, Max. Name? Take down. Can you? Okay. Oh, you just... <laughs> Thank you, Max. That was awesome. What is it, something takedown? Tailgate takedown. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Max. Max. Thank you, Max. Can't wait to watch that. Connor, your question. We're going to have a major conversation after this. If you just sent him away for six months in summer, he would have done it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Connor, your question for. Uh... Hey, why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck Boston Cops! Shut the fuck up! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to our humble abode known as the FanDuel Thunderdome. Hour two, Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, October 25th, starts right now. Football is awesome, isn't it? Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Football is a place where you can experience the highest of the highs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the lowest of the lows. Mm -hmm. You can be entertained. You can cry. You can feel feelings you don't ever feel anywhere else. That is why the game is so fantastic. And last night, we got an opportunity to watch one team go into some hallowed grounds and beat the fuck out of another team. <laughs> Representing that team on this stage at the Toxic Table at Boston Connor, fresh off the Oh No Express at Ty Schmidt right next to him, also on the Oh, oh no. no Express. One half of the hammer, Don, Don. Cowboys, Tone Diggs, who is also on the Oh, oh no. no Express. No. And former coach and Super Bowl champion, 
with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers also on the Oh No Express AQ Shipley hosted in the trenches here. AQ. And joining us live from an attic in Ohio, a man who has never seen the Oh No Express. No, never. Because he's a college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup champion. Damn. He's an NBA pundit. Mm-hmm. A video game drama shit stir. Yep. Saw that one just started uh, back up yesterday. I don't know if you saw that. George, the guy that he said talks shit on Ninja, quote tweeted the video and said, I'm going to address this today, as in yesterday, cool. 530 on my live stream. So cool. AJ is now fully into right. the video game drama bullshit behind the stage. That, that's what this guy does. Beat COVID 14 times. AJ Hawk. Hey, AJ. AJ, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I mean, I know Con Man's struggling. It was uh, what a battle last night, huh? Okay, wow. so let's talk about the game. We won on the Oh No Express earlier and relived all of Connor's greatest hits from yesterday about how bad they were going to kill the Bears, how historic the evening was going to be. At the end of it, he actually goes, Bill Belichick going to beat the Bears and pass George Hallis at the same time the guy that created the Bears? What a dog, dude. <laughs> great promo for what the Patriots were supposed to do. Great promo for what everybody thought the Patriots were going to do last night. Like they do not do anything of them. I mean, they got bodied by the Bears at home. Is this a turning of a tide? Is this something that you could have never expected? You watched the game last night. We both picked the Patriots minus eight and a half. We were both very, very wrong. What's your biggest takeaway from Monday Night Football with the Bears beating the Patriots, A.J. Hawk? Well, so I was watching some of the pregame lead up to the game, and I knew I was screwed at about 8-12. They were going through with uh, RG3 and, and Booger and Alex Smith and everybody, and then they all picked the Patriots, which is mm-hmm. fine. I, I, I picked the Patriots as well, but then Shefty read a stat. Oh, 62% of the money is on the Bears, and he started, like, cackling and lost his mind. Laughing what do they and lose? I was like, man, if these Bears guys have this on the locker room, which they don't, they might come and just run right through you on their way out of the tunnel. Because I knew right then, I was like, man, I wish I could change my pick. Yeah, myself. he actually said, what do 62% of the public know? Ha, 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 ha. La- la- and he lo- kept going. Like, he kept going. Like, lo- I was like, geez, man. What a loser. Down. Loud laughing. Now, with that being, you know, that type of conversation happening, we have to refer to Sunday where Michael Irvin was cutting a lock promo on NFL Network's morning show about the Cowboys killing the Lions. Mm-hmm. And like everybody was talking about how the Cowboys are going to kill the Lions. Dax back with what this thing's going to be. I actually watched him three or four different times on that NFL Network morning show, which is the one that I, that I watch because I think they do a great job and I enjoy it. And I think Michael Irvin on TV is spectacular whenever you can have him. Kurt Warner does a great job. Mooch does a great job. Uh, Rachel and Cynthia have a great segment there breaking down numbers. I think Rich does a good I enjoy that program. I enjoy that show. But listening to them talk about what the Cowboys are going to do to the Lions, and then whenever he did the lock segment and he, like, was shaking in the thing about, like, it's a lock, I was like, oh, fuck. The Lions are about to do it. Now, I didn't get that feeling enough to go bet on the Lions. Sure. No. I, didn't, I didn't actually put any money on it. But then the Cowboys did beat the fuck out of the Lions. Yeah. You know, so it was like, that would kind of brought me back down to earth that it isn't always – you know, just contradictory to where all the hype is. But last night, it certainly was the case. AQ was watching. AQ, you like what the Bears are doing on a ground game. You like what the trenches are doing for the Chicago Bears. There's a right guard for the Bears that you're talking about being one of your favorite players in the fucking NFL, right? I love what Tevin Jenkins is doing. He's a dog on the field. He's always looking to finish. That's right, Zeke. Um, what, you sucking on him? What, yeah, well, yeah. I just love Suckling that. Suckling Zeke? <laughs> That's right. What you're doing? What was that? You wanted an echo? I don't know. I, I felt like that was like a... A compliment. We were all in. Yeah, we were all oh, in. Oh, that was yeah, like yeah. a... So we were gone. Yeah, bear, we were gone. Yeah. Bear down. That was a bear down. Yeah. But they had a good run game, period. And now you add the element of Fields running the ball with this, as we're going to see later. I mean, it's it's a really good run game. He wanted to run, too, allegedly, from the sources that we have talked to. And by we, I mean Zito. Justin Fields... What did he do, Zito? He stormed into Getzi's office. He kicked that door in and said, let's add some more run plays. I want to run. I want to win. Let's do this. We talked about this like a week ago where everybody's scared for the future of a quarterback. Well, the future of a quarterback is going to be much brighter if he's a great fucking quarterback. And I think what makes Justin Fields – 
separate himself from everybody else, just from small sample size of us watching, and we do not watch every single play. We do not watch every single game for the Bears, so I do apologize. But it appears as if he has the ability to be a fucking freak athlete on the field. He can handle the runs. He can handle the hits. It feels like he has good vision. And last week, we're chit-chatting about him being able to breathe in big moments, and now it's like, hey, when they let him move and give him the freedom to go ahead and do what he's doing right here, he's special. He's different. I hope they stick with it. It sounds like they're going to. Bill Belichick didn't seem to expect it. Justin Fields had a fucking big time night, and I know as an Ohio State grad, OH. Yeah, IO for Fields for the win. I'll give it to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What a great Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. The OHIO people are probably pumped to see Justin Fields like flourishing. Winning in Gillette in prime time, they had a shot of him jogging back into the huddle real close. And I almost like, I thought to myself, I don't even think Justin knows how fucking impossible this is, what he has accomplished. I played, you know, against the Patriots a bunch uh, just because I was on a good team that played against the Patriots a bunch. And we, I won one time in Gillette. Talk to AQ. AQ's never won in Gillette, aside from being a coach when Tom went back with Tampa. And you can probably look at a lot of people's careers. They've never won in Gillette. That place is just different. Him going in there, fucking performing the way he did, getting that win. I mean, that's a statement made by that Bears team and Eberflus's crew and Justin Fields as a whole. I'm, I'm very happy for him, man. Honestly, very, very well, happy I mean, for him. Imagine if they got blown out like we thought they would. It would be like, Loud. oh, get rid of the coach already mm -hmm. in the first year, all of this stuff, stuff, get Fields out of there. And maybe, like, we always talk about when you have quarterbacks that are athletic, well, well, the next level is going to have to become a, a pocket passer, not be able to – you can't run, turn and run whenever you know have a little bit of pressure. Maybe not. Maybe you got to let these guys go. Like, you got Justin Fields. You can't – don't try to force him being a pocket passer all game. Yeah, there's going to be situations where he's going to have to do that. But – for the most part, man, let this dude go and set up plays for him, have these design quarterback runs that seem to be very successful. Now, can you continue that now that it's not going to be as big a surprise to the next team? Yeah, everybody's going to have a book on him now. And yep. uh, New England seemed to be, what, confused? We had Nick Saban say a week ago, all right, Tennessee lined up in a power eye. All right, and our guys didn't know what to do. It was like the first time I heard Saban say something about the coaching potential, your preparation not being great. And I don't know if Saban meant to say that. I think Saban was just talking about the state of the game. But I think anybody that listened was like, oh, so that isn't even something you really have to go over much because you're not fucking facing it that often. Was Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots defense caught off guard by the Chicago Bears? And what does that mean going forward for the New England Patriots? Well, the design runs for sure. Like, that is something they haven't showed, and breaking that out was genius. But the stuff that really I couldn't get over was the fact that on those third and four teams like that just played and on some of the other plays, there was just no one spying fields. And if you watched most of their games, a lot of the times he is most effective when he is scrambling around and then running for first downs, running, gaining yards. And there was no thought to – just have a spy on them the entire Their game. Their backs were turned a lot of times, too. A lot third of down, times. Con, you know, a lot of times third down, you're playing man-to-man. -man. Look, all, like a lot of their guys' backs are turned, and if not, Fields can definitely make one or two guys miss. It's like a lot of space. There's a lot of yeah. space. And then when they, they had like a Josh Allen-type power lead yep. uh -huh. outside that we're going to see on the in, in the trenches. And everybody, and it's going to become a natural conversation because it's the way it is. It's happening with Lamar right now with all the success that Lamar has had. People that aren't for Lamar getting paid, okay? We don't know anybody. We are not those people. No. So direct your hate towards somebody else for what I'm about to say, okay? This is not me. People say he's going to get hurt. Can't invest good money in because he's going to get hurt. It's like, well, he's won a fucking MVP. He's won a playoff game. He's gotten where he is. He is Lamar Jackson because of what he can do on the ground. And then you're going to hold it against him whenever it's time for business. People will try to do that to Justin Fields if they continue to have him run. But I'd much rather be a great quarterback and have a couple people say that I'm going to get hurt. That's why they can't pay me. than be somebody that never really made it to the great level because I wasn't given the opportunity to utilize all of my incredible strengths that a lot of motherfuckers don't have. Fields is a dog, dude. He is... He's a vegan, too, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's yes. a vegan. He's, like, yoked up. No, no offense to that. I just didn't expect that to be able to yeah. create that. He is a fucking – now I got people saying, you should try his peanut butter scoops that are fully <laughs> – I get it. I understand it's a healthy thing. But not normally do you see fucking yoked and shredded dudes that turn into vegans and maintain that ability, especially going to the adult league. We talk about it all the time, like, with uh, these type of quarterbacks, like, Trying to put them in a traditional pro style offense like is fucking stupid. It's, especially when you see the success that Lamar's had and he's won an MVP. 
Like they Lamar's one of one. Sure. Oh, I mean, Justin Fields is – He might be one of one as well. Yeah, I mean, he's. I think he's very similar athletically to Lamar. Um, but, like, when they try to put these guys in offenses that – when they know that there's other offenses like the Ravens offense that, that work, I don't understand. And then you see it last night. Finally, the for the last two years, the Bears, they, the Bears fans and Bears media, they always talk about getting – Justin Fields outside of the pocket and how his passer rating outside of the pocket. The first three plays last night were him getting outside of the pocket yeah. and then running with him, too. Like, it's just stupid not to do something. Hey, like Q, that. you were a coach in the NFL. What is it? Just stubbornness, ego, pride? What do you think it is about some of these coaches that don't want to adjust? I was talking to, you know, a big time football brain about how some of these coaches just don't want to adjust. And we were both flabbergasted by it because neither of us had been coaches before. You'd been around it. Obviously, you played for a lot of different teams. You got a chance to coach now, so you see the game through their lens. And I'm not saying any of the coaches that you worked with or played for have this idea. But how? why do some coaches just refuse to, like, fucking take advantage of the strengths of the players that you have as opposed to just doing a system, 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 system? Yeah, I don't know. It's a great question. I think the biggest thing like that we've talked about over and over again is these guys have their systems in place, and that's what they believe in. And they think that rather than changing and adapting to the personnel, they want the personnel to adapt to them. And that's, that's usually the worst-case scenario. Yeah, it never works. Doesn't work ever. Like for instance, we got a six foot seven tight end here in Indianapolis. <laughs> yeah. Can't find the fucking field, AJ. You know what? Like, I don't want to die. Sammy, I think Sammy's gonna be looking this direction. Yeah, nice. Ryan was too. Yeah, I'm just they, they couldn't yeah. get for some reason the X's in the O's just couldn't have the same. Isn't it amazing how one game changes everything for everyone's opinion on every team in the league every single week? I feel like. <sighs> Jim Irsay said, "Get that guy off my field." Yeah. To Matt Ryan, seven games in. Seven, isn't that crazy? That's crazy that they yeah. have. Three. So they don't want him to get hurt now. The contract situation too. I know that. You hear what's, how we're talking about the Bears right now? Colts have a better record than the Bears because they tied the Texans as mm -hmm. opposed to losing. Mm -hmm. to the, but I think everybody on earth is much more positive about what the Bears are going to go and do than what the Colts are going to do. Oh yeah. Three, three, and one. You would think with the way things have unfolded here that they would be much different, like maybe two wins or one win. But instead, they're 3-3-1, three, three, and one, making a change for the rest of the season. That was announced alongside of it. For the rest of the season, this guy's our starter. So everybody in the locker room, this is what we're telling you. This is our guy going forward. You might like Matt Ryan. You might be appreciative of Matt Ryan. Hell, you might like Big Dick Nick. You yeah. might like – it's just Sam Ellinger's team until further notice. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. That might be – we don't know how long we'll go into this game against the Commanders. They got Ring of Honor for Tarek Glenn. Tarek? Tarek. I like Tarek. Tarek Glenn. Big. Mm -hmm. I never got to play with him. Every story that I ever heard about that guy is just like, biggest, coolest dude of all time. Biggest, cool. Do you, awesome. do you ever uh, get to study or, or know anything about him? I mean, I know him. He was a great tackle. Great. I just, I just I mean, he's huge. I guess he's, I guess we're talking like. Giant. Giant of a man. Beloved by everybody. He's going into the Ring of Honor this weekend. They're playing against the Commanders. So Jim Irsay had to pick the basic homecoming game for the Indianapolis Colts, which is the Ring of Honor game where a lot of old players come back, was going to be the Commanders and Carson Wentz coming into oh, town. Awesome. That was going to be the homecoming game, okay? That was the Ring of Honor game. Now we're going into that game. New quarterback change. We got Sam Ellinger coming in there. Sold out house. Yeah. Tariq Glenn's going to be there. A lot of the OGs are going to be in the building. It is... Um, it's an interesting time to be a Colts fan. The moxie oozing out of the off of that field from the quarterback position this oh, weekend. Unbelievable. Ooh. Heineke and Sam Ellinger. Oh, if they dap each other up, there might be a zzz, 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 the whole thing. The roof might go off yeah. because of that dap up in pre -game. They do need, make sure Ursay knows to open the roof this weekend because you can't contain that this weekend. Yeah. You cannot. There's a a flooding of moxie coming it's into the yeah. yeah. And it wasn't what we thought it was going to be. We thought it was going to be Matt Ryan versus Carson Wentz. Boo. Tarek Glenn Not going into the Ring of Honor, homecoming. Instead, it's first start for fucking Hook'em. Sam Ellinger taking on Taylor Heineke, who just beat the goddamn Green Bay Packers yeah. in his first start. Yeah. I mean, it is vastly different than what we expected, but it is, you know, interesting that this was the game of choice for the Ring of Honor ceremony, directly chosen by Jim Irsay, I think. Yep. So I don't think it's anybody else making that decision. I think it's him. And uh, mm -hmm. we got a first-time starter. I hope Sam does well. Hey, let's go, Sam. You go, Sammy. What do you say, Sam? You think when they uh, shake hands, Ellinger and Heineke, uh, Big Tobacco drops like a new can of dip, and they just say, you know what, let's let's name this the Heineke Ellinger can. We assume, Sam, we assume just because Texas. he's a Texas quarterback. Yeah, hook him. Heineke because he's Heineke. Old Dominion, Virginia, Big Tobacco. You didn't chew ever, right? 
No. That's the most surprising thing in the world. That goatee, that fucking head. Yeah. yeah. Those tattoos. Taylor made to chew, right? From, yeah. Pittsburgh. Yeah. From Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah. That gut. Never did. Jesus. You, I look look good. you look good. You look good. You look good. You look good. Hey, you so look is Matt little. Ryan the number two or is he three. the inactive? He's the inactive. Yeah, well, he has a sh- grade shoulder. two shoulder sprain. That's right. Which? Which was a part of the announcement, but then it was also followed up with, even if he was 100% healthy, this does not matter. So, like, the messaging. And then Ian Rapport came on and said it was Frank Reich. You remember, he said this was Frank's mm-hmm. decision from a football standpoint. He yeah. wants to get Sam Mellinger in there. I'm like, okay, from a football standpoint, we I want. I saw Frank's presser. Yeah. Collaborative effort. Is that what he said? He said it was collaborative, yeah. Collaborative meaning, yes. The <laughs> owner, I talked to the owner, and this is what we're doing. <laughs> he, may, he may agree with it, though. He may agree with the decision, but I'm saying, yeah, you got to do what the owner wants to do. Foles is his guy, though. Won a Super Bowl with him in Philly. Well, that guy's I thought fine. that was the whole reason that they brought Foles in. So if it was up to Frank Reich, wouldn't he go with the guy he brought in? What if Ursay just enjoyed the way, the cut? Of yes. Sam Ellinger's gym. Yeah, that's probably the case. Myself. What if he's just walking? Right. Jim Mercer, give me that fucking guy. He's like not even it. dressed. Yeah, next week he's starting. I like it. You think Ellinger, instead of wearing like a uh, football belt or whatever, is going to wear uh, a like cowboy yeah, belt buckle? Hell yeah. Why not? Big old cold on it. Hey, Frog, T, boys, make sure that belt is a little bit bigger than everybody else's. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I've never noticed. Do NFL, do NFL a dumb question here. String. I think a lot of string now. Okay. Because putting it, putting a belt through a pair of football pants, if you, people have never done it, is one, one of the all, worst, hardest things. The worst. Yeah. Some O lineman, O lineman pants have that still. Not a lot of skill positions have belts. Do you, I wore a belt, like Hell the thin yeah. on the, the field. Yeah. On the AQ, field. do you like, wear the diaper dog. jersey? No, I didn't. I know I've seen it, but no, I didn't. Just regular. I have to get mine uh, hemmed with the seamstress deal. So yeah. the um, you used to have to put like a needle through. Or and like a, a, pull or a uh, hanger, like a lot of people use the ha- Yeah, it's yeah. not easy. You know what they do, though, now a lot? There's a lot of them. It's just like the the buckle and the part that you feed through is the only part that is out, obviously. But they they sew. They're already oh. in. They sew like the right new there helmets. so it can't move. So that part just stays out, right? The world's soft. You guys aren't yeah. even yeah. fucking <laughs> – Lacing their own <laughs> belts anymore. Poor shit. This is, this is what I'm talking about. They're not unbuckling chin straps anymore. You know, they're just yeah, making you zip, them. So you just right. zip them. How Something come you like did that. you do a zipper? No, I had a buckle, but I did do the, I'd screw the top ones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, it's yeah. old school. You got yeah. to bolt it. You bolt in the high snaps. But yeah, it is yeah. weird seeing guys, you know, when guys get pissed, you usually snap your, you know, boom, yeah. take your, your bottom two off. Now it's like, okay. They I unzip and you know, then they slide it up in front of their mouth. Yep. Yeah. That's like the upset, pissed off. Let me. I always see Herbert doing it. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, thanks a lot, Kyler. What? He looks cool. Yeah, and he takes his helmet off so that everybody can see him and he can tell his coach, fucking calm down. Chill the fuck out, I think. Chill I think we should out. take it Chill easy on him playing video games because Juju said that him and Kelsey and Patty Mahomes were playing the new Call of Duty on Friday night, I believe, and that led to their victory on Sunday. And MVS. That could have been um that could have just been an internet uh, article. No, that report. was report. Oh, that was, that was real. 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 I saw, yeah. saw the press conference. Was that a report of Juju on saying. the internet? Apparently it was real. See? Yeah, Juju actually explained how they uh, play this war zone game. They all drop in together, a lot of good communication between oh, the Oh, build team chemistry. Mm-hmm. Boom. Yeah. Well if they lost, if they lost, do you think he would be saying that? No, because he, they yeah, played he, and they the built the chemistry and they won. He actually would, yeah. And they wouldn't have. They wouldn't he has have, danced before on a. Juju's a different guy now. I love him. Yes. Love you, Juju. These last two weeks. He's playing really well with the fucking Chiefs right now. Yeah. He's tough, man. Juju's tough. McCole Hardman, too, with four or three fucking touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Travis Kelsey with four the week ago. Boom. Should have blocked. Why do the Manning cast? Did you watch the Manning cast at all? Uh, I watched a little bit. I tried my best um, to kind of bounce back and forth. Yeah, AJ, AJ texted me during it. What? Did I? Yeah, he said, I'm sick of Obama pushing his agenda on everybody on ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, AJ. That happened? Yes. He did spend the last Obama 10 minutes on that. It was there. bad. I saw the three-quarter zip. Mm-hmm. I saw a three-quarter zip photo. He said registered to vote. I had a lot of money on last night's game. I yeah. wasn't I wasn't really with the fuckery there for a bit, but then yeah. I bounced over when Bill Burr was on because the White Tiger is fucking – Electrifying. Right. Anytime you get a chance to hear the White Tiger talk, you're going to do that. So I had to do that. I heard some of Obama because fucking friend of mine is interviewing a goddamn president. I mean, yeah. that's a. I actually sent a text to Peyton. I'm like, you're interviewing a fucking president. <laughs> Let's go, yeah, dude. Like, hey, congratulations. You're interviewing Bro. a president. I thought that was incredible. I did not make it to the uh, Vince Vaughn. Vince Trump Vaughn. on next week, you think? Are they have Trump next week? Uh, are they doing a Manning cast next week? Well, who's his team? Who's his NFL team? The Giants? 
That's so funny. Huh. Who would Why be are team? you laughing? I think he's a gi- Giants. Maybe? Can you imagine Trump, Trump and then Biden? Maybe Trump and Biden on the same show. I did see. US I don't keep up well, with the political world as much, but I did see a tweet from Phil Maines this morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, right. Whenever other people ask him how much money I give away, and then he put a Biden press yeah. conference clip mm-hmm. where he said three billion, two hundred trillion, three billion five hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. Biden can't go on too because right when the Manning cast is, his coloring book time. So chug chug he chug would chug have chug to. It's our president. It's our sitting president. That's our president. fucking yeah. president. Oh. I'm not making a joke. That's when he fills in his butterflies and dogs. And his what is this book guy's problem? What is this guy's problem? It's not a joke. I'm serious. <laughs> what is this? He eats his chocolate chocolate chip ice cream mm. and he does his coloring book. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. Yeah. <laughs> This show. Anyways, I don't <laughs> think we know nearly enough. I assume we just offended all parties. Oh, yeah. Boom. I assume we just offended all parties, and I'd like to let you know, we are a politics show. We dabble in sports every once in a while. <laughs> we are. <laughs> all of our takes. Super politics. All of our takes yeah. are very real. That's right. It's like old linemen. And when you, you should take them to the bank. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about some other stuff around the NFL, aside from the Bears beating the fuck out of the New England Fair Patriots. It was bad. Yeah. Credit to the Bears D. We haven't talked about the Bears defense. Credit to them, man. They mm. played well. Quinn, hey, still got it. Still fucking got it. What year is this for him? Because I remember oh. when he was a St. Louis Ram, and he yeah. was in, like, the Sack King conversation. He still got the juice. Primetime games, though, got to remember those types of stars are always going to make plays. He was all over the place. I enjoy watching that Bears defense. Zito, you know, you have this, like, blind confidence in the Bears, even whenever they display ineptitude at all levels, like last year yep. and the year before that. Oh, yeah. It's paying off right now. It looked like some really good football last night. Zito, good for you, pal. Oh, yeah, and our rookies did very well, too, that Poles picked up. That one interception yeah, by yeah, that Brisker. Juan Brisker is After he got kicked dog. in the ding dick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hey, are. that was a clear we kick are. to the dick. That was a clear. Would he be fine? You think he's fine for this? Uh, I, I would hope so because the other angle, the back angle, I mean, he mm, lifts that on. thing up at the last Breaking second. Breaking up a double play. People are calling Let's him see. Grayson Allen or whatever. and he Oh, he did it. lift it up. Yeah, he lifts it up and he points his foot like through the dick. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. Learn from Tom. Well, that's what a lot of people were saying <laughs> uh-huh. about Mac uh, last night. You know, I don't know what his teammates are saying. I think people would assume that if you're willing to do this type of move, you probably got a little bit of dirty dog to you in uh, in everything. And then what? Three plays later, old Cuz gets an interception on him, goes up and gets it high, oh, points the ball. Uh-huh. What an incredible play! What an incredible karma, full circle event, just in a matter of a couple seconds. And um, that's a tough throw right there from Mac. Yeah, like falling you- back after he just kicked the guy in the dick. Ooh, what a pick, though. Jeez. Yeah. Hell of a play. And he ran a couple times, Mac did, but even on that play and on another one of the sacks, like he just didn't look comfortable. No, he didn't. It really felt like he was really wanting to play. And instead of just telling him, like, hey, zip on the ball, Zappy, we're 2 0, we're dominating, like, let's give this thing another week. 2 0 against who? Uh, that would be the Browns and the Lions. Yeah. But, I mean, Good you, defense. you score 29 points, points and you score 38 points, no matter who you're playing. That's a lot of points. Con, are you worried, though? Agreed. Are you, is Con worried about the, the fractured locker room, possibly, when other guys saying, hey, we didn't know they were going to play two quarterbacks, and there's all this, even though Peyton and Eli said, yeah, they're probably going to play two. Everyone said, we're probably both going to play. And then you have players saying, hey, we have no idea. Peyton and Eli said that? I didn't hear them. They knew that both quarterbacks were going to play? No, they said he might, we might see them both or whatever. Peyton, I think, said, we tried to reach out to New England and say who, who's going to start. Obviously, they didn't tell us anything. And I think Eli's like, we, we may see them both. Hmm. Oh, so you think they did get told something? And I think the pregame show, too, said that. There was, like, reports before the game, hey, there are reports like they both might play. Okay, I didn't hear in that. I know that Bailey Zappi found out Mac Jones was starting when we all officially found out he was starting, which I guess was, like, a second before the first play. Well, that's what they do, though, too. Like, AQ might know. Like, I know Patriots obviously keep everything very, like, in-house and very, like, confidential. They don't tell players a lot of times week to week what their role may be. Like, you may be starting and playing 60 plays on defense this week, and next week you may only play 15 plays, and you don't even know until game day almost. Well, that's what doesn't make sense because it got reported on Sunday. Or it might have that even Mac been, was playing. That Mac was starting. Yeah, so. we. I went into the show yesterday. Thank you. No. Mac Jones is starting. Right. Yes, Same. because it was reported. Very confident. And then I started seeing other people talk about it. They're like, we're not sure. I'm like, oh, I just said for three and a half hours on yeah. our show that I am a certain that yeah. Mac Jones is starting. So I didn't know if we heard a report that other people didn't or what was going on with it all. Like, because Bailey Zappi said he didn't know. Well, Rap Sheet said it too. Rap Sheet didn't say that there was any sort of like, hey, Zappi might start tonight or might get some playing time. It was under the assumption that the only way Zappi was going to play, yeah, is if Mac played terrible. Also, uh, yeah, Tommy Currents this morning that uh, Mac Jones will only get three series and that's it. 
Tommy Curran said he knew that going in. That's what he said. Yeah. Which I mean, I read. Why Tom would you even do Curran's this? Sounds like a Schultzy. This sounds like a yeah, Schultzy. Yeah. Because I read Tom Curran's article actually before I placed my bets. Just like, hey, okay, before I think that they're going to win thirty-eight to three, I need to hear what Tom Curran thinks because we typically think and he did not say three series. Ups. No, he didn't say three. Are you series? sure he didn't say like he played ser- three series? Because then now I'm thinking that he might have said that. Okay. okay, so that's what's wrong with our show. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that is. <laughs> But I feel like we had it right all day yesterday, and then I'm turning on fucking ESPN, and they're like, they don't know. They don't know. No. I'm like, we fucking – what if Bailey Zappi starts last night? Then we have to go in with an entirely different mindset today about how wrong we were on the biggest story of the evening. I don't know how we knew and everybody else didn't. That seems very weird to me. It must have been a glitch in a simulation. But going back to what AJ's saying, AQ, is that something you're used to hearing about players not hearing stuff, not knowing stuff? I, I don't know if that's something that players not hearing stuff, not knowing stuff. I, I don't know if that's something that is, you know, norm, is it? I don't think it's No, I don't think so either. I think when it comes to like some of the personnel moves, I don't I think you're kind of kept in the dark. Like, you know, whether Yeah, my it's a guy trade, got traded here out of nowhere. You yeah, real that? real quick. I mean, I got a uh, This guy played fucking two great games. Really good. Too good. Got traded out of the fucking middle of the week. See my guy right next to my locker neighbor. There's mm. cleaning his shit out. So Wait, high. We caught him? Wasn't he just fucking playing? <laughs> he played pretty good. They traded him. I go out to practice. Everybody just keep their blinders on, okay? Listen, you worry about your job and your job alone. We, we can't just guess. We have to trust the pro. <laughs> we have to do this whole thing. I'm like, what the f- what are we guessing? This guy was good, and we get him playing good. You get him out of town. I don't think anybody. You probably didn't even know until it was that. We didn't know until your fucking locker was getting cleaned. I was like, what? And I go online. AQ's been traded. I'm like, my fucking guy was it just in a meeting. I didn't even know until they told me. I got a text seven thirty in the morning. Hey, come come to my office. I'm like, man, I'm getting an extension. Yeah, he <laughs> <laughs> was playing good. I'm on a plane to Baltimore six hours later. He was playing good football. I mean, playing really good football. So I think there is a lot of in the dark about a lot of things, but I don't know, like Jacoby talking about how hard Mac worked and then for how it ended up, it's like, okay, they're on his side. But then if you watch the way the team played immediately upon Zappi going in, there was just like an energy in the whole team. Offensive line seemed to be flying around a little bit better. The defense gets a pick. There's big time catches. It's like, well, Zappi seems to be, you know, the guy for this team. And then it sounds like it's not. It's like, to your point about a fractured locker room, I think you have to have, but what I know less than Bill Belichick. So I'm not even going to fucking... I'm not saying it's a fractured locker room. I'm saying it's just... It's, you need it's a direction. To see. Oh, yeah, but it's new to see guys like... Question, not question, but saying, oh, yeah, I, didn't, I had no idea. Or, I, I didn't know this was going to happen. Yeah, that they in the past, they know they may not know what's going to happen, but they give the old cliche answer to the press after the game. Oh, whatever the coaches do, you know, they just give the old vanilla answer. When did you find out Mac Jones would be the starter, Zappy? About the same time you all did. He's Texas boy. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. He was singing to Stacy's mom on the sideline. Everybody thought that was going to be the Drew Lock Jeezy moment for him. Yep. I hope not. What? Hmm. I mean, it's a good song. Dude. He could, but yeah. Drew Lock fucking stinks. I don't want to have. I think they won that game though. So I think the re- the, the difference would be you guys lost because yes. Stacy's mom. Yes. So, but I wouldn't want Zappy to be Drew Lock because then what does that say about Mac Jones? Man. Look at the crowd go crazy. That's an impossible situation for Mac, I feel like. It, was, it felt like a preseason game. It felt like the yeah. preseason game where Cam was playing and Mac was yeah. standing on the sideline. And that's not that long ago. No. Mm-hmm. That is not that long ago. It's just like a year and a half ago. But Boston, those mass holes, <laughs> they do not care. We are no. here to win football games. This is the standard. is the standard. You don't live up to it. We are ready to move on. I can appreciate that. They'll get back on Mac's side. Mac throws a touchdown and place goes bananas for him yet again. But it was a weird primetime game in Gillette. So sure. I, went, I went back to see the first reports of when Mac was going to start. It was about 20 hours ago from Albert Breer. Um, and then 804. Is that, is no, that it was this weekend. Uh, I think it was Zach Lowe from The Athletic reported it. And then about at 8.04 last night, Shefty tweeted, don't be surprised if you see both Patriots quarterbacks tonight. Yeah. Oh, kind of slipped it in there. Yeah. Yeah, Albert Breer also, uh, I don't know if you guys saw his tweet yesterday or if he has already deleted it during the game. We might want to steer away from Albert Breer for a little bit. Uh-oh. What happened? Yeah, he is throwing around uh, like that That shit's fire. You know how people say that? Mm-hmm. Threw fentanyl into it for some reason. I'm not sure why. That shit's What? Hold up. I'll actually pull it up right now because Bruce texted to me saying, hey, I don't know if you've seen this or not. So what, Breer just thought he was saying something super cool? Like he thought he was 
yeah, doing being the hip, Twitter? Yeah, being hip and cool, I could see that. Uh, and he mentioned the fucking Stone Cold Killer of, like, our generation. Yeah, he said, this right here is sports radio fentanyl. Yeah, there it is. Hmm. What does that mean? Ow. <laughs> I'm not sure. So killing. Is that good or bad? Yeah, I think it's good because fentanyl just kills people, right? Like, that's they, what it is. They, they yeah. do use it in hospitals. So uh, this right here yeah. is sports radio fentanyl killing. Adam Jones is probably passed out somewhere. Oh, meaning like uh, it's a uh, comatose. Put you to sleep. Like comatose. Yeah, yeah I that's wasn't sure. That, yeah, that's yeah, it's hard to understand. understand. That seems the the tweet. So it was, it was bad radio, is what Albert Breer was talking about. Maybe, but that's like no. the worst of He's all time. Definitely that's not a bad compliment. radio, though. He's, He's trying to say it's good. Something that's fentanyl. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> We don't mean to laugh at making that no, joke. I am strictly laughing at him. Yeah. You know, kind of backpedaling on your take. This show sucks. Let's move around the NFL a little bit. According to the NFL, and we have a much different take now than when the show started. I'm happy we didn't lead off the show with this particular story. We led off the show with the Oh No Express. That's right. Recapping what Connor said yesterday and then obviously the outcome. The NFL released a statement from Tom Pelissero's Twitter account. Remember, plug in. Neuralink, need you to tweet this out. Download the statement it. was basically like, it is not, it was not an autograph. Stop asking questions. Then Pro Football Talks Mike Florio reaches back out and says, it sure looked like an autograph. What is it? The NFL comes out and says, we have no further comment at this time about the whole situation. To be clear, this is the video that they were talking about where Mike Evans afterwards in the tunnel was approached by two referees, one of the referees saying his name, grabbing a piece of paper, Mike Evans writing something down, and obviously appearing to be clearly looking like an autograph situation, which can happen between NFL refs and NFL players, especially in front of that many cameras. This is the video in question. Mike. Mike. So I believe that was from Sheena Quick, yep. friend of the program. She took that, and she was alarmed just as much as everybody else that saw that video. We are now getting more information that it was uh, a phone number because of a golf pro for golf lessons. Tom Pellicero, full story here. Bucks wide receiver Mike Evans and side judge Jeff Lamberth both went to Texas A&M who are dealing with a litany of issues right yeah. now. Yeah. And Lamberth was getting Evans' phone number to pass it along to a golf pro to give Evans lessons per sources. Lamberth didn't have paper, so he borrowed it from another official. The NFL said in a statement that both Jeff Lamberth and line judge Trip Sutter had been reminded of the importance of avoiding even the appearance of impropriety when interacting with players, coaches, and club staff on game day. In other, uh, in other words, it was bad look, but no discipline. So did Mike Evans know that he was, you know, looking for a new golf coach? And why is the ref reminding Mike to give his number to him to get to a golf coach who wants to give Mike Evans golf lessons? Who the fuck knows? But that appears to be what it was. Do you buy it, AJ? And is that what we all expected it to be? Of course, <laughs> golf lessons yeah, sure. is what I, needed to happen I, after a loss in the tunnel. I did not expect it. I did not expect it, but I saw the report, and honestly, it, it calmed me down a bit. Me I, too. I believe it. I, I do believe mm -hmm. it just because, I, I mean, like I, I've said before, maybe I'm naive. I don't think refs are dumb enough to do that, to try to ask a guy, after you just got blown out by the Carolina Panthers and right outside his locker room and get his autograph. So I would assume they talked pregame. They talked before. Hey, man, yeah, let me I'm hook me up with your guy, man. I want to play. Yes. Hey, I know, I know this guy. Mm -hmm. He's a Texas A&M mm -hmm. legend probably. Wants to give you lessons, get you better at golf. Cool, let's talk after the game. Now, you say you refuse to believe that the refs are that dumb to ask for his autograph in the tunnel immediately after the game after they lose. I agree, but they were dumb enough to do that right in front of fucking a bunch of cameras immediately uh -huh. after a loss in the tunnel. The refs can get into the locker room. You know, the refs have the yeah. ability to get into the locker room. Optically, look terrible. I'm happy to hear that it wasn't an autograph signing because that calls into question everything else. And I hope Mike Evans gets great at golf. Yeah. yeah. I bet with how big he is, how athletic he is, think about how long that swing could potentially be. His, you play with him? His move could be fucking unbelievable, AQ. No, golf. You ever no, play golf? No, I've never played golf. Did he golf ever down there? I don't know. I don't think so. Well, he's picking up the game. Yeah, he's, he's learning exactly. sport. He's learning right, sport. lessons. Yeah, exactly. That's why he's talking. I want to get into golf sometimes. Oh, I got to go golf guy for you. He's the best. He wants to... Oh, we'll get the information afterwards. Hey, Mark, Mark, Mark. 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 
I mean, let me get your number so I can fucking give it to the golf guy. Not the other way around. Not like, hey, here's his number. Yeah. You should mm-hmm. hit him up. Exactly. That's what should have happened. Here you go. Here's his number. Well, yeah, my paper. So it was an uncomfortable interaction just yeah. from the foundation of no what No one's going to believe it, though. People that believe the NFL is rigged and the refs are paid off by players and things, they're going to stick with this for the rest of their life, though. Like, oh, you know, remember? Well, refs are getting autographs from players. Refs are getting autographs from players. Dean Blandino stumbling off of I, Jerry Jones' mm, bus here yeah. in Indianapolis, Indiana. There's been other balls that have just moved from uh, third in the yard to third and inch or whatever for certain people. There's certain spots that happen. I mean, there is a list of the game is rigged uh, conversation or conspiracy fodder if you really want to dive into it. But with that being said, as somebody that's been in there, I have never shanked a punt to help somebody win a bet. Okay. I, I've never. AJ, would you like to go on the record and say anything? I've never been approached by anybody to ever do anything like that. Yeah, I don't think it works that way. Me neither. So he hasn't missed a assignment on purpose mm-hmm. and never been approached. Me neither. AQ, you were in the NFL a long time. A lot of different teams. You definitely got paid off. Tell didn't the you yeah, definitely were cooking AQ. books, Tell I bet, truth. you scumbag. Tell the truth. No. Never? <laughs> never? Not a once. So, sure. so what about Dean Blandino coming off Jerry Jones' bus? Yeah. What about this They're guy friends. asking for an autograph all of a sudden in the fucking middle of the thing? What about a ball just mysteriously moving? The NFL is rigged. What about no, the Hail Mary in Seattle? I don't know. But I do, I do know this. I don't know. You can't say that. You're part of the NFL for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. When on those ref reports, it always says like where they went to college. So maybe Mike said, oh, there's an A&M guy. Let's go say hello and – Hey, I'm learning golf, and there it is. It's a very believable story. Yeah, I think it is a believable story. Yeah. Can't be happening in front of Sheena Quick's no. camera. Would have been worse Can't if uh, the Bucks didn't stink and they got blown out. Like if the Bucks were won. win that game. Yeah. Mike yeah. Evans has a pass hey, interference mm-hmm. late, that's called, mm-hmm. by Texas A&M, mm-hmm. cuz. Oh, that would have been... That would have been tough. If I'm a Bucks fan, I'm more worried about Mike Evans dropping that ball, worried about his golf game. What's going on there? You're right, wide open. And that fucking bu- 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 that looked bad. That looked like a team that doesn't doesn't give it. Looked like a preseason game. Like yeah. they're not even. You know what I mean? Like, they didn't have like a didn't have like a sense of urgency. I felt like all day. Hey, this is a real fucking game. This hey, this matters here. You Division. Know? This is this is a pretty big fucking game Get here. Your boys together. Out of nowhere. What is the deal? Like you fucking lost the ship, yeah. lost the tide. You're not down there. Are you the problem? Are you the X factor? Yeah. Are you oh. the glue that kept that whole place together? Is that what's going yes. on down in Tampa? They stink right now. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. They got to get it figured out. They got to get it figured out quack, quick. And here's the thing, Oregon. Yep. There you go. See what I did there? Quack. Yeah. Quack. Quack. Beautiful. Quack. 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 Quack, 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 Always a good time to have a quick quack chant. What were you saying, though? They got to figure it out quick. They got the Ravens this week who they're they're playing good football. They got to get it figured out. Thursday night. Thursday night, Uh quick turnaround. Ravens run game, simple playbook. Winfield out. Uh Uh-oh. Wide. Andrews is up. Wide. Oh. They gotta get. They gotta get. They need. They need to get a win quick. I thought we were gonna continue to watch. Yeah, 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 list off more stuff. But I what think about? I'm scared to point out all the flaws and inadequacies of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because you have a lot of friends down there. But what I will say from watching them, they just look like they have no juice. What happened? They got no juice. No juice. Mm-hmm. You need juice. Okay, gotta have the juice to win the games. Looks like they got no juice. They got no confidence. They got no juice. They're not making any plays. Obviously, you got people not showing up to work. It is tough enough to win in the NFL when you have juice and everybody's bought in and there isn't drama outside the field, let alone when all that other shit is happening. Can they get past it? We find out on Thursday night. AQ, hey, was JPP, Sue, Jensen, like, did they lose all their leaders? Like, that's a valid point, honestly. I you. mean, you, you have Sue, JPP, Jensen, like you said, those three guys are all great leaders, great in their position groups, keep accountability in check with all the position groups. And so when you lose guys like that who may be getting older and maybe not as great of players as they once were, they're still super important to that team. So it's a great point to bring up. I know Rick Stroud brought it up a couple weeks ago when he was on there. But, you know, at the end of the day, other guys got to step up. You know, you lose guys. Other guys got to step up. It happens on every team every year, and hopefully some of those guys do. I hope so. Honestly, for the good of the NFL, Tom Brady being on a good team is fantastic. Let alone everything that's going on on social media right now with him and a former Mm, teammate. Yeah. Jesus, what a bad time to beat Tom Brady. Jeez. I don't know what happened. uh, Something bad. Seems like something. Yeah. What are you guys talking about? Well, there was that uh, thing with one of his guys, and A.B. was asking for payments. Oh, A.B. Oh, I don't know. Oh, that's part of it, yeah. I would assume there's, like, 
I mean, AB's on his own schedule right now. Well, playing, he's, get, he's getting paid to rap. I seen the check. He paid a lot to rap and looks the cash. Like. Um, let's go off. That's a weird situation there. Yeah, that guy's an absolute yeah. maniac. That's a weird situation there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Tom's going to have to address it at some point. Tom's got a lot of shit going on. I mean, a lot of shit going on. That's getting added to it. Uh, P.J. Walker is the guy for the Panthers, even if Darnold and Baker are healthy. P.J. Mm -hmm. Walker has had success at quarterback for the Carolina Panthers. They obviously get a massive win over the Tampa Bay Q Gronkineers this past weekend, in which the Tampa Bay Q Gronkineers are out with the Q and the Gronk, just the Tampa Bay <laughs> Buccaneers now. P.J. Walker has had success. Yeah. And I think the reason why P.J. Walker has had success is because he's a great thrower of the football. He's very mobile. And it seems like everybody loves him. I, I think every team he's ever been on, everybody loves him. Everybody loves what he's about. Now you got Steve Wilkes saying, you know what? Fucking fuck it. Let's go. This is our guy. New team. No Robbie. No CMC. We need weapons at every position. We'll make our quarterback one. Good for P.J. Walker getting an opportunity here to get some meaningful time, meaningful film, and hopefully extend his career a long, long time, A.J. I hope so. He's fun to watch. You're right. He can sling it. Like, the ball looks good coming out of his hands. He's Beautiful. super athletic. He, he definitely feels like he brings something to the team that they haven't had, too. So hopefully he can sustain that for a while. How about them having 4,000 people in the stands? Yeah. yeah, yikes. They did. What was the announced attendance? Did I don't know. Say it? Uh, who knows? Some media. Another sellout. Yeah, exactly. Some media person took like a pano video like five minutes before kickoff or whatever, yeah. and all you saw was the teal seats, just the entire oh, place. Yeah. And you're like, this is what happens when you. And they listed off everything that the Panthers had done over the last two years. I don't. I don't think they put in their file bankruptcy against one of the counties here nope. in there, but they could have added that in there. It was just a very, very bleak outcome for attendance there. And then they go and beat the fucking Buccaneers. Is that enough to rally and save the Carolina Panthers organization? Or does this year not matter at all, you think, AQ? It's all about who they hire next, who's the actual quarterback going to be, who's the head coach going to be. Keep Wilkes. Mm, was it Tepper who gave him the game ball after the game? Maybe, yeah, hey. I think everything's on the table like, right now. Yeah. They seem, the players seem to love Wilkes. I understand it's the whole, like, Hey, let's win one for this interim guy, or when, let's try to keep him around. It seems like they like him, at least from the little videos I've seen. What is it, two, three weeks? How long is that uh, fired coach thing that we uh, – yeah. uh, Normally, the bump. I normally just do the one week, but it could stretch to two weeks. The fired coach bump is real. For sure. It didn't, We've learned that with gambling. Yes, week one it didn't work against the Rams. Who, who knows who the fuck they are. A big but, win this past week. Yeah. yeah, and they jumped out. Who's Carolina play next week? Oh, I'd like to make a correction. I said the okay, Bengals lost to the Jets this year. Completely wrong. Bengals buried the Jets. Nick Mangled Day. Two years – yeah, last year Mike they lost White. it. So Mike I apologize. White. I would like to apologize to the Bengals fans for saying that yesterday about them losing and then now being very good. It seems like the Bengals over like the last three weeks have figured it out. Mm -hmm. Three, four weeks they figured it out and they're going. So I apologize to all Bengals fans for what I said yesterday. So I apologize. It was last year the fucking Jets just dog walked you. Yeah. You ended up making it to the fucking Super Bowl, so it doesn't matter anyways. Right. Nothing matters, really, in the NFL anymore. There's a lot of time left. Teams can go on runs, but it does appear as if some teams fucking stink right now. Uh, the NFL owners have unanimously agreed to repayment plan involving Stan Kroenke's relocation of the Rams. Uh, Rams, that's good news. There you go, guys. What, do, what does this mean? Front Office Sports is reporting that NFL no owners have unanimously agreed to a repayment plan involving Stan Kroenke relocation of the Rams. Kroenke will foot most of the $820 million uh, bill, but be partly repaid over the next 30 years. All right, you pay uh, $700 million. We'll pay you the $120 million mm -hmm. over the next 30 years. We're going to get a 30-year loan out to pay our own business partner back. Nobody will experience a loss this year, next year, the year after that, what? the year after that. What? We won't even remember there was a team in St. Louis by the time this actually affects your guys' bank accounts. And by that point, we might have resolved this entire thing anyways. So they're out of St. Louis. The drama is over. It was the St. Louis uh, Athletic Commission, commission. commission yeah. yep. that was heading it up. I don't know where that money goes. Is that money going into all of St. Louis? Is it just going into the committee members or commission members? I'm not sure, Could, and I'm sure St. Louis isn't thrilled that they no longer have it. Can you answer. imagine in the owner's meeting? Uh, all right, what's next on the docket? Uh, who thinks Stan should give uh, $700 million of his own money to St. Louis? Aye, all aye, of us. Aye. <laughs> Roger's like, we'll help you. $120 million. Remember, we're helping. Yeah. Yeah, pal. What is 120 million something to sneeze at, Stan? Is that what you're saying? You don't want 120 million? Well, are you guys paying it to me now? 
No, 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 no. We're no, actually no. getting a loan out. 30 years. You'll be yeah, dead. 30 years yeah. loan. Yeah, you'll get it. It'll be from all... It won't even be from us. It's actually coming from a bank. Yeah. Which, the money that we're putting in there, the interest rate on it, actually, we are... Yeah, Stan, you fucking you're ben, you're re, you want a hey, Super you Bowl. Hey, you wanted to move the team. You want a Super Bowl, okay? You fucking get yeah. it. But you're welcome. Way to go. It's over. All right, we're, next subject, Snyder. <laughs> and then that's it. literally yeah. all that happened there. I'm happy the NFL has handled the St. Louis issue, though. St. Louis had great fans. Mm -hmm. We saw that whenever the XFL took place. Mm -hmm. I don't know if $820 million is going to do a damn thing to you know reconcile that relationship, but I do hope and uh, – that St. Louis fans think it's a little bit of something. And maybe they reap the benefit of it, too. Where's that money? Is it going to, like, streets? Are they, like, fixing roads? Hopefully. With infrastructure, hopefully. City. Infrastructure. Yeah, but it's to the sports commission, right? So yeah. you would assume it's, like, athletic fields and stuff like that, cool, like, cool. around the area. Hopefully it goes towards a new stadium so they could get an NFL team again. Yeah, because that was the issue. Yeah. 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 But then Kroenke footed, like, $4 billion in L.A. to build. It's and supposed to be $4 billion. Bumped up to and then eight. it was $7 billion. I think it was six. Yeah. I think it ended up being six. Yeah. It was supposed to be two billion. Right. He footed an extra four billion. Yeah. But we had to leave St. Louis wow. because there's no stadium. You think he looked at the yeah. Spanos family? Like, hey, I just built the stadium. Can you at least lend me a couple hundred million dollars? And Spanos family's like, we'll give you 120 million. Yeah. yeah. Over the next, next 30, 30 years. years. <laughs> uh, the NFL was fantastic. Um, all right, let's get to a break, man. You know what time it is? Hell yeah. yeah. What do you want to do? You want to do something to try to make some money for people or no? Ooh, I mean, putt. Do you? It's up to you. Yeah, well, I mean, after what we saw during the last break, I don't know. If All right, let's love. putt. How many do you think he has to make here, AJ? Uh, three out of five. But AQ is a golfer, though. Like he'll make five out of five. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he might. AQ's got, got a nice so. stroke. I've seen it. Hey, what's he? What are you giving away, AJ? Merch? If he makes this, bunch of merch. Yeah. How many? Ten. Ten oh. merches. Ten, ten merches. Ten merches. Okay. <laughs> Your choice of anything from the store. Yeah. It's not like a resort course here, AQ. You got to drain this thing. Hey, resort greens. Yeah, but those are easier courses, remember? Yeah, allegedly. Ten. You go three or five for giving away <laughs> ten merches. Anything from the store.patmagfishow.com to ten random winners. Oh, man. Oh, no. That was nice touch, though. Good did roll. Just, That's a good roll, though. The odds just dropped mightily. Yeah. This did happen. we just hop on the own Oaks for us? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. no. Oh. Mm. Right, Great touch, row. though. That was good roll. Good Those roll. shoes have spikes on the bottom of them or no? <laughs> Oh. Oh, oh, man. oh, no. All those muscles can't get the ball to the hole. Bank it in. You got to bank one in. Oh. There it is. Oh, no. I almost accidentally <laughs> made an Aikman comment. Oh. What were you going to say? You know what I was going to say. Hey! hey! Good one for nothing. Yep. Yep. But it good is good putt. vibes going into the break. We appreciate you with that. Way to learn from your first four and make your last one. That's how we do it around here. Baby, Rest you. in peace to Joe Nardo. Rest in peace to the merch giveaway. Miss you, Joe. Rest in peace to hour two. Everybody take five. And on the other side, we got Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, October 25th, when we're going to chat about the loss to the commanders and what we look like going forward against the Bills in prime Woo! time. Coming off a bye this Sunday. Take five. Take five. Cut his hair. Said he gonna cut it if he scores a touchdown. 
Hand off goes to Nick Chubb going right side. Nick gets a block across midfield to the 45 down the sideline. Pushed out of bounds. Burrow catches, looks, fires, chase, touchdown! We're gonna get the ball back! We're gonna get the ball back! Great execution! Great communication! Great teamwork! Rock. Put it out. I'll be okay. End zone, touchdown, Gasecki. How about Mike Gasecki? A little bit of a breakout game for him today. Hey, keep running. It's coming. And Kyle Pitts caught it on U.S. soil oh, at number eight oh, as a touchdown. Hey, let's get him off the field right here. Let's get him off the field right here. Throws it right, and it's intercepted. Patrick Peterson. And they bring it. Here comes Derwin. Russell Wilson sacked. Bro, I take his ass out of the club. Hey, Bro, you see that I lifted his ass up? He say, well, I hear me say, damn. <laughs> Runs to his right, gonna keep it and run with it. Gets a blocker in front of him. Dives over a man at the 20 yard line. He is unbelievable. Make room in the highlight film for that one. I told you, prime time play, make prime time play in a good time game. Into the end zone, touchdown to Monte Smith. Jamar Chase has taken over this football game and once again goes off in this building. Unbelievable. He can't hold me! He can't, he can't hold me! Out, out, man! Out, out, you hear me? That's us! Keep hitting us, man! Let's go! Let's go! Hi, ah, 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 ah. right, baby. Yes, sir. Love you, bro. Keep working. We know what the f we can do, and we know what we can be, and we know it's in our hands, and that's how it's going to always be. You say you want to be a tough and rugged team, you got to win tough and rugged, and that's what tonight was. You earn everything in this league, and today, you earn this. What do you say, Von? Don't blink, don't flinch, whatever it is, man. You guys are as tough as nails, man. Tough as nails. Who they? Who they? Who they say they going to beat the Bengals? Who they? He's saying don't go off the top, it's too shallow. All you're gonna hear this stadium do is they put the big paw up, they start shaking it, they go, whoa. Yeah, he loves the defensive side of the ball. He said yesterday to me that this is a blue-collar team. They win it on special teams. They have five block kicks this season. The defensive side of the ball, Lynch leads the Big 12 in sacks. But also on the offensive side, Denzel Mims is an absolute animal. He is a weapon. Charlie Brew is a quarterback from Blake Travis. His dad was a quarterback in Texas. Yeah. His grandpa was a quarterback in Texas. And the people here in Waco just so happened to get a chance to see Charlie Brewer on a daily basis. Okay. Hey, 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 Ball hey, 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 hey. Boomer Coming here up. is going to mean a little bit different than what it means on the internet currently. And hopefully here in Baylor, they hope they're not hearing a lot of Boomer sooner. Everybody wants to be a punter, including quarterbacks. If I was a quarterback, I'd want to be a punter as well. Zero yards on that punt. Zero. That's an embarrassing situation. Zero. The Dak dance that gets on national television has led to a lot uh, of losses, but you got uh, to respect the hips being able uh, to go. sign am I going to make for college game day? Well, I want to make something creative. I want to make something fun. No, to hell with it. I don't like OU. Oh, you. <laughs> it is so thick. Look how thick that thing is. That's years and years of patience. Right now? Okay, let's do it. And we are out here on the Brazos River, which you can take a boat to the game. One of the only stadiums in the country that you can do that. It's beautiful out here. A lot of people would say, this is the last time I'm going to be on game day. Last time I allegedly did what I'm about to do, I ended up in a jail cell. Let's go! <laughs>
Jay. A lot higher than I thought. You fell You look like Ric Flair. That was a sellout, by the way. That was beautiful. Do we have any other shirts? Yeah, hold on. You need to go get changed before you get sick. Great work, Russia. I'm actually not that cold. Hey, I, I went for it. My chest hurts. <laughs> That's full commitment, by the way. An absolute dog named Dustin Hopkins. Yeah. Barry home four field goals, probably with a torn hamstring at some point. Burying home a winner in uh, overtime. Not being able to stand on his goddamn leg. Having to fall because his foot cannot withstand the weight of his body, but it can withstand the weight of a program, of a franchise, of an organization looking to find their way. And in OT, when push came to shove, Dustin Hopkins did what he did three other times last night with a torn ham, he puts the ball through the fucking uprights. He was in massive amount of pain. His teammates saw him, the world saw him. They hoisted this one-legged man up onto their shoulders to say, pal, you are the grittiest dog we have ever seen. Hey, why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck Boston Cops! Shut the fuck up! Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to the Fando Thunderdome. On this Aaron Rodgers Tuesday, October 25th, 2022, Hour 3 starts right now. Football! He is all the way back after a Monday night football game that did not see history, did not see glamour for the New England Patriots at Gillette, but instead saw the Chicago Bears of the NFC North go in and get a 33-14 win. Now, all eyes are on week 8 of the NFL season. That starts on Thursday night on Amazon Prime when Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens travel down to Tampa Bay to take on the Buccaneers, which seem to have a lot of problems. Problems. We have the toxic table on the stage at Boston Connor, at Ty Schmidt, one half of the hammer, Don Cowboys, Tone Diggs, also the host of In the Trenches and the Bobbled Exchange, 12 year NFL vet, Super Bowl champion, AQ Shipley. Hey, AQ! To my left, your right on the screen is a man who's a college football national champion, a Super Bowl champion, a Ryder Cup champion, an NBA pundit, video game shit stir, uh -huh. COVID survivor, Ohio fuck, A.J. Hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, baby, A.J., all the boys in the back are doing a fantastic job. Foxy, Zito, and Nick. And joining us now, like he has for the last three seasons, this one being the third, I guess. So two and a half seasons. Mm -hmm. Two and more than a third. Yep. Less than a half seasons. Yep. There it is. He's the back-to-back -back NFL MVP. This past Sunday, they lost to the Commanders. This upcoming Sunday, they have the Buffalo Bills in primetime coming off a bye. Your quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah! Yeah! Ooh, 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 ooh. Aaron, what's up, bub? You're not allowed to smile today. You have to be pissed off. Or what is your mindset after that loss to the Commanders going into a tough Buffalo Bills team, Aaron? Thank you for joining us. Was there a question that I wouldn't? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people that are tweeting, okay? And I don't know if you see that because you kind of stay in your same world. There's a lot of people tweeting. Aaron's not going to show up on Pat McAfee's show. This nope. is the first time they've had a losing record since the Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays have started. He's not going to smile if he's on there. He better not smile if he's on there. <laughs> what is your mindset? We still got a long season left, I assume? Or do you understand there's some frustration and it's warranted almost around the Green Bay Packer faithful? Well, they can say whatever they want. Love that. They've, they've, nothing, you know, I, nothing's going to sway that opinion, I don't think. You know, I can come on here and extol the virtues of my team and the 
hope for the future and the excitement about the present. But I think people who are bitter and angry, they kind of want to sit in that, wallow in it a little bit, if you if you will. You know, like a, like a pig and shit, you know, just kind of enjoy it for a little bit. Hell just yeah. kind of let that wash all over them until they're ready to to get washed off. Is so. that what you're thinking that you, is that what you're thinking though obviously that's what like this type of loss does to a team is like some people you know want to feel it just so that they can never feel it again or is that something that you guys can't do in the locker room and you see others doing at the same time I, I was talking about the fans I think okay. the fans are doing it a little bit yeah the fans you know want to want to be upset and that's fine I mean that's great it's still kind of a free country so they can do whatever they whatever they want um, as far as us, look, we're just we're gonna get ready for a tough opponent on Sunday Night Football. I think there's a lot of interesting things coming to a head this week. Uh, we have, you know, had some success in primetime games over the last little bit. So I know we're playing a tough opponent. They're coming off a bye week. They got an extra week to get ready for us. They got a great quarterback, uh, great defense, very well coached, a lot of weapons. Jake Kumaro. So. <laughs> A lot, lot, lot going for them, but uh, you know we're uh, we're the underdog this week, which is a new, new, uh, new spot for us. A quick pivot back to the Washington game. What exactly do you think? What were they doing defensively? I, I give their defense credit, honestly. Like, what were they doing? I guess to give you guys a tough time for your offense. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> then what was it? People are going to be so mad with your answer. Right <laughs> so mad about it. I mean, they didn't have to do anything. They play. They rushed four guys. They played cover four. They sprinkled a couple weak inserts and a couple man coverages, and that was it. So, what do you think it is? They got good. They got good players. But as far as like schematically, what did they do? Just lined up and played. So what do you think it is? Why do you think there is some struggles? Growing Pains was obviously a conversation early. I, there was a report that you guys were going to do something with your offensive line, and then whenever last minute came out that Bakhtiari woke up on Saturday and his knee didn't feel good, they kind of went away from that. It felt like you could just never really get anything going. Aaron Jones got in the end zone twice. Okay, hey, here yeah, we go. Yep. Here we go. Aaron Jones getting back into it. But it never really felt like you guys were able to do anything. Is it just you think it was them making plays, you guys not executing? What do you think it is? Well, I mean, they have a nice front. They have a lot of first rounders in that front. They got a good, uh, you know, good linebackers, a good on the back end. But we had so many uh, just mental errors and mistakes. It's just it's not the kind of football we're used to playing over the years. You know, uh, there have been there have definitely been games. You know, four or five which seasons where we average you know four, five, six, maybe seven at the most. Kind of mental errors or missed assignments per week and. Yeah, some weeks you have like four, you know, two sometimes. Uh, this week, you know, it's well, this season a lot more than that every single week. You know, it's double digits every single week. It's, uh, you know, even on a game we had like 50 plays or something. It wasn't a ton of plays. Like, you know, they had 37 minutes of time possession. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of mistakes. After the game, you said this might be the best thing for this team. Are you talking about locking in, kind of learning that this can happen and maybe get up or give up all those MAs and missed things? And have you felt that around the building the last two days, I guess? You haven't really been around. So you got to be careful taking my comments out of, out of context. I think I said the best thing oh. for this team is, is going on the road and being an underdog at this point. Oh, okay. And people starting to count us out. I said that might be the best thing for us. Okay. Might. Might we'll see. <laughs> What do you think about the locker room that you have this year versus last year? Do you think learning? Do you think, like, after that game, did you feel like, oh, these guys care, these guys are invested, these guys understand that this was a massive loss and we don't, although we have a lot of time left, we really don't. Did you feel that with the locker room? Are you disappointed with any of that? Or do you feel like you have the guys that you can go on a run and kind of right the ship? That's a good question. I, I feel like I just got to look at what happened in the locker room. We had two guys speak up one kind of normal and one not as normal uh we had uh, dallin speak up on behalf of uh, the special teams and i guess you know us in general and gave an impassioned speech about owning uh you know owning our stuff and being accountable and playing better and what that looks like not just on sundays but monday through saturday 
thought it was great. And then uh, we had a big dog uh, said a bunch of things as well. Um, so if it had been a quiet locker room and we just kind of mosey on over to the buses and mosey on over to the airport, you might think that guys don't give a shit, but uh, definitely wasn't that. Definitely, uh, definitely wasn't that feeling at all. It was disappointment, frustration. Uh, guys care because they put in the time, emotion, and and uh, that's what you want to see. Now we just gotta find a way to get one win and then start stacking from there. Hell yeah! Go ahead, Ty. Your question for Aaron? Yeah, Aaron. I think uh, a lot of fans. I mean, I know me especially. Like, I kind of do the wallow in the sorrow for a couple of days, but then you know, after a couple of days, it's kind of you move past it. You still have hope moving forward. No, you don't. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Absolutely. I said earlier. You he know, has because, hope after yes. he talks to Aaron. Yeah, that is good. after this conversation. Absolutely. Is literally Aaron saves him from. Aaron saves Ty from doing bad things to himself but. yes well, I I mean, is- okay easy aj but yeah no like that's that's for real you know you watch the game and you live and die with everything and you get really upset and frustrated because like you mentioned like it's just you know my whole lifetime you're not used to seeing the packers play like this but we've seen the nfl i mean shit no one thought the the pats were going to get blown out by the the bears last night so it is like a why yeah. why can't you know the you guys go out and and beat the the Bills on Sunday night, and with all how frustrated the fans are, like you know, you keep in mind how frustrated you guys probably are. But at this point in the season, like, how close do you think we are to you know one of your patented like relax or like run the table speeches, or does that not even need to be said because everyone kind of understands like the situation that you guys are in and what you need to do moving forward? Yeah, I mean, just gotta catch me at the right time. I, I couldn't tell you if if it's gonna come out at some point. It just has to be in the moment. It's not a lot of forethought to it. it if if a question perks something in my brain that uh, you know that I feel like I need to give a certain response, you know, I think after I gave those responses, I realized that that might kind of go places, um, and I'm glad it did. It kind of became a rallying cry. But you can't do that shit all the time. You got to, you know, it's, it's got to be authentic in the moment. If it comes out, it comes out. That'd be great. But um, I think when the players really take over, then you see, you're going to see the possibility of us making a run. So when the players really take over, I'm not talking about usurping power from coaches. I'm talking about we take over, we take ownership of what we're putting on the field. Now, some of that might be in the plan. So some of that might be, hey, I really want to do this. Offense, defense, teams, whatever it might be. Um, But the other part is taking ownership of your your daily habits and your routines. Just because we're a young team, we can't just write that off as, oh, they're figuring it out. The rookies are figuring this thing out. And they're going to go through their rookie wall and blah, 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 bullshit, bullshit. We need everybody on the same page to make the plays that are possible. But we need them Monday to Saturday to put in the time to be ready to play Sunday. Because... There's too many times in a game where there's simple, simple things that just are not being accomplished. How close are you? We hear people talk about, like, different players about their team. Oh, we're really close, even though they may be losing some games. Okay, we're close. We're almost there. We just got to figure it out. Do you feel like you guys are close and it's just one player here or there? It's definitely not just one player here or there. Like I said, it's, you know, 20% of the time. If, if we have 50 plays and we have 10 mental uh, missed assignments or mental errors, that's 20% of the time. So that's way too high. You know, in the past, we're looking more like at, uh, you know, less than 10%. So it gives us, you know, a really good chance to be successful. 20%, that's too high. You know, that's, you know, that's a, you know one play a series where you're really making it tough on yourself. So we got to fix that. And whatever that is, I think... You know, guys who are making too many mistakes shouldn't be playing. You know, we gotta got to start cutting some reps. And maybe guys who aren't playing, uh, give them a chance. So we're, we're going to see. We made some changes, you know, last week. We moved uh, Yash over to right, right tackle. We moved John to right guard. Um, Elton to left guard. So, you know, we're, we're doing some things. Um, and there'll be more opportunities for other guys like moving forward too, especially with our injury situation uh, as we look at uh, this week and see who's healthy. We're lucky to get to ride the wave of an NFL season with an NFL quarterback, let alone the guy who's the back-to-back MVP. And this would take 
you know, a real human to say this, and I don't know if you're at this point, but is there times where you're dropping back, where you have zero confidence or faith in some people that you're on the field with and doing what they're supposed to do? So it kind of makes you second guess yourself. Is there anything affecting how you play with that? Is that outside stuff potentially affect how you are and how comfortable you are in every single play? And is that something you've thought about? I can't say. I mean, I'm too big of an optimist. So I, I really think the best in people. And and I expect that high level. So for me to go out there and think, oh, man, this dude is guaranteed not run the right route. I have no idea what he's doing. I don't, I don't think like that because I just have an expectation that, you know, we've had these conversations for months now about certain things, and they're going to recall it in the moment, and, and I know they're going to do the right thing, and we're going to make this work. So I just have a lot of optimism when I'm out there. Um, now, sometimes they test my optimism for sure, but... Uh, but, you know, there's always the – it's the good with the bad. You know, how do we get them to really lock in on those positive things and take those with them and then play with that confidence. You know, play with that confidence that they that the young players had at their colleges when they were the man. You know, they were the BMOC. Oh. You know, they were coming through every single, every single week and making plays. If we can get them to play with that type of confidence, you know, then – I expect some some better better results. Confidence comes from preparation. Uh, obviously, preparation leads to results, and everything kind of goes hand in hand. After the results are given, this particular game against the Commanders, you watch it, you judge everybody on every play, you judge yourself on every play. How do you go about watching a game like the Commanders to correct it for going forward? And what did you see out of yourself against the Commanders? Yeah, judge everything. Yeah, um, every play, my own performance, all of it. I mean, this was my highest graded game by Tom, uh, which maybe. people would be maybe surprised to hear. <laughs> but you know, we we uh, probably didn't execute a lot of drops, a uh, couple missed throws. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're behind the sticks. You know, we're second and twenty, third and twenty-five, first and fifteens. Way too many penalties. Uh, you know, way too many drops, uh, you know, not enough rushing attempts because we were behind the sticks the whole time. Obviously, Aaron Jones, every time he touches it, has, you know, is going to make a bunch of big plays, uh, has a possibility. Um, but, yeah, man, we just had – there were three or four plays where if we just do what we're supposed to do, the you know, those are the key plays. I tell them all the time. It could be the first play of the game, could be the last play of the game, any play in between. One play often, two plays, three plays at the most – can determine the outcome of the game. And sometimes the simplest plays are just if I outside release here, this happens, boom, boom, first down, we'll move on to, the, you know, we'll move on, we're you know, getting points in this drive. Um, little things, it's just the, it's the details. And uh, some of it's on the players, for sure, on us. Uh, some of it's on the coaching staff, as far as making sure that we're really getting every detail into this. But ultimately... Like Dallin said after the game, you know, it's about the players. Players players win, players lose. We're out there playing. So it's on us to get this shit fixed. Uh, so we got to look at our habits, what we're doing during the week, how we're studying. Because when you're missing little details or fundamental things, those are correctable. And that's why you have a, you have some hope. It's because it's not like we're getting just dominated out there. You know, we're not getting man-to-man -man dominated. We are getting, we're beating ourselves. Most games, we really are beating ourselves. Do you think – it sounds like there is some real hope, huh? Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah. this is what we were talking about with Ty. After you start talking about things on, like, Monday, Sunday night, Monday, yesterday, you talked to Ty. Yankees get swept. I mean, Iowa Hawkeyes stink at football. You guys lose the game that you lose to the Commodores. Then all of a sudden, Ty comes in here, miserable mess. Then we talk to you, and you start hearing some things, and Ty, you could see his Grinch face – turn from upside down literally to a smile. It feels like you have that vibe too. You have to, obviously, going into week eight. But how how is the the step forward? Do you talk to LaFleur? Do you talk to the team? I know the two guys talked. Like, how do you think you guys get out of this little bit of rut, and how do you turn things into this hopeful promised land that you can see coming from a mile away? Well, you have to really be cognizant of – when is the right time to speak and when is the right time to listen? We have two ears and one mouth for a reason. So there are times to listen. And then there are times where you've heard enough. 
and now it's start time. It's that time to really crack the whip a little bit. So could be could be that time. Could definitely be that time. Players <laughs> only. Players only meeting coming. <laughs> No, we don't know. You know, no, the floor needs to hear this too. Sounds, yeah. like, sounds like everybody needs to hear this potentially. <laughs> no, no, players only meeting those are that's Fugues. that's for show a lot of times. Um, but no, it could be time to to look for a little little more opportunities to crack the whip a little bit. Well, I can't wait to hear how that. We're seven, we're seven games in, you know. I think well, again, not everybody can be coached or held accountable the same way, but. But uh, could be, could be that time. Okay, I'm excited to see the reaction. Big time Sunday night primetime game. Excited to hear the fallout from everything that you said. And everybody judge Aaron Rodgers being a prick to his teammates, mm -hmm. even though you know that's just kind of the way you would want your leader to operate. Speaking of leader, Bakhtiari. Okay, I know he's a friend of yours, good friend of yours. We've seen you guys in a golf cart. I don't know him personally, but I'm a big fan of him as a human. He chugs two beers at a time. Right. He's one of the greatest athletes for the size that he is, and he seems to be hysterical as a human. Did you know he was going to sit out, and do you have optimism with him for the rest of the season? Because he's in a full game, then he's in a pitch count, then he's supposed to be in, then the day before the game, he's out. You're the closest to him. We don't really know what's going on. Is he going to be all right going forward, or is there some real worries here about one of your best friends in David Bakhtiari? And also, one of the best tackles ever played football. Yeah, I didn't know until 90 minutes before. I didn't know until they put the inactives in. Um, I knew that he was going through some things, but I thought he was going to play. And uh, I know he went out to test and couldn't get it done in pregame, so they put him down. So I found out uh, when just about everybody else found out. Um, obviously, he wanted to be healthy. Nobody uh, takes care of himself quite like Dave. Uh, he's got... Uh, you know, a lot of people taking care of him on a, around the clock besides, you know, his amazing uh, pregnant uh, wife, Frankie. Um, I feel like Dave should be taking care of her a little bit more, but um, <laughs> that's a whole other thing. Dave's super cheap. But uh, <laughs> bought you a nice car. Got him. It's a good golf cart. It's a good golf cart. Yeah, yeah. yeah the golf cart's great. I do love the golf cart. It's my favorite, my favorite, my favorite gift ever from, from Dave and my only gift. But, uh, well, listen, I found out 90 minutes, I found out 90 minutes before the game and uh, was disappointed for him, mostly, just because I know how much he cares about it and uh, what he's been through. I, you know, I don't know. I had to let him speak for himself, but I feel like uh, I'm going to manifest him coming back and playing this week, and I feel like that's a real possibility. Do you talk to him about it? Does he, does he, is that something you guys kind of, because you said you let him tell his story. We haven't heard anything about it, and I, I think, like, fans of the, of the program, myself included now, because they are 12. And, you know, Aaron Rodgers Tuesdays have been a fantastic treat for all of us to be a part of. So I'm going to pull for the team, obviously, that is blessing us with this particular segment. It, it's, it makes no sense. I don't understand. Like, is he worried about this thing tearing bad? Like, to go from playing to a pitch count to not being able to play, to potentially playing. Like, I don't think I've ever heard of this before, and it sounds scary almost. You're saying that that is manifesting, is that we do have positive vibes about the whole Bakhtiari, potentially. I mean, I do, and you got to understand, again, uh, Pat, the pitch, coin, the pitch count in the Giants was because of the, you know, the long flight, the short amount of time between the game and the flight. Uh, that was the reason for that. Uh, um, and then, you know, obviously he's... Uh, you know, has a surgically repaired knee, and he's going through uh, practice and trying to feel better. And every now and then, might have uh, some flare-ups and in inflammation or whatnot. But um, you know, I would expect him to to improve and and hopefully play this week. All right, let's go, Bach. Yeah. Great to have you back, Bach. You know, does he need to get? Yeah, that's to a hope. That's a hope. That's not a definitive. That's a strong hope and manifestation. Uh, he'll probably tell me tomorrow in the car to shut my mouth and stop talking for him but <laughs> hey there we go nice yeah dude i'm hoping for it i'm manifesting right alongside you i think he's great i think he's good for the game whenever he's playing it's really nice to see i've never seen what's going on with his knee though it kind of makes me scared but let's go ahead and get him back let's do positive let's do positive here we, go. Here we, go, here we go he needs to get that lady that ed monix used to go to i was married to that guy to drain his knee that's right mm -hmm. you know what i mean that's why he needs that ed monix knee relief from uh semi-pro tone has a question for you aaron go ahead tone aaron is is anything um attributed to like potential offensive struggles with uh, Getzey and Hackett not being there anymore? 
Uh, has has anything what? Am I going to blame the struggles on that? Have you have you experienced any difference without those two being in the building? Obviously, is it a different? Is it a much different offense? Is it a different preparation? I think is what yeah. Tone is leading to. Listen, I think you got to remember first and foremost, this is Matt's offense. So Hackett was the offense coordinator, but he was more the implementer of the uh, the plan. So uh, he had his own ideas, and all these coaches bring their own ideas to it. But the uh, the boundary around this offense is the Shanahan system that Matt grew up in. So this is Matt's offense. This is not Hackett's offense. It wasn't Getsy's offense. It's not the West Coast offense. This is Matt's offense. So it doesn't matter who's in that place. Uh, that's the offense that's going to get run. So when you have an offense coordinator but an offensive head coach, uh, it's not like they have their own system. So when they leave, what you're missing is the implementation of that weekly installation, the personalities, um, the uh, – you know, relationship that that person has with the head coach on during the week and then on game day, uh, the influence that person has, maybe that specific section of the plan that person has. But um, but no, we got uh, you know in their place. You know, Tom Clements has been a longtime coach of mine, and he's a fantastic coach. He's done uh, an incredible job, I think, uh, again this year with me and with Jordan and with Danny. And then Steno's doing the the OC stuff. Uh, he's, you know, one of my all-time favorite coaches. I mean, he's a great dude. He's funny as hell up in front of the room. He's doing a great job. So uh, do we miss those guys? Do I miss those guys? Hell yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's like two, like they're like brothers to me. You know, Hack and uh, Getsy's like younger than me, but, you know, we were around each other for, I don't know, 10 years. And Hack, you know, every year spent like, it felt like five years together. So like we were together for like 50. Years, his but, years uh, are exp feeling like 10 years now. His years, <laughs> <laughs> old Hackett over there. Yeah, well, I'm gonna stay away from that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you, you could stay away from that. What about though, your head coach? You and the floor, you have a, a, a fun relationship. It seems like he's really amped up, and you, you talk about during games, you're there to like calm him down. What's it like day to day now? You guys still like same, same vein, or you both just amped up and pissed off all the time now? There we go. <laughs> I would say Matt is never really pissed off, you know, amped up, definitely. At you, Anxiety maybe. level. Anxiety level. At me, he might be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> He's mad at me when I say stuff like this. His anxiety level is at a seven base. But the funny part is, is that, base. you know, I say that and then, you know, some other people, I won't name them, you know, might come by and tell me, you know, that was a little bit low. Oh, his assistant coaches, wow. it sounds like. It sounds like that's the other people that are in the building a little bit. And, and, and Robert Sala, yeah. Um, but, oh, uh, and the Jets, and yeah. people that have been uh, around him before. You, if, if he's in seven now, that's better. That's what I do love about Matt, to see him grow the most, is he's been able to laugh at himself. And, hey, crazy enough, as he's able to laugh at himself a little bit more, his jokes in front of the room become that much more funny. Now, maybe not funny enough to uh, engage a Frank Zombo for an entire speech, but they are they are getting better, so I will give Matt a lot of credit for that. How's our relationship? Awesome, man. Yeah, we you know we still talk all the time, uh, every single day. We got a great FaceTime that I get to look forward to Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. So, um, pretty business as usual. We both want to get it fixed. We both care about things uh, deeply, and uh, both want to be saying the right message to the team. Him in front of the room, and me in my own capacity as kind of a mouthpiece for coaching staff and for my own thoughts um but yeah you know maddie uh uh you know just wants to do right by the squad and uh he's he's been a good uh good leader for us you think he's been steady for us as well in some of these moments of adversity which uh shows a lot of growth as well okay and obviously you having a say and having a conversation with lafleur is a big deal from where we were a few years ago not saying that you weren't involved in anything but that was obviously a topic of conversation trade deadline one week from now are you in there are you in that conversation or no i'm in all the conversation do you want to be do you not want to be do you feel like you're included as much as you wanted to be whenever the whole conversation started a couple of years ago and do you feel like it's a respect worthy uh, level of input that you're allowed to have on the team that is ultimately being judged by how you do forever. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, that's a sticky question, I think. You're trying to trap me a little bit. Um, so I'm not going to bite on that. 
But that was good. That was a real media question from you. Uh, well, I mean, it's a real thing. Trade deadline's coming up in one week. There's a lot of teams that need a lot of weapons. You guys, everybody's saying need one. There's a couple people on there. Have you gotten a chance to chat about that, or do you want to? Do you feel like you have or no? I am in conversations with Brian often. Here we go. This is good news, right? Oh, yeah. I don't think that's new news. That's the same thing I said last week. I'm in conversation with Brian often, and I um, you know, trust that uh, – if there's a guy to get out there that makes sense for us, then we're going to get him. That's good news still, though. I think we can still celebrate, even though you said it one week ago. You know, I think that's good news. That's a great place to where we – yeah, here we go. Yeah, hell yeah. It's good news, I feel like. That's what we were looking for a couple of years ago. I see you got the Milwaukee Bucks hoodie on. Are we going to make a run this year? Are we going to win it all? I think we had a good chance. Let's I mean, go. we had an opening night without Middleton, Connaughton, Joe Ingles. One of my all-time favorite players in the league. Um, Got to win. Now we're yeah, two and zero. Oh, I think big game tomorrow. Hell yeah! Excited, excited for the team. I mean, Giannis had video game numbers the other night. He was seventeen for twenty-one, so scored good. forty-four points in like thirty minutes or something crazy like that. He's pretty good at the basketball. How about the Pacers? We're tanking for that big seven-foot-two guy. Yeah, Ah, I think it's a little early. Let's let's be. I don't. <laughs> They're bad. It's been a long time. You know, we don't got Giannis around here. It'd be great if we got. Yeah, we're 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 all, yeah. Yeah. Are you are you writing off the Lakers already? There because they're zero and three, and the Sacramento Kings mm-hmm. and the Orlando Magic. Of course, they suck. All those teams so bad. <laughs> the Lakers can't shoot a penny into the ocean, pal. You're an owner in the league. You understand how the game goes. You can't make shots. You're going to lose games. The Lakers can't do it. LeBron said it to me. LeBron told me that. He told you personally. Well, I told a lot of people. I happen to be one of the people on the receiving end of the well, information. What, is that? what did Scotty Pippen say to you? Oh, Scotty fucking dunked one on me now. <laughs> hey, he's a player. Scotty Pippen is a goddamn player. He did a champagne celebration in my face oh, after yeah. he beat me one on one. I was told he was terrible at golf. That's right. I was told he, this guy stinks at golf. Dale Curry sandbagging. I was mm. up, we were at the casino until three, four a.m. Tee off at seven thirty against fucking Scotty Pippen. That guy's a scratch golfer. I, I don't. Even, I got. I got bamboozled. We won. Who cares? But Scottie Pippen is good at golf. Do not get fucking hustled (laughs) into that whole thing. Uh, Aaron, we're going to let you go. Do you have a book this week? I do, and I think it's very apropos for you, for our fan base, uh, for Ty as well. Apropos. This is apropos. Because at the the root of it is um, uh, this gentleman, wizard, if you will, uh, teaches... um, It's a fucking wizard? teaches breath work and i think at a time like this we all need to take Ooh, a couple deep breaths <laughs> into our lungs and then enter you know our bellies and then just exhale it and as we exhale we need to exhale all that negativity that we've been storing up the past two days you know all the negativity and the spite and the vitriol oh. aimed at me and matt and all of our players oh. let's just breathe that in and then let's exhale it out. That easy. And now we can heal ourselves oh, yeah. with this book called Healing by David Elliott. Wim off? Not Wim. <laughs> David Elliott, the author of the... David Re- Elliott, he's, uh, he's a great uh, great human. Like I said, he does, he does breathwork stuff. He's written a couple books. Uh... uh this one and uh, a book called The Reluctant Healer about his life and lessons. And this is kind of a workbook-ish where it gives you some prompts each time to do some writing and some meditations on. But uh, I highlight this because he's a great human and also because I thought it was apropos for today as we yes. uh, we kind of get out there a little bit and uh, get a little worried about the season getting away from us, then let's just take a couple of breaths here, take a beat, and recenter and calm, and turn off the AJ Hawks of the world who already run to write us off. And, <laughs> I love yep. that. and uh, turn on the uh, Tuesday afternoon Ty Schmitz, who mm. have a little bit more hope, okay. a little bit more oh, love yeah. in their heart, and a little bit more excited about life. You! I think that is <laughs> apropos, isn't it? It is. Oh, I was yeah. using context clues since the first time you used that in this particular conversation. It fits today. Is that what that apropos means? Bingo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that book is called Healing. Healing. 
Healing did, by David Elliott. Did David Elliott hawk some of Wim Hof stuff, or is it different? Two different breathing people here. Two different. Definitely two different styles for sure. A big Wim Hof fan as well, um, and I've done a lot of his stuff. But this uh, this is definitely different. Different style. You get in a cold tub. You a cold tub guy? You go to a frozen lake. You do your breathing. You take your shoes off. Take your socks off, and say, you know what? I need to be centered in cold water. Because if you can battle against cold water mentally, you can battle against any challenges that come your way. <laughs> <laughs> is that what uh is that what the healing is all about as well i know that's wim hof's way what what we appreciate you buddy <laughs> good luck breathing this week good luck playing this week let's fucking go get him we're underdogs this weekend yes yeah, we pick you sure. what'd you say we're gonna embrace that sure. hey we i've been a homer i pick you guys no matter what what should i do this week uh gfy no! Ladies and gentlemen, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. That was great. He shit, AJ. <laughs> Good. I'm we, glad. I'm glad he's got some emotion in there. He's not just breathing all day. Bro, we went, <laughs> <laughs> we went from Wim Hof to go fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love it. That's Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. That's right. Boom. What did you hear in there, Ty, that made you feel better? Or did anything make you feel better? And what are your thoughts going in against the Bills on primetime after the Bills have a bye week? I mean, it was nice not to just hear, like, the cookie cutter. What, like, you can tell he's definitely frustrated with some of the guys yeah, yeah. on offense. And, Different vibe. Yeah, how yeah. many mistakes they've been making. And, like, say, hey, let's – let's. Packers are never underdogs or are rarely underdogs. So, let's see how they play on Sunday night. This is a big game. Big game. Let's get to a break. Let's take five, and on the other side, we'll react to the reactions to what Aaron said, and then we'll go in the trenches with AQ Shipley, which yeah. we know AJ oh, yeah. loves. Oh, loves it. Mm -hmm. Lives for I it. I almost sent AQ a, a clip from uh, Seattle, watching oh. their tight end pull around and kill somebody and go try to find somebody else. Well, I think it might be in there. <laughs> I, sent him a, I sent him a play uh, in the middle of the game. It did not make the list. Really? So, huh. Really thankful to give him this platform. Can't wait to learn about, you know, in the trenches <laughs> on the other side. We have a lot to, you know, learn. I think we have a lot to get better at. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's make sure we remember. <laughs> let's make sure we remember. Easy for me to say <laughs> that whenever life seems to be burning down, mm -hmm. that a proper perspective is what really makes it all go. So go ahead and take a nice deep breath in, AJ. <laughs> Never. And breathe out. <laughs> now we're ready. Sounds yeah. great. Take five. Bye. Big brain football. Man, I love this. What is it about this spectacular game that we all love? The passing, the running, the hitting, the kicking, the scheming, the drama, the athleticism? Let's go, let's go. Right here, big drop. I think it's a combination of all of those things, but I believe it all boils down to this. The competition level is fucking awesome. For the win with two seconds left. A finger can literally be the difference between a W and an L. What a turn of events! It's what makes football wildly fun to watch and in turn, wildly fun to bet on, but I digress. The reason I'm doing this segment every week is to hopefully grow the respect for the game and to give love to the players who make all of this shit happen. Not just their skill and their amazing playmaking ability, what I really like is the finish, man. Not a lot of guys would be able to make that six points. This will be all about respecting these guys' big fucking brains. Strong like bull. Smart like tractor. You better be smart in this game, man. Coaches usually get all of the credit in this beautiful minds of football space, but I want to shine a light on the players' brains. Let's go do this thing, baby. Let's go. Stuff like Mahomes and Kelsey cooking up a last second drive in one of the best playoff games of all time. They play it like that, that seam is open. That ball go down immediately. Yep. Bills rush four, Mahomes throws, Kelsey open inside the 40, breaks the tackle and down. And stuff like this, all from week one. 
How about scary Terry McLaurin recognizing a corner is playing lazy cover two technique all game, telling everyone and their mother about it. Try to let us run by that dude, bro. This cover two, bro, they playing it so lazy. They playing lazy over there all day. Then, in the fourth quarter, when it matters, Carson Wentz hits Terry behind that lazy cover two corner. Taking a shot down the field, there's McLaurin, on it again, and in! That's big brain football. Come on, man! Hey, I did lazy all day, all day. How about Sunday night in Dallas? Tom Brady asking Mike Evans, what you want, babe? And Evans calling his shot, give me the fade. Yo, Tom said, what you want? Tom said, what you want, babe? I said, the fade. He knows the man across from him and knows how to beat him. I know how to get him. He tried to do that little stab. Yeah. My slow blade, back out. I slapped him so hard right now at the line. Watch me see him. I slapped it. That's some beautiful big brain football. Hard to beat in the air, Mike Evans. Which brings us to our main feature this week, Josh Allen. He doesn't just have a big arm. He doesn't just have big gawness. He has a big old brain, too. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Up 14 against the world champs, third and four. He's across the line from a man who called him trash just four years ago. Allen knows that that particular man peaks and cheats himself, a big brain player trying to gain an advantage. Often with eyes more on the quarterback and less on the receivers. He's thinking you ain't gonna throw a ball deep. So Bob is, Bob is literally looking, and not even worried about you on the trips. Allen knows Jalen Ramsey loves sitting on routes, especially on third and four, the bunny down. So he tells his guy, Mr. Minneapolis Miracle himself, Stephon Ditch, hey dude, don't run the cold route, just go deep. Can you take us through the touchdown, just what you saw on that play? Josh told me, show me just run. Allen's hunch that five would peak and Diggs could get behind him paid off like a same game parlay. Their corners were really looking at the quarterback and Diggs just ran a heck of a route. Zone cover, Jalen Ramsey was trying to read the eyes of Josh Allen and let Diggs go past him and Josh Allen soars it over Ramsey's head. The look on Josh's face when he runs up on Ramsey is quite a, what was that pal, moment. I'm sure he's saying something like, I knew you would do the exact thing you just did, so I told my guy to adjust, and we beat your ass. That's not trash, Jalen. That's not a garbage pick. No, no, that's big brain football. Look him off, and he's going to squat. It was simple. I knew it. It was simple. I said, all right, go. I hang my hat on as a player that he got that dog. Daybo coming in there now, and you got an entire new operation. What are you looking forward to to change the path here of how your career has gone thus far? I think everybody watching the Giants goes like, man, it'd be awesome to see him on a fully ready-to-go team because of how talented you are, how electrifying you are. Out of nowhere, the game can change with you. It's awesome. You and Jonathan Taylor, very similar style of running, two very different programs right now. Whenever you look ahead to the future, first of what you've been through already in your early career, what are your thoughts and what are your projections? Well, I think you got to take from – you got to learn from what happened in the past. Uh, obviously, we're going into our third our third head coach, but with Shermer, uh, with Judge, um, obviously it was unfortunate that they got fired. But hey, that's not stuff. normal, by the way. You're very no. young. Yeah. That's not yeah. normal. Yeah. That's this is not a normal thing. So like you take you take what you you, you take from that. You learn. Um, they've done some. They did some great things that we're going to have to be able to carry over. Uh, and we got to be able to keep the keep the core. You know, we got we got some talented players. We have very talented players. We got to find a way to stay healthy. Um, we got a whole new system, whole new coaching staff coming in. So it's new. The energy. Is going to be different. Uh, as players, we get a chance to prove ourselves again. Yeah. Uh, that's something big. That's something that I, I'm looking forward to, um, is to prove myself and show there's different things I can do in my game to help this team win. And it's, it's. I know it's been rough, but like the past couple, we're not that far. And I truly, truly believe that we're not that far. We have the talent. Now we bring in the right pieces, the right coaching staff. Um, obviously, we got to go in the draft, draft well, bring some, some guys in free agency.
Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show on Aaron Rodgers Tuesday. Wow. Today's show is presented by Cash App. Hey! Here we go, Cash App. The Bears beating the shit out of the Patriots in Foxborough. That's, That's money. money! Isn't it, Connor? Yeah, for the Cash App. I thing. lost a lot of money on that game. Yeah, it's actually the opposite. That was not money. Money. That was not. I bet a lot of units <laughs> last night. Yeah. yeah. Heavy units. Heavily. Heavy units last <laughs> night. On the Patriots to win? Patriots money line, Stevenson touchdown, parlay. Stevenson obviously scores. Mm -hmm. Now I just need the Patriots to hold. Bailey Zappi forgets that he's a good NFL quarterback out of nowhere. They stink. Mm -hmm. Chicago Bears brought back the defense from back in the day. They oh, yeah. lose. I lose a lot of yuns. That wasn't money. money. <laughs> but Connor having to sit through this entire day after guaranteeing a Patriots win <laughs> and the Bears stomping on Bill Belichick's historic night. That's, That's money. money. Sam Elligan playing for the Colts because Matt Ryan's hurt and he's kind of That's poopy this lie. year. That's, That's money. That wasn't on there. I didn't, I didn't you pointing that at that thing. Kind of look, it says right there. Yeah, kind of poopy. See? It does. Yeah. One person. Thanks, fighter. Bruce. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Bruce. I don't know how he typed that up in the 10 seconds before this, but when personal finance connects you to both your funds and the stuff that matters, that's money and that's cash app. You guys know what else is money? What's what? That? Buying Bitcoin or stock with as little as one dollar. Sure. Right. Being able to handle our giveaways quickly. Right. right. Sending, okay. spending, yeah. saving, splitting, tipping, right, right, and right. donating right. on a single right. finance app. Right. Right. That's money. Hell yeah. That's that's almost call it cash wise. Cash wise. Cash -wise. Download Cash Wide and use code McAfee for fifteen dollars. That's ours. In terms apply. Shout out to Cash App. Honestly, they make our life a lot better. It's great to like tip because I travel now. Obviously, with game day every single week, and not that I didn't before with SmackDown. I just had, <laughs> you know, Foxy would get out a bunch of money. And I would have to fucking give him money because I don't have a debit card. Even though I'm a thirty-five year old person, it's hard for me just to get straight cash. So traveling, you have to tip a bunch of people. So Foxy would have to give money. I would have to give Foxy money back. It was a whole thing. Okay, it was, it was a nightmare. It was no fun. It was problematic as a 35-year-old adult. <laughs> Can't tie a tie, though. Everybody just needs to understand that. But I started, you know, now it's like I actually say, do you have Cash App? And they're like, no. I'm like, all right, when I get back, normally same people, mm -hmm. you have Cash App. I'll tip you through that. It just makes life yeah. so much quicker and better. And I, you know, was a little resistant to buy into the entirety of it. Sure. Although it has made our giveaways much easier mm -hmm. and it sounds, in theory, great. It is. Yeah. It is fucking awesome. It's made my life a lot easier. So I appreciate Cash App immensely for what they've done for my life and our business as a whole with our giveaways. Yeah, I forget my wallet all the time because I'm a big dumb doofus, and you can use Cash App at stores now. That's what I'm talking about. It's pretty sweet. That's huge. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. It's yeah. game changer. You can share money, lending, spending, what? Friendly, what? Wise, what? Wedding, what? Wedding, what? Right. It's amazing. We appreciate Cash App. I'm going to read a tweet here I got, you know, because we like to react to the reactions. Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. this, tweet was, good. This, this tweet was from Mike Wicket, okay? Mike Wicket. He is uh, Lee McNabb's husband. Congrats to them on getting married. Way to go, Lee. Lee. Congrats. You got a good catch there. Absolutely. He, uh, he operates with the Wisconsin Sports Heroics. Oh, I nice. believe it is a blog, 4,000 some fathers. Uh, he's a mute button user, so he... He doesn't want to block you and give you the peace of mind that right. you upset him, but he's not going to hear from you. Sure. Uh, I enjoy the mute button. I will also block a motherfucker, though, because we do a lot mm -hmm. of giveaways. I like that person to have no chance of winning anything. Yeah. Right. So, so I've kind of come full circle on it. I understand the mute button. I appreciated the mute button. I thought it was a good move by Twitter. But now I'm at the point where it's like, nah, nah. See ya. Burn them! Yeah. Gone forever. So I appreciate Mike Wickett of Wisconsin Sports Heroics utilizing the mute mm -hmm. button. I assume he too will come back to the block game because it just feels, mm -hmm. you know, pretty good Makes out there. Sense. Hashtag family first. Hashtag go pack go. Hashtag fear the deer. Hashtag go blue. Hashtag draft king rocket, oh. I believe is what he, DKNG, I think. Is that rocket? Sure. Oh, yeah. And the rocket's going upwards. Yep. Oh, wow. Well, that well. doesn't. Well, he's from West Des Moines, Iowa. Oh, West Des Moines, beautiful. beautiful. Is it a beautiful place? It oh, is. So, by all accounts, I think we like this guy. Yeah, I think so. So far, yeah. from what I hear, I don't know. I was going to record my podcast for this week, this afternoon, but I need to digest all of this nonsense being spewed by Rogers on Pat McAfee show with zero pushback. Oh. What did we do? Did he say he's not getting vaccinated again? My is shit. that what the pet? Did we fucking let a killer on the show again? Is that what happened? Oh. What was the pushback? What did we not? 
Mike Wicked, good guy. We just read all about him. Love this guy. Western Moore in Iowa, big time Pac fan. Writes for Wisconsin <laughs> Sports Heroics. This guy's, what did we, did I miss something? What did I miss? He huh? was in D.C. this weekend. He was probably pushing, pushing some bullshit laws or something like that. <laughs> some bullshit agenda that I, that's why they lost. Oh. <laughs> That's on us, Mr. Wicked. He was Wicked. probably celebrating AJ's birthday or trying to or some bullshit like that. We apologize for not covering <laughs> that, Mr. Wicket, Lee McNabb's husband. Sorry, Mike. We are so sorry. What was the pushback, though, supposed to be? Honestly, I, I, I appreciate the reaction. That's why I always say, let's react to the reaction because normally I'm promoting a killer or sure. I didn't ask the right questions or I was too easy on Aaron even though I literally ask about everything in my own way. Yeah. And I feel like it is, you know, we get answers from basically everything. If you're listening, what did I not push? Well, you asked that leading question that he's all pissed off about. He did get a little fired up. About and that. I asked yeah. that stupid question about the OC and quarterback coach. That was a stupid about. question. That was a stupid question. What leading question did you have, Pat? Well, I just asked him if he's having any say in the trade talks. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I said it in my own way, which is a different it's way. It's valid. Because, I, well, of course it is. Yes. <laughs> but I agree it is. It is a very valid question. I guess media people would ask it because we we're coming up on a trade deadline. And just a couple of years ago, before he signed the deal, when he wasn't with the Packers, it was because he didn't really have fucking say in anything. Trade deadline, pretty good question. Gave us an answer, though. Yeah. Did. Gave us an answer, which is great. I don't know what I didn't push back on. What was it? I wonder. Yeah, I have no was idea. Was it Wim Hof? Was it the, me not standing up for Wim? Oh, it been. maybe. It that, might, been. that guy strikes me as a big David Elliott guy. So what did Mike Wicket <laughs> expect? Me? He didn't. He's not even recording his podcast. He's so fucking upset about this. Right? Yeah. Well, he, he also guy, had. It. He's not even. This guy had hashtag Go Blue in his. Uh, from Iowa. Yeah, he's from you, Iowa. Ty. He's not a fucking Iowa or Iowa yeah. State fan. Fuck this guy. Well, no, we don't know that. I'm just saying. I don't that's care. All you got to know. I don't care. I'm just saying this guy isn't recording his. Go podcast. fucking move to Ann Arbor, Mike. We yeah. don't want you in West Des Moines. Get the fuck out of town. Well, why are you so <laughs> angry with Mike? Mike's trying to make us better. It's a fucking Hawkeye State. <laughs> All right, not a not a fucking rival in the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. Go blue, my is it, ass. Is it Thank a rival, really? I don't know. Bug, windshield. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, hey. oh, I mean, Big Ten no. Championship was a good game last year. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was. You're right. right? 100% right. One team's going one way, though. One team's going the other way, it feels like. Right, doesn't it? I mean, Michigan as, has as had right one now. good year, one single good year in the last 20 years. Let's uh, not that's forget Michigan that. ran for 418 yards against this team. Was it 418? Yes. Whew. Yeah. Uh oh. Just a couple weeks ago. I think we're out of the Big Ten with that. Jeez. <laughs> no, but you guys bounce back. Bounce back. Big win. Big yeah. win against Minnesota, who yeah, runs the ball really yeah, well. And you know why? Why's that? Because there was a drunk honorary ca a captain who was back there for the first time in Hell 14 yeah. years. What? That's you, pal. Yeah, that was me. I was tuned up, feeling good. Gave a great interview, though. Yeah, yeah, he did. Thanks. Did you see him getting the whole fucking crowd? 107,000 people. He we are. <laughs> hey, Steve. Awesome. So, matter of fact. Dude, just like did you get to tailgate? AQ, did you go get yeah, like, it was the a whole good time. Experience? Yeah, oh yeah, I tailgated tails. all day with, the, yeah. with all the old Ray boys. Second mile. What you guys did? <laughs> oh no, is that right? I think they. I don't know. I don't know, know if you guys did any philanthropic activities that also had ties to one of the worst things of all time in the history of college football. But you guys were drinking with the boys. Was it like the old days? Because I'll run into some college friends and there happens to be booze around, and we all think we're twenty one again. We all think we're twenty years old again. And That's exactly of, what happened. Yeah, it's a problem. Shotgun <laughs> nice. and beers. Yeah. yeah. Right. Nice. Well, yeah. Who would we out. be if we did it? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was awesome. Haven't, yeah. seen, haven't seen you in like five years, man. Yeah, we got a lot to kind of put it. Yeah, you want to? Yeah, you want to drink forty yeah. beers? Let's go. <laughs> Is that what you did, honestly? Oh yeah. You handled yourself well in that interview. Mm -hmm. Then Thanks. Thanks. Thank that you. was really good. Thank you. I'm happy you got to enjoy the experience. Too, like, hell yeah. Because too often people don't enjoy experiences. They feel like they're working at the experience and they kind of miss the entire experience of what the experience is supposed to be. That was supposed to be you having a fucking blast. You're supposed to enjoy it. You got a chance to chat to the team. They get a win. It's a whiteout night. You're tuned up. What? That's a per You did it perfectly. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I did it perfectly. Perfect. Did Franklin Woo! thank you for leading the boys to victory? I don't know. But he did say, appreciate you coming back. Okay, you know? so yeah. Dap me you. up after the coin toss. That was All nice. Right. little dap, a little, little hug. Was it a... Yeah, oh, yeah. It was a... Boom. Kept little, it here. Little. Kept it here and then ended no, here? I think it was like the, you know, that one. and then The like tap and hug. Oh, right. That's a good one. Yeah, sure. That's the best one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's one of the best ones, just kind of get out. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. going to be using your we are in recruiting videos for the next God, I hope so. He's impassioned. Yeah. Maybe you come here to Penn State. You play good football for us. Win the goddamn Remington mm -hmm. as the best center in town. Yeah. Not get drafted till the seventh round because your arms are too small. Go on to have a 12-year career, be a Super Bowl champion, what? come back for the first time in 14 years, and command that microphone mm -hmm. yeah. with 104,000 members of the cult here ready to cheer you yeah. on. This yeah. is what you could be. 
you're going to be the next like you could be. AQ. Ship League. Wow. We are. We are. That was fucking awesome. It yeah. was. Did you, did you raise your voice at all at any point, or was it the... Mm. Did I, thought, everyone... I thought I projected, right? I got the crowd fired up, well, told them the whiteout was the greatest thing ever. I didn't... I, the only thing I heard was the, we, we are. are. <laughs> I'm like, God damn, they, could, they got great speakers mm -hmm. if that is happening mm -hmm. out there. And then, you know what? Whole place answered. Yeah. They did. They did. I, I've never done anything in front of a hundred and fucking some thousand people, and they all answered. Your crowd <laughs> control was immaculate. When that noise comes back at you... Oh. Good time. It is loud. Did it's you loud. almost? No, I didn't do that. But I will say up. this: I walked in at like seven ten, through the tunnel. Oh. And you get through like the gate. You know they have that little gate there. You walk through the gate, and it's just a sea of white. There's something special. There's something special. Oh, 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 so that top corner there, that's the Minnesota people. That's what you give them. That's where we give them. That's all, since we'll put them in this is just for the intro. This is the intro. All this fireworks. This is coming oh, yeah. onto the field. Game has not this started. Is awesome. Get yeah. Fucking awesome. Think about Minnesota. Their fans up in that corner Jeez. up there. Like, there's fucking a full fireworks display here for these guys <laughs> to jog onto a fucking field. Oh yeah. And then think about the Minnesota Gophers team. Who I'm sure they got dogs on their team and veterans on their team. But there's some guys on that field looking. What the fuck? Where are we right now? <laughs> Good for crew. What a weapon. That Zambelli's is. fireworks show. Is that, that really Zambelli? No, but that would be amazing. See, oh, I'm surprised you don't want to shit on them. Yeah, I'm you a big son of a bitch. Perfect lead in. I'm a big Zambelli's fan. Oh, big. are you? Oh, are you? Sure. Oh, are you? It, so are we. There's no, yeah. It's not plural, dude. Zambelli. Relax over there on the barge in downtown <laughs> at the confluence. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know. Well, speaking of Pittsburgh heroes, now Zambelli, I do believe, lives in Ohio, but. That's because Youngstown. Youngstown's basically a suburb of Pittsburgh. The right? burb of the burbs. Yeah. yeah, they were actually doing that commercial there uh, to come visit our casino. When the mm -hmm. Pittsburgh casino oh. launched, they started marketing in Youngstown to come be the burb of the burb, come to our casino, come gamble with us. Since then, obviously, it has changed. But you like to shit on Pittsburgh icons, don't mm -hmm. you? Isn't that normally your oh. thing? No, I love Pittsburgh. Uh, I love everything, no. mostly everything. No, Whoa. what you say about Paterno has been... Downright disrespectful to the greatest Doppler reader of all time. Our generation, for sure. Maybe the next 10 generations, mm -hmm. the best Doppler reader. Pittsburgh guy from your hometown. And what you say? He didn't know. That's what you said yeah. about a weatherman. Ruins yeah. my golf all the time. He didn't know I had to change my golf. I want to let you know that the station that blessed us with Denardo. What? Mm -hmm. uh -oh. For all those years you, Joe. of service. To Yinzers, nope. from one side of town to the other. Miss you, Joe. From the yups to the white trash and all the parties in between, mm. WTAE blessed us Hell yeah. with a paisano named Joe. Amen. Who could read the Doppler better than anybody. Mm -hmm. And you got on this program mm -hmm. and told people that had no idea that Joe DiNardo existed because that was in a time before everybody knowing exactly what's going on in the entire planet. That was back in a time when serial killers would literally just pick up and go to the other town and nobody fucking even heard of them mm -hmm. from the other town. So people had no idea about the dominance that DiNardo displayed on the Doppler day to day. Here, here. Oh. And you come on this show and you say, he stinks. People from all around the globe, this international program, yeah. their first experience with the legend Doppler dad. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thank Crushed you. Thank you, Joe. Nailed it. You fucking tell him he's... So you're still a scumbag for that? But since we all stuck up for Joe DiNardo, because that's what any person that has ever seen DiNardo work the Doppler would do... Mm -hmm. WTH and a box of gifts. Wow. Really? No way. Yep. What is this? Oh. <laughs> the no. toughest That'll steel fit. is forged in the hottest fire. Oh, wow. wow. Pittsburgh. Okay. Because you hate everything. How about this? A cap 24 hour Donardo weather. Wow. Yeah. That's sick. You can't put this on your big dumb head. Oh, so dumb. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> That's unbelievable. How about this fucking sticker? Huh? <laughs> Can you read that for the people? Joe said it would. You're oh, fucking boom. right he would. Whoa. Stick that right on your dad. Because when he looked at the Doppler, 
He knew what was coming. He fucking seen the signs that oh, nobody yeah. else could see. Put that on the Hummer immediately. Yes. Yeah, you're goddamn right. What are we talking about? Joe said it would. Joe said it would. What that other Joe say? Nothing. Uh huh. And yeah. that's the problem. That's right. He said it wouldn't be told. What do you oh, got there, here's Joe DiNardo donating $30,000 to Project huh? Bundle. Oh, wow. no, about that. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. How about that? Hey, sorry about it. How about that? Sorry about it, dude. Is that just it? What, do you hate that? Do you, you hate it. that, dude? Oh. This is my first time looking in the box. Of course. <laughs> is that just a photo? Like, yeah, it's just a fucking photo. A... No, it's not, a, it's not just a photo. No, no, I know, I know, but like. This is an original NFT. Yeah. Went, that was on a camera and it went and got developed and that was in someone's office. Hey, send that to Pat. Yeah. No, they had yeah. duplicates of this. I moment. don't know. I think that's original. Anyways, don't even think about putting this fucking hat on. You hear me? Never. Yeah. You're a scumbag, dude. You, you are. Shit. Bet you got a problem head. with Pompiani, yeah. too, don't you? You're a big Pompiani fan. Oh, uh, you hate Sally Wigan? <laughs> I like Sally Wigan. <laughs> huh? I like Sally Wigan. Yeah. You, what? you got a problem with Fedco? No, shit. Everybody does. You Just like Donato. The so Fedco zone. Yeah. Yeah. So you literally only hated Donato? We just listed off the entire WTAE roster. What the fuck? Every Pittsburgh legend. And the only one you hate is the one who is from your hometown. What is your deal, dude? In You're fairness to him, Pittsburgh has to be the hardest weather to predict, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of, yeah. And he's the most accurate. So Give it five what's minutes. What's your deal? I just hated showing up to something in the summer with, like, uh, full tilt jean shorts and a uh, tank and having to bring, like, a hoodie and sweatpants with me. Just what shut the up. That's not Joe's fault. Just stop making excuses. Okay, it's a temperate climate. There's How did he die? Uh, well, I don't think he is. You're Broken hard. Storm. You can get Donardo weather <laughs> online right now at the PittsburghChannel.com. I think yeah. he's still working in spirit. Wow. This is the handwritten note I got. Pat, we appreciate the love. <laughs> Classy. Quote, Donardo forever. Wow. The WTA Channel 4 family. What Thank a family. Thank you, WTA. If you honor. thought that AQ, you'd get Donardo forever tattooed on your other arm. Right now. Yep. Do it. Yep. Right below the cross. Uh huh. Yeah. Anyways, thank you, WTA. Thank Love you, WTA. Great day to be a Duke, too. Oh, oh my God. Holy shit. Denaro Weather Watch, right across the top of a. <laughs> I'm going to run a Pittsburgh Marathon. <laughs> Is that a Yeti? Is that a Yeti? No, yeah, it's just your basic squirt bottle. Yeah, what do you bottom. what do you throw in What's your problem? Oh, you got no, a problem with WTA? No. Son of a bitch. You got a problem with WTA? No. That thing was made in 1994, you buffoon. Joe Where's drank out of this. Yeti? Joe drank out of this. He batted a perfect month, and he drank out of this fucking bottle every goddamn morning. This yeah. was his coffee. Can I read this for you? Please do. Thank you. Joe Donardo was the leader of the team that started Project Bundle Up. The partnership with the Salvation Army that has raised more than $14 million to put warm winter out over on more than 275,000 children and seniors in western Pennsylvania. Is that AQ enough for you, AQ? It. AQ hates that he did that. What's that? Oh, I love Salvation I love Army that. does have a uh, I love that. decorated history. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm getting emotional. After a, lung oh. cancer, after a lung cancer diagnosis, Joe not only successfully recovered and returned to the Denardo Weather Watch Center, but became an advocate for cancer research. Thank what, you, thank Joe. You, Joe. what did thank you, Joe? Joe Love you, Joe. And AQ hated this guy. No, no. Can you get Joe? Do you know that Joe? Do you know that Joe carried the Olympic flame through the streets of Pittsburgh as the torch made its way to Salt Lake City for the Winter <laughs> Games, and he passed it to fellow cancer survivor Look Mario that. Lemieux. Look at that. Oh. You ever do that, AQ? No, that's a good pass off, though. It's a good pass. You probably don't even know what building that is. You probably don't even know who Mario Lemieux is. It's a fucking steel building, okay? Hell yeah. Now you the U steel? You know what steel is? Now the UPMC building, but. You fucking ever heard of what steel is? Oh, steel yeah. steel to me, damn it. Hell yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Great steel town. Don't touch this fucking hat. Won't don't do. even look Won't at do. it. Ever. Do. Don't even think about putting water in this Denardo water bottle. And don't fucking move this picture. Yep. Don't you dare. That's going to remind me of all the good that Pittsburgh has done. Thank you. Denardo, bundle up, saving kids. AQ hates it. Yep. Let's move on. You piece of shit. You can really make, you can kind of make up for everything that you've done wrong with Denardo. Okay? By a good in the trenches. You hear me? <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. I don't know how you're going to be able to do it. Yeah, yeah no <laughs> way. It's going to be a long day for you, AQ. All task. I think I got a good one. He wow. carried the Olympic torch. Ever heard of it? Are you doing that today? You got a problem with Mario too now? No, big Mario fan. Okay. Yeah, Mario. sure. Cup torch. Tell that to the fans of that's hockey talk. No, Joe did not out. have yeah. any associations with Cutter or any blood money. That's right. 
mm-hmm. put winter coats on 14 million kids, kept them warm. Starter jackets, bro. Um, yeah. You ever That's do that? What, impressive resume. And you shit on them. I just didn't like I heard when you went to Like back. I said, in fairness. In fairness. The weather was not his best friend in Pittsburgh. In fairness. I heard when you went back to Heinz. It's a results-oriented business. This is yeah. bullshit. Jeez. His results were good. You spit on fucking Joe DiNardo, dude. Sorry, you couldn't wear your jean shorts to the park one day, oh, dude. It's yeah. not Joe's. Fault. I love jean shorts. You fucking Mark. Is there a pro weather focus that they can go back and judge every Joe DiNardo play? <laughs> pro weather. PWF. Now. Can he? Can we get <laughs> PWF? I would. I would bet on Joe DiNardo. Above fifty mm-hmm. percent. For what? Fifty percent, <laughs> dude. What is your problem? You just keep doing what is your deal? Fucking project bundle up every time you <laughs> yeah. do that. Look to your right. <laughs> Look, Look to your right. Look, Look at him. Let's take five anything. so we can all cool off. Okay. Get is that why you move? Is that why you're living in Arizona? Because the weather is the same, and you can. Oh yeah. Oh, the weather guy or lady they out in Arizona bat- is great. Yeah, they gotta be bad. Ninety-five percent right. out there, right? Ninety-five percent in Arizona. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh. that's because Donardo. It's be hot today. Of- They're hitting off a tee, dude. Joe was seeing seeing 98 mile hour breaking balls and was fucking hitting on the screws. Okay? Actually, 98 mile an hour knuckle balls. Yeah. yeah. Wakefield coming down from the fucking sky in Pittsburgh. Dog. And he's sitting on it like Bryce Harper. Yeah. Boom. It's a beach ball coming into fucking Denardo. Sorry, Joe all doesn't fields. dance around on TikTok like a buffoon. Okay. You know, well, he just reads the weather. That like guy got hired in New York City. That guy. Yeah. That guy moved up to the biggest market in town. Like the morning show. Let's take five, okay? Let's all relax. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> AJ, sorry you had to see that. It's hard to not to be fired up. When I always love our Nardo chunks. Send that to AJ. Joe said it would. I heard Mad Dog had the same thing on his show. That hat is sweet. Yeah, it is. So he beat cancer, but then how did he die? He Did he come back? Or did he get caught in a storm? Called too good a weather one. He would never yeah. get caught in a storm. <laughs> Mother Nature actually said we can't have this anymore. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, that, that is awesome. Great. How jealous are you How's right now? Fits Super so great. Will you wear that on game day on Saturday? Yes, please. The lighting might be a little tough down there, but for Joe, because the lights. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he was honored by the Emmys with the highest honor, the Governor's Award for his lifetime achievement. Boom. Mm-hmm. King of the Emmys. <laughs> Wasn't he a Marine before he was? He was Red actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sixty confirmed kills. Yep. On his first tour. Headshots. You are <laughs> need some water? despicable. You need some water for that? Um, to cool down? Is that why? Because you got me all fired up? Yeah. Thank Prick. You. Thank you, WTAE. Thank you, Fedco. Thank, Thank you, you, Denaro. In the trenches doesn't have a chance today. No. Good luck. Yeah. Can't wait to press play. <laughs> Will you apologize to the weather family as a whole for yeah. what you said about Denaro? I said in fairness earlier. That's not an apology. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Everybody take like it. It's not flip flopping. I like it, AQ. Yeah. Oh, do you? Stay firm. Let's have a moment of silence for Joe Nardo, please. Still going? What up? You son of a bitch. How dare you? What the hell was that? I mean, that was. This show. Was 40 seconds. Peeing on Joe's grave. I muted him. Thank Good. you. We should have done that before. We knew that was coming. Yeah. Good. You piss Cousin Moon, there's a Joe DiNardo way, and there's no AQ Shipley way. Never going to be yeah. either with the way you disrespected the moment of silence for <laughs> fucking the Doppler Dominator DiNardo. Yeah, we should have Bill drive him to the airport. Yeah, like crow outside on a truck. Take him to the yeah. train station. Let's get to a break. Let's take five. <laughs> this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Nardo had no idea when he saw this kid. Mm-hmm. This would be the guy. Did you murder everybody in high school? Look how big you are. Yes, dude. He's he, got a wa- lot of Larry geez. Hall in that face. How come you built your chin strap off your helmet straight onto your face? It's unbelievable. <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had a chin strap in like seventh grade. AQ, this dude Freak. was a problem. Remember, Western Pennsylvania Interscholastic Athletic League Hall of Famer. Mm-hmm. 
So everything you hear him say about Joe Nardo, take that into account, too. Mm -hmm. Shitty Hall of Fame. Whoa, whoa, well, whoa, whoa, whoa. Joe Nardo's in a bunch of Hall of Fames, too. Yeah, but he's not on that one. That, that might be. Hall we don't know. He's actually a great baseball and football player. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. He was. Yeah. He was. <laughs> Got drafted by the Yankees, right? Call him the Rain yeah. Man. All right. Let's take five. Okay? Okay. Let's refocus. We're going to do football <laughs> information on the other side. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you can trust the source of the information. Yeah, what are you going to do? Are you going to say anything about Donardo and you're in the trenches segment here in about five, ten minutes? No, we're talking football. <laughs> he played football. All right. Take five. We appreciate Donardo. I appreciate WTAE for all the incredible swag. I appreciate it. Donardo forever. That's right. Donardo forever. Amen. Love you, Joe. Say it. Love you, Joe. Paterno or Say it. Denardo. Denardo. Forever. Boom. We made real progress today, didn't we? Yes, we did. Trust the process. Hell yeah. Okay. We went from talking in a moment of silence to saying I love you, Joe Denardo. That's right. Hell of a day. All right, in, in the trenches in five minutes. It's going to be fantastic. Can't wait to learn about the teams. We need to bet on more for covering because the run game is fantastic with AQ Shipley. Be a friend, tell a friend, take five. Take five. Tommy Townsend hit a 58-yard fucking fair catch, AJ. A 58-yard fair catch. Pretty good, huh? Yes, people are going to say, what, what, what? I see a guy hit a 73-yard ball. I see a guy hit a 60-yard punt. That's impressive. It's like, no, a 58-yard fair catch should be chatted about because for a fair catch to happen, the returner has to think that he is worried that he's going to get blown up by the coverage team. He thinks the coverage team is so close that it would be a risk for him to take any yards. For a ball to travel 58 yards from the line of scrimmage, let alone him lining up 14 yards behind that. So for this ball to travel 72 yards from where he stopped at, the height that that ball has to reach to get his gunners down 58 yards down the field while they're being blocked and potentially double teamed. It is a fucking murdered ball. This dude right here, Tommy uh -huh. Townsend, he hit a bad punt in the Super Bowl his rookie year. Since that moment going forward, it's the biggest fucking balls I've ever seen in my entire life. This is the line of scrimmage right here, right? They have to get from the fucking 13 to the 27. They have humans attempting to block them out here. So it's not just a direct sprint. There is misdirection. There's already a couple loops happening. If you see, he probably started out here. So he comes in this way because he knows it's going to be. Other. So he's not running directly 58 yards either. You start doing some math on what people run at 40s. And to get 58 yards, you think at least five seconds, six seconds. But then they're rerouted. That's like seven seconds, eight seconds with a snap to kick being 1.67 or what, two, two seconds total. He had to hit this ball so fucking high. And they're waiting. This dude's waiting on him. This dude is waiting on his fucking ass. It is incredible at what he was able to accomplish. And I just hope Tommy Tonson continues to get the respect that he deserves because he fucking murders balls. And he takes small little steps and he sits back and he punts that fucker straight up in the air. And it takes massive courage to do that because if you hit one bad when you're aiming up like this, that thing's going real short. I'm just reading this headline here that is written on this piece of paper by mm -hmm. Boston Connor this morning. Mm -hmm. Lou Holtz sent Brian Kelly several letters mm -hmm. over his Notre Dame tenure <laughs> to no response. Yep. I, this must have slipped through the cracks in the group text. Sports Illustrated is reporting. While talking to reporters this past week, Lou Holtz shared that while Brian Kelly was at the helm, he wrote him several letters over his tenure as coach. Unfortunately, Holtz said, he never got a response. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> Uh, um, um, obviously, we gotta well, go. Well, well, <laughs> looks like I wasn't fibbing when I said that Brian Kelly was a big old piece of shit. He write this guy letters and try to tell him, hey, this is exactly what you need to do if you want to be a successful coach at Notre Dame. Okay, he didn't fucking respond to me once. You know how long it takes me to write these goddamn handwritten letters? <laughs> I'm not typing them on the Macintosh. I'm not typing them on the Dell. I'm dipping my ink in the quill. 
<laughs> and I'm writing these handwritten letters. And what does he do? He says, hey, you know what, Lou? I won't write you a letter, but I'll send some kid into a cherry picker with 85 mile an hour winds, and I'll kill him. And then guess what? I still won't write you a letter back. He can apologize, oh. but it doesn't matter because oh. local times in the right spot. We got Marcus Freeman with 17 point underdogs at Ohio State. And I wouldn't be surprised if Brian Kelly gets run out of LSU because before too long, the boosters down there are going to find out what I found out. And that's that he's a big old steaming bag of shit. <laughs> Coach, isn't it a chance that you with those handwritten letters that he never got them? He was just checking his email? No, you kidding me? If I fucking write a letter, it's getting on the head coach's desk, okay? You think you think Charlie Weiss never got my handwritten letter to Tyrone Willingham? Those guys always wrote back to me. Always. Oh, shit. Weiss bacon in those letters. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Ask your buddy Brady Quinn, okay? He knows I wrote a letter before every single local game home game. Had it in his locker. What did you say about the game where you're taking on your future brother-in-law, A.J. Hawk? Well, I said, good luck, Brady. Hopefully you play like a guy like Carlisle Holiday. I'm sure you remember him. He was a great quarterback at local game. Led them to a lot of success. Of course, you know, Brady, unfortunately, they had good seasons and they got their asses <laughs> beaten every single big post-game bowl. Whoa. And we all remember the LSU Sugar Bowl where that Marcus Russell or whatever the hell his name was. He threw it all over the football field. And then AJ and the Ohio State Buckeyes beat the shit out of Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl. Did you see the documentary about Manti Teo? Seems like a really good guy that the world yeah. you know what? really was rude to. Manti's a sweet kid, okay? And I'm sick and tired. Sick and tired of everybody Getting on him and making him feel like he wasn't a sweet kid because he was such a sweet kid. <laughs> Everything that you want out of a student athlete at Notre Dame, he wasn't Catholic, which I don't love, but <laughs> <laughs> he's a sweet kid and he really got misrepresented in that. I still feel oh, bad shit. for man time. Oh, did you write him a letter when all that shit came up? Once again, I couldn't write him a letter because he's not Catholic. If he was Catholic, I would have, but he's Mormon and I don't know about his religion as much as I do about the Catholic religion, touchdown Jesus, all that kind of stuff. But no, you know, I just, again, I feel bad because Man Ty was such a good player. He was the highest rated linebacker recruit Notre Dame ever had, you know, and look at him now. He's, a, he's just a shadow son of a down in Hawaii. <laughs> 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 Did you say sad ooze? <laughs> oh my God, Coach Holtz, I did not know you had <laughs> ooze in the repertoire. Yeah, of, of course. How do you think I recruited? We got some bad ooses in my time. At <laughs> <Nathan> <laughs> day. Offensive, defensive line. I, I stole a couple of them from SC and BYU and all those places. <laughs> Jesus, man. Oh, I'll tell you, I did not expect that today. Welcome back to the program. It has been a lively break over here at the FanDuel Thunderdome. I don't know how it's been in the attic in Ohio for AJ Hawk. How you doing? Doing great. Not quite as lively over here by myself, but I can imagine you guys <laughs> had a spirited conversation. Yeah, there was a lot of chatter about these potentially being directly from Donardo's desk. Yep. Oh, yeah. So Donardo went the Doppler to desk, and this bottle was there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's something that I hope everybody takes into account moving forward, and I appreciate WTAE for sending his beloved belongings mm -hmm. to the studio in Indianapolis. Hey, Rest in peace, Donora. Rest, Rest in peace, peace Joe. Joe. Oh, the talks the table's here at Boston Connor at Ty Schmidt. AJ, it was loud. Everything you were thinking right now did happen just moments ago. Tone Diggs is here, one half of the hammer. Dad. Cowboys. And now it is time for us to get smarter at football, for us to learn why teams are good, why teams are bad, and what the fuck is going on oh, no. in the trenches with AQ Shipley. Woo! AQ, how you doing, pal? Fantastic. Missing Joe. Yeah, of course. All right, so check it out. Here we we go. got the Chicago Bears. Sorry. Just shut up and I'm do I'm sorry. It. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. Check it out. So they wanted to get Justin Fields going. They wanted to get him involved in the run game. 
So we're going to send somebody in motion. We're going to get a hide. The key is watching Judon. Judon, if he stays up the field, could hand the ball off. But the key, Fields, will keep his eye on him. He's going to take a few yards here. That is it. We've talked about it a hundred times. A bad step here, two steps here, a couple inches here, whatever it is. We're going to say he's going to go two yards or so. He's going to come down the line of scrimmage. That is it. That is all he needs for Justin Fields to take this thing around the edge, and then he gets a lead blocker out in front with the tight end coming in motion. Here we go. We're going to fake the handle. Look at him. Look who he's looking at. Boom. He sees him take a few steps inside. The offensive line is selling everything this way to get the rest of the group working that way. Once they all work that way, he takes a bad step here. That is all we need. We get the lead blocker bypassing. He's out in front with a ton of space. Oh, how good was that, Z? So hey, good. How good was that? That was just easy Perfect. football, right? This is what um, like Pat White, Steve Slayton used to do back at West Virginia. College teams do this. I, I, this feels like a play that they can run whenever they want. Is that accurate? 100%. You get a lot of these things, right, with him, Hurts, Kyler, all the guys that are running the ball right now. It is such an added element and puts everybody else in a soft position on the edge that has contained. Because even that right there, they have not shown this. So why would he sit there and play up the field? But if he does play up the field, guess what we got? A big gaping hole right there. So there's so many things they can do off this. Now they also have the play action coming off, coming off of this whenever Cole Komet comes here. Boom, he's out there. Now you can have the play action if you want it off it. There's a billion things you can do off this. But this, I mean, he just gets out in free space and... Runs untouched. It's unbelievable. And that's them utilizing Justin Fields and an offense that they hadn't in the past and hopefully will going forward. Why would they would never change this? You don't think it's a pretty safe play, it feels like. Yeah, and, and as long as you do what Kyler Murray has done a fantastic job in the NFL of being able to not take big hits. He's so good at getting in the open space, running, and then getting down. As long as these guys understand that, you don't have to worry about them getting hit and getting hurt, really. So then now right here, if he's about to take a big hit, either get out of bounds or get down, period. Boom. That's the best of both worlds. Yeah. AJ, you stopping that ever? You can, but I mean, I would assume next week, the guy they're reading off of, Judon, they're like, hey, you're a quarterback all the way, but don't worry about the dive. You go hit this guy every single play. Is that how you beat that? You just make you, he declares one well, way or the other every single time? They got big gaping holes, though. It, there's a lot of different options, but yeah, usually the end guy, like, he has responsibility. You can slow play it, oh, or your quarterback all the way. Like, you got to, that's something, though, you have to work on all week, though, and you got to get looks at it. It's awesome. What Fuck if the Bears Chris. are good all I mean, of a sudden? There's so much yeah. Oh, yeah. possible. Maybe. There's what? so much you can do when the quarterback can run. It adds. And you can't hit the quarterback anymore, AQ. You used to be like, hey, if he's carrying on his fakes, I'm going to kill this guy. Now you can't do that. No, because they're going to call it. As we've talked yeah. about, this should be fair game once they get out of the pocket. But we saw a pass, or, you know, rough in the pass are called. I think I sent it to you. Yeah outside of the pocket, so who knows what the fucking rules are anymore. You actually kind of sounded like you were talking for a defensive side of the ball, which you never do. You're always on the complete opposite right. side. You're always like, oh, shut up, defensive lineman is basically your thing. Then there was a roughing the passer call outside of the pocket, and you said, what the fuck are these guys supposed to do? I, I honestly, the state of the game right now is interesting. I think we're going to figure some stuff out, hopefully, hopefully. over the next Competition season or two. Committee. Hell Get yeah, right. hopefully they do it. Yeah. All right. This so. is sad. Super sad. We're going to highlight two yeah. players here. We're going to highlight two <laughs> players that we will not see the rest of the year. Yeah. Damn it. Who have had fantastic starts of the season. Probably Pro Bowl type seasons if we were trending and continuing on the season. Elijah Vera Tucker, we will see hustle his ass off and be running damn near stride for stride with Brees Hall at the end here. Brees Hall, a fucking stud, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you yeah. feel so bad for this New York Jets team because they finally feel like they got things going in the right direction. But the beautiful thing about this, let's pause it right here. Here's what's awesome about this play. First of all, this guy does not get fucking touched in this thing. He will not get touched, which is unheard of in a run play in the NFL. The one thing you're going to see, every single one of these guys are running. You had a bunch that was a little wider to start. You get the point man right there. You get two receivers coming out in the lead. You got Dwayne Brown, big Dwayne Brown, getting around, leading the charge. And then watch all of these guys. They're all going to get to this front side gap. He gets through. He's going to beat him and make him go underneath. He will come around, get the nice block on 96 to get this thing started. And then you got all these lead blockers with two receivers and Dwayne Brown coming around cleaning this thing up down the edge. And watch this. Does not get touched for 60 yards, 70 yards, whatever this thing was. Look at that hole. Jeez. Is that a wide receiver block in 5-6? Where are we at? Browning. Oh, oh yeah. That's yeah. hell of a... Yeah. 100%. We got two receivers and we got a point, man. We got a Three receivers basically on this point, and then big Dwayne Brown. Dewey. Big Dewey Brown. 
Look at this. Watch this block. Gets the thing started. That's the home run, right? We always talk about. Look at Big Fella. Wow. wow. Look at Big Fella. Moving. I mean, running stride for stride sucks. He tore his tricep. He's out for the year. He's out for the year. But you got to love the effort. This is a different New York Jets team. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. This was. is a team that wants to win. <clears throat> Go ahead. Gosh. Are winning. That's a shame, though. I mean, yeah, it honestly man. is such a fucking shame, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. But I, the thing I, I think I enjoy the most, AQ, is this guy is going to go boom to boom. He's going to get to second level. And then this guy's going to have to track here. There's a lot of foot movement to get to the point where the running back's wide open and we have big gaping holes. <clears throat> you hit on it, man. I love this. This is a scoop call, right? Center and backside guard get the scoop. Big fella. I mean, this guy's like 330, 340 pounds. He's going to get up underneath. He does a great job holding off just long enough. Now watch. You always say, when you get to the second level, make them lose underneath. That's the biggest thing. You want them to lose underneath. Always lose them on the right side. If he gets over the top, he makes this fucking play. But just him. Doesn't get a ton on him, but he loses them underneath. And that's the big thing. He takes the back door, and we are out the boom. game. Jeez. Boom. 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 AJ, would you? I mean, Boom. 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 AJ, that's one thing you're taught, right, as a linebacker there. You <laughs> cannot take the underneath. If, they tell, if you are going to go underneath, you've got to make the play, right? Yeah, they're going to make it look easy. They're going to try to bait you into taking the underneath, and you're right. Like, never take it, but if you take it, you absolutely better make the tackle. Yeah. Which he time. thought he was going to undercut and go, right? Mm -hmm. That's probably what it's he thought. It's so hard to make it. You've got to hit that underneath right away if you want to make that tackle. Yep. How good is that, though? This dude, Jeez. This dude is so good. I mean, yeah. Filthy. He's so good. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, I think it's because how good the offensive line is and the scheme is, but you got to be able to have a guy that can get it when he gets to the next level. That's all he was doing. And then the big fellow who's running with him at 300 and whatever, he's out too. That is – Huge loss. That is tough for Jets fans, man. And Jets fans are going to be like, of course. Yeah. But mm -hmm. that's a shame for the entire NFL. We've got a young team that's very fast, explosive, and hungry, and all of a sudden they lose their two best players. How will they respond? We shall see. Sounds like they got some good guys, though. Sounds like – you yeah. could put maybe another running back back there and still be able to get James Robinson be able to yeah, get some Yeah, so yards. they make the trade. They get a nice pick up there. They got four-fifths of their offensive line still intact. Hopefully the guy that steps in for him does a fantastic job. But this, in my opinion, is the best blocked run play of the entire wow. year so far. Whoa! Wow. 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 Let's get – we're handing out titles. Go, so, Jets. Congratulations to the Jets who have the best blocked play of the NFL season thus far. Yeah, big yeah. honor. Is really there going to be a better one, you think? Oh, we got some good ones. Let's go. Let's see what we got <laughs> next. Huh. What are we watching? High school football. What? what? We got some. What is this? What is it? It's exactly what I said whenever I saw it. But, man, this is brilliant. This is some really good shit. I hope some more of this stuff. Creativity. Creativity, ingenuity creeps more into the NFL. Pep Hamilton, the offensive coordinator. So what's, he's trying, what's he trying to do right here? He's trying to get numbers. If, say, for instance, he's in here. Or now he's in there. Now you got numbers. You got two for two. And then they're just going to throw the ball out to either side. If he's in here, two blockers for two. Now you throw the ball out there. We get the whole numbers game. These guys are split. He's split. Let's go to the back view. Okay, here we go. So you saw the running back started up here. He motions back. They like this picture. You see, again, three blockers for three blockers. What they're going to do here, which is really interesting, they end up pushing. They get a double team here, and they push out to him. They go one for one here. They basically leave him unblocked. Again, they could throw it out here. They could throw it out there. Or they can hand it off to Pierce, who is running the ball incredibly right now. You're a big fan of this guy. I'm a big fan of the way this guy's running the ball. He's smooth. He's doing a phenomenal job. You're not going to hear about him because the Houston Texans fucking stink. stink. <laughs> but Good play design here. Great play design. Great running back. Hand it off. Watch this move. Watch him set up this. He's going to set this up like he's cutting it back here. This linebacker is going to play hard right here because he thinks the cutback's coming. All he does is just set him up to hit the big gaping hole. Right there. Oh. Oh, he did. One little stutter step. He flies hard here. And there we are. But wow. Look at that thing. Dog. That's fun design. That's a fun play. That's fun if your offense was to run something like that. It'd be yeah. cool to see that out of a lot more offense coordinators. Pep Hamilton, shot at. So shot do out. you think the, the defense is just assuming there's no way in hell they're running the ball here? Again, you put everybody. That's the whole thing about some of this creativity is you're trying to put them in a predicament. You want to make them make a decision. What is he thinking right here? They could go play action throw there, so now he has to hold long. Same thing with him. They could throw it over here, so he has to hold up. He could very easily 
pull this right now, if Chandler comes, now we throw it, and you've got great numbers on the outside, right? So you're trying to put everybody in a bind to make a decision, and that's the whole purpose of some of these things right now. It is so hard to play offensive line right now because when I came into the NFL, there was one dude on every team. One. Now every team has three or four. So how, how do we combat that, right? We try and do some of this creativity stuff. We try and get these guys to hesitate for a sec, bounce over the top, and then you get the big hole. Get these guys out, out leveraged somewhere else. And that's all you're trying to do is just create some form of a mismatch. That's a first and ten just out of the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. unreal. Just might as well drop this one in. Everybody has to prepare for it next, uh -huh. to, next mm -hmm. week going forward. More plays can be run out of there, right, depending on how people run it. Absolutely. I mean, you can do a billion different things out of that. Play action, quarterback run, whatever it is, right? There's a and just throw it out to the left, throw it out to the right. There's so many things you can do. They need it. Yeah, big time. And then you got the where you fake the quick, and then the, you got a guy running down the fucking sideline on a on a wheel route. Yep. Ever heard of it? Heard of it? Ever heard of it? Now you're gonna have to be able to protect whenever mm -hmm. something like sure. that happens. We we did a fake punt that had something like a you know swinging gauge, sure. right? Yeah, similar. More you know, little numbers game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We snapped it when we should have snapped it, but sure. still the idea was Stanford there. guy. Good thought process. Right? It was a Conceptually. Good Conceptually. Mm -hmm. In theory. In theory. Mm -hmm. theory. It was brilliant. Here we go. Seattle Seahawks. AJ, hey, they line up like that against you. What do you do? Just shit your pants and move on? Yeah, pretty much. You actually hit on it. You said that it gives every uh, defense stuff that they're going to have to sit there and walk through and work in practice, and the coach is going to spring it on them like Saturday morning to make sure we have everything checked out. And then even when you do, you get in the game, and like AQ said, it kind of puts everybody – they're, they can't really be decisive. Like, okay, what well, I got to slow play this. Oh, they might throw it outside. Oh, what if they run the ball? Like, you're kind of screwed. It's a good play. They need to do yeah. more. Hey, Frank, oh, put it in. Mm -hmm. Put it in, Frank. Whoa, Frank, with Ellinger? put it in with Sam Ellinger. Hell QB yeah. QB run with him? No. Oh, hey. Frank, put it in. It's a copycat league. He That's exactly what it is. It he is a copycat league. And this is something that needs to be copied more. The Seattle Seahawks are doing awesome stuff in their run game. Check out what they go. They go a ton of 13 personnel. They love their tight ends right now. AJ, I think this is the play you're talking about. So what's going to happen yep. is it's going to be a toss. This is a big scheme right now. It comes from the Shanahan world, right? And so Shane Waldron, who's the offensive coordinator up there, came from the Rams, McVay, Shanahan, that whole tree, right? Massachusetts. We're going to send him in motion. And here's what I love about this. We're going to send him in quick motion. We're going to snap it while he's got a full head of steam in motion. And these two are basically going to work in conjunction with one another, work in Van Noy, up to the second level. Oh, no. And this is what I love about this, too. These guys, they have the hardest job because they have to block and they have to run routes, right? And so a lot of times, if they're in a one-on-one -on -one block, they can't run off the ball. Why can't they run off the ball? They're scared to fucking death that this guy can has a two-way go and can beat him inside or outside. So by doing this scheme where we're going to send him in motion and he's going to protect his inside, now he can run off the ball, try and get him stretched and get him outside. And then you have him coming inside out. And so when he comes across, here we go. And now watch this. Look at that. And look where he hits. Boom. Hits him in the hip. He's going to fall every time. Boom. Gets to the second level. That is the whole reason this play works. See Offensive that? line really can Boom. just run off the ball. But the, the key to it is, is those two tight ends. But watch the offense line just run off the ball. They get a double team up to there. And check this out. He ends up taking his. Boom. He picks up his. They basically switch responsibilities on the fly because they Boom. run like a form of a cross dog. Boom. The hip is the key. Hits the hip. He goes down. Gets Boom. up to the corner. Oh, big. Man. Hell of a fucking. Gaping. Holes. holes. I mean, that's pretty big. And one. Kenneth Walker is just out the gate. He's a dog. Bye-bye. Michigan State. Go green. Did he get, did he get hurt? Oh, no, he's, no. Good. he's, no, he's, he's good to back go. up. Oh, no, he's the dude. And the Schultz. Is he's this Seattle team, is it very similar personnel to last year? Like, why is their offensive line all of a sudden great this year when last year it fucking sucked? Like, is that a, more of a product of Russell being gone and them Ooh. kind of being able to do what they wanted to do probably, or what is it? Well, I think, I think a lot of it, too. When you have a guy like Russell back there, right, you're paying him a shit ton of money. What do you want to use him for? You want to throw it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got DK, you got Lock, you got all these things. And so when you get a guy – who maybe at first, right, the start of the season, now we design this offense where we're going to be run heavy. We're going to protect him. We're going to help him play good defense, get some run, get some gadgets, get some play action, get a billion different things to help him out. You don't need to help him out anymore because he's proved he's a guy, right? But they've also figured out this 13 personnel with all three tight ends, they can do a lot out of it. They still, these guys are all athletic tight ends, so you can still get the pass game out of it. But you're going to get base defense nine times out of ten. 
and you can get the runs that you run. You got your whole playbook in, in, in play. How often did they use a formation like this with Russ? Like, is this completely new? Yeah, they didn't do this a lot. They did not. They did not. They Team weren't. three is like, hey, these motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> three tight ends. <laughs> this is more Cleveland, right? Like, when you turn Cleveland on, Cleveland does this all the time because they want to run the fuck out of them. How about the timing of when they snapped this ball? That's a lot of trust. That's a lot of work on that because Geno can get tripped by this guy going across. The Titans did this against us where they sent a guy in motion, and it was, like, perfectly timed. It was – the guy was, I think, timing it up perfect as Derrick Henry was about to hit it. Yeah. And it was the one I sent to you. I'm like – the timing here is so good because that's a lot of trust, that's a lot of faith, that's a lot of confidence, and that's also, I mean, you kind of got to say fuck it and just hope that it all pans out. Everybody's got to buy in and do their job. So much practice goes into all this stuff with the shifts, with the motions, with all the I mean, the if he gets candy. tripped right there, the fucking play is over. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. over. Maybe fumble, too. Yeah, I mean, it is... Yeah, or you get the snap a tad early, and now he, he botches the handoff then, right? So And it's perfectly timed. That guy doesn't even have to lose speed. He hits the hip, and then he bounces up. That's really good shit. Mm -hmm. Really good stuff. And, and the key to it is, again, it all comes from the Shanahan tree. What you said, Tennessee. Tennessee comes from the Shanahan tree. Atlanta comes from the Shanahan tree. The Jets come from the Shanahan tree. What? You know, oh, I thought Shanahan stunk. People yeah, were trying. He's yeah, got a losing weird. record without Jimmy G. His, Speaking of. Trent Williams do this, right? A little bit AQ, but they t turned it up inside more, didn't they? When Trent Williams was in motion, that guy. Yeah, they, they did it a little bit oh, with Trent last year. They would start doing that towards the end of the year last year, and also in the playoffs they did it. They would yeah. bring in an extra tackle and basically put Trent as the F fullback and do the same shit. They would fly him across, and boom, he's coming inside out trying to kill somebody. And that's not what they're doing on this play, but still something from the Shanahan tree who's affecting everybody's run game, it sounds like, that's worth a fuck? It, absolutely. He's been unbelievable, and the copycat league that we speak of, it is getting taken across the entire league from everybody. The Patriots were trying to do that, and they had so much trouble with it because they couldn't figure out the zone blocking scheme. Timing? or Oh, yeah, because they were trying to do it in the off, in yeah. the training camp. I remember they couldn't figure it out. Uh -huh. So much work has to go into the zone scheme. It has, It's all timing. It's all footwork. It's all steps. These guys go through a 50-play practice, and 42 of them are runs when most teams go through it, and 42 of them are passes. And you're getting your eight runs of practice, and you got to make them fucking work, right? So that's yeah. the difference between these guys, which also kills them when they're down in the fourth quarter. What's the stat? I think they're like 1-29 in 29 when they're down three Yes. in the fourth quarter under Shanahan because <laughs> everything is predicated off this run game, and when they can't run it and they got to do a drop-back pass, it's not the best situation. Oh, you hate Jimmy G. Hey, let's rewind this to the beginning, Pat, if you can. So let's kind of just talk the blocking scheme. This is essentially – what you would call a bob play. Why do you, or you can also call it an iso. Why do you call it bob back on backer? Who's the back? You check. Most teams would line him up. Oh. Back. Most teams would line him up in the eye or the weak and run this iso or bring him through. You get a double team to there. You get a double team to there. You get a seal block on the backside. Big Trent, you don't got to worry about. He's got the one-on-one -on -one basically kick out, and he runs off the ball and does a fantastic job on Frank Clark. But here's what I love about what Kyle Shanahan does. There's always one responsibility that he adds a wrinkle to. And so what they would normally do if this was a true Bob play, you could bring him from here, send him across, and on the snap, we're going to snap it somewhere right when he gets to about here, he would come through and block the Will linebacker. What is awesome, what is unbelievable, what I love. It's we always, love this. It's always one wrinkle. You don't see him. Ayuk's right here. He's right outside this picture. Ayuk and Kyle Juszczyk are going to exchange responsibilities. But watch his eyes. He thinks Juszczyk's mm. coming for him. So he's going to come up, sit in the hole, look at Juszczyk, and he's going to get ear hold by Ayuk. And when Ayuk comes in, the corner has to trail, and Juszczyk goes right off this block. Watch this. It's going to come right there. Now Juszczyk will come and block Ayuk's guy. And there is the oh. big gaping hole. That's awesome. And then you got this dude one-on-one -on -one with 22, and he has no idea where to go, and then he's going to make someone miss. This guy's going to be a problem. He's going to be a problem moving forward. You Christian think McCaffrey. so? Just because they're going to give him holes and McCaffrey's going to fucking expose him. 100%. And he's going to have 25 touches a game in so many different ways. So this was planned for Ayuk to end up blocking this guy. Yep. And for Juszczyk to block this guy. And this guy thinks that this guy's probably getting him, or he's getting a free shot at that guy. Look where his eyes are. He feels so good right now. He's like, oh, I'm going to make this play, or I'm going to take on Juszczyk, who I've already got him out-leveraged. I'm going to make, oh, oh, shit. 
I just got hit from the side. And if you watch the end of this, you'll see it kind of, look, he goes down. Now he's going to get back up. Ayuk's going to go back after this. Oh. Beast. When watch it. Keep, keep letting go if we can, hopefully. Somewhere up there, Ayuk puts him down again. When they're scheming this, <laughs> hell yeah. yeah! When they're scheming this during the week, Ayuk obviously being a wideout, like who is his wide receiver coach scheming that for him, or is this in a team meeting? How does that work? As far so as whoever's this whoever's doing the run game, which we've talked about, Chris Furster, the offensive line coach, there's working yeah. in cahoots with Shanahan. This is all Shanahan stuff, but you get these different ideas every week, and you get these different. Hawker. Little wrinkles, like I said, off of all their stuff, which is awesome with what they do always, is you always get angles. Everything they do in Shanahan's scheme is to get angles. So now instead of a guy What's working like this. What's the angle? What's the angle? What's the angle? We get the angle here. We get the angle here. These guys can just seal. You get cheeks. We're looking for cheeks, boys. Find That's the right. cheeks. Oh, yeah. Find always the cheeks. looking for cheeks. cheeks. Slap the cheeks. Out. Steal right. block. There's your block. Bam. Oh, there's your hole in me. Boom, boom, you imagine, boom. imagine the play action off of that. You got linebackers don't want to get cracked. They just shoot it up in there like, oh, no, this is a naked – this is a boot here, and then the guys are running scot-free. I mean, how good Kill. is this, AJ, right? Like, I mean, you've seen a billion different schemes, right? Like, how good is this when you can take what has been drawn up as a weak side ISO for 100 years and you just add one little thing and everybody's like, Kyle Shanahan's brilliant, which he is because most people are scared to make that little adjustment. But if they're not leading in the third quarter or the fourth quarter, then he's not brilliant, you're saying. Then it's tough. Then it's okay. tough. I think the thing that I enjoy about this in the trenches is we would have never known that that's a scheme thing. We would have no, been just no. like, oh, you got blocked into that guy. Yeah. And then at first it's like, no, like they schemed this up perfectly, and the Chiefs did exactly what they thought they were going to do. Yep. And how could you not, I guess, if you're the Chiefs, is what A.J. was saying? Exactly. I mean, that's, that's what I love about it. And I also think – I also think with Yushek going there and them exchanging responsibilities, it gives Trent the freedom to run off the ball because I think he can help him if he does work inside. You see what I'm saying? So they're almost working in conjunction. Who's the uh, offensive line coach doing this? Chris Furster. Dog. What is he He's great. famous for? Where was he before? Stud. Was he in Miami? Really good coach. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were oh, right. that's right. Ball. Dolphins O-line meeting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's oh, get yeah. fired that's up. Right. He's that's fucking right. a great offensive line coach, though, you're saying. He's yeah. Arguably yeah. the best in the NFL. He's my favorite. He's got very, more hours in the day than everybody. Yeah. Very, very good. Yeah. <laughs> Energy very. like you couldn't dream about. Mm -hmm. Hey, we got some big bumps. Big Ooh, bumps. Big bumps. Big this bumps. week there was a couple big bumps. A couple big bumps. A couple big bumps. What I love, I love this guy coming out in the draft. Comes from Wisconsin, Whitewater, Division Three. So why is he, what's he doing when he comes into the NFL? He's coming in with a chip on his shoulder. Hell yeah. I love guys with chips on the shoulder because they're always trying to prove. They're always trying to be pricks. They're always trying to do the extra dirty yeah. stuff. I he like was on Good Morning stuff. Football every day. Uh, yeah, like two months. months. He's yeah. the prince of Whoa. GMFB. Yeah. He was doing a great job yeah. on there every morning. Yeah. He was lifting logs and shit. Yeah. Yep. yeah, Has dreads, right? Yes, he does. Okay, yeah, and we know who you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Dog. Dog. Quinn dog. Miners. Quinn Miners. We're going to get a little like man four. play. We're going to get a pin and pull. Here's the pin. Here's the pull. Check this out. We're getting the trap right here. Boom. Oh, now watch Quinn. He gets him down. And now watch this. Uh oh. Now wait for it. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Oh, 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 look how excited this guy oh, just got. Oh, that's oh, illegal. Look at that smile. I mean, that is that's unbelievable. Oh, that was that wasn't legal. I thought they made that. They're not allowed. You guys aren't allowed to do that yeah, anymore. Yeah, that is a fucking cheap shot. I he love was getting it. up. If there's no flag. He's on his way up. If there's no flag, we're, hey, keep doing that, Quinn. Ooh. Boom. 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 Finish the play. Boom. Finish him. Boom. 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 How, Boom. how good is that? Jeez. Pretty sweet. You love that guy, huh? I just love finish. That's why I like Tevin Jenkins. Yeah. The guy's trying to oh, finish yeah. on every play. Uh -huh. Hell yeah. Tevin well, Jenkins, right finishing. guard from the Chicago Bears. Mm -hmm. Right guard from the Bears. He's been finish on the big the bump segment this year. He's also he's always helping and trying to go get ribs. He's trying to bury people. He's trying to put people down. So right. this is called big dirty bumps? Yeah. No, oh, this is called big bumps. Big dirty Boom. bumps. Big That's an S T D. So like offensive linemen are like or that guy else. that tried taking a rib from Jesus. They're always trying to get ribs. Always trying to get rid of Well, I think the Marilyn rib Manson. was marriage, wasn't it? Yeah. This play. I thought that was to create. Marilyn Manson? To I, create Eve. You know, I, Marilyn did the rib so he could so fellatio. He could suck yeah. his dicky, dude. That's, That's right. right. My bad. My he's bad. ding ding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Good for him. We'll, we'll start calling these Marilyns so he can finish his play. Because we're taking ribs out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are called Marilyn. No, Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Manson. Mm -hmm. Marilyn Monroe just had a movie. Apparently it wasn't good. Stunk.
Marilyn Monroe has been dead for 50 years. Uh, Moment of silence they just, for Marilyn Monroe. They just yeah. made, Damn. They just made yeah, a movie right. about her, dude. It's called Who killed Bond. her? Honored, she died? Honored de Armas. I don't you know. know. I do not know any, but anything about Marilyn Monroe. It's super. I mean, Connor does. Yeah, I, I know how she died. I just We're so trying to have a moment of silence yeah. for Marilyn Monroe. I apologize. Oh, we are? Wasn't she friends with Fidel? I just found out she passed away. Yeah. So. What's so funny? Mm-hmm. Everybody Come needs to relax. A couple of weeks ago. But yeah. No. This is almost as bad as Shinzu, I assume, with yeah. how everybody's mm-hmm. acting. No. I, I assume mean, Marilyn Monroe's been dead for a long time. Not yeah. nearly no, as no. long as Shinzu. Her movie. <laughs> in AJ's referencing, it does appear she might have been death by a doorknob. And we know how that all, all right. works. Okay. What? what? Doorknob. Big political shows. Remember that. That's right. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah, you do. I don't either. No. Rest in peace, America. I don't. Monroe. Rest in peace. Like Tony. Are we going back to some big dirty? Yeah, let's do it. Bourdain. Let's do it. Here Where we go. Are we in no. the trenches? That or wasn't her. We're in the a lot of trenches right now. <laughs> not, not just the football ones. What we got here, AK? You know what? I wouldn't rather be in here. any other trench with any other guys. Hell yeah! I pray not for winning because God willing we God shall. God willing we <laughs> shall. Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Let's go. We ready? Hell yeah. yeah. All right, let's I go. got a conversation with some senators tonight about our guy Gump, by the way. So nice. Here we go. Let's go. Yeah, I'm tired of running around. If we all uh, are. straight to the source. If you don't get anywhere, maybe mention UFOs. See where we're at. Who are you that talking front. to, Dr. Oz or. <laughs> <laughs> He's running. I see the ad. Is he? Sure is. is he, yeah. Are you talking to Kane? Not an actual position. He's doing like a... Governor, I'm pretty sure. Governor? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Pennsylvania. Governor. Whoa, he's from Pennsylvania? He's oh, going yeah. against... Uh, it's a heated battle. <laughs> Dr. Oz yeah. is yeah. going against some guy yeah. from Braddock. Or not Braddock. Yeah. Yeah, Braddock. Braddock? Yeah. Fetterman's from Braddock? <laughs> there he is. Revitalized Braddock. Fetterman? Oh, boy. It's, I Fetterman's think, I think running this year? Versus, Braddock is a, I think it's a big left versus right fucking political race. Most are. Oh, you don't no, say. No, no, I mean, like, this is a big one. I'm, this is, like, I'm far being, left, far this, right. This is a big oh. one. Dr. Oz? Yeah. All right. Where does he fall? Oh, we know where he falls. He's, He's uh, in Pennsylvania, I guess. People are pissed because I guess he lives in either Jersey or New York or something. I, or I was sh- I'm startled to know that he's from Pennsylvania. He's not. Okay. All right, great. He's running, though. He's going to be the governor of a state he doesn't live in or from? I don't know. That was legal. Can you do that? I guess so. The doctor, I, I guess. So. Well, good luck out there, Dr. <laughs> Oz. You got it, Doc. Good luck out there, the guy from Braddock, too. If a guy becomes governor from fucking Braddock, what a story. For those who don't know, Braddock is a... I mean, you got to be a real motherfucker to be from Braddock. That's right? awesome. Yeah. Get that guy in office, then. I mean... Dr. Oz is running for governor? I think the Braddock guy, too, is not on, like, he's not on Connor's side. Uh, yeah, because I was thinking Dr. Drew. Dr. Oz is on Connor's side. Dr. Drew is running for governor? <laughs> no, that's no. what I pictured in my mind. <laughs> Same. And we Dr. Know Drew it. did go to school, okay? Has many, ma- that was the guy we had on. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Yeah. Oz, didn't he go to school? Yes, he did. I don't know, he's running for governor, I guess. Jesus. All right, let's move on. <laughs> if, he, if he's not on my side, is he trying to bring fucking mass back to Pennsylvania? No, no, Dr. Oz, I think you'd like his running. Yeah, Dr. Stances. Oz is on your side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. On really? your side. We're Americans. What are we fucking talking That's about? Right. That's Connor. right. We're on American side. You heard side. Connor earlier about fucking sleepy time and <laughs> coloring books. Look, you know. I'm not the one that makes the commander in chief schedule, all right? It's him. What is your problem? That's our president. That's yeah. It well, might be Pennsylvania's governor, Dr. Oz. Yeah. He used to have a pretty. A, Good daytime show, show mm-hmm. yeah. Careful with our president, too. AJ's going to get pissed and hang up <laughs> if you say that. <laughs> are we not all on the side of yeah, everybody? We, that we are. AJ, I am. Ohio. Liberty and justice for all. Amen. Uh, Amen. Oh, no, Con, Amen. We see right through you, Con. We see right through you. That's impossible. I'm fat. It's Idiot. for Senate, by the way, as well, not for governor. <laughs> Either way, same thing. I don't know what that means. I'm talking to some of them you tonight, mean, though. Center. Let's go. I need to get, we need to get Gumpy back in. Yes. Why would you tell us to talk about this during your segment? I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know you were getting just, political within right. the trenches all of a sudden. What's this guy's deal? It sounds like you're the most political one out of everybody. <laughs> what? That's what I'm just learning. <laughs> no. That's what I'm learning no. here. No. Anyways, rest in peace to Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. Yeah. Miss you, Marilyn. Yes. <laughs> Honestly. That's right. Mm-hmm. The Marilyn Manson will be what we call the cheap shots to the ribs because they're yes. trying to take one out. Yeah, perfect. Boom. Boom. Dr. Oz, all right. <laughs> guy from Braddock, good luck. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right, all right let's get into this. We're entrenched with the Cowboys. Is this a big bump here? It's a big bump. Optic bump or like actual bump? It's a, this one will get talked about in this offensive line room all week long. 
Oh. Okay. So Not bumped. optically like, okay, we just crushed him God damn it. sideways. But who do we got here? We got Aiden Hutchinson. Top five pick, right? Number yeah. two. Number two. Number two overall. There it is. You're not going to be real excited after this one. Oh. Oh. No. Why are we picking on the rookie? He had a good game. Tyler Smith, other rookie. That's we got right. another rookie, right? Oh, First round pick. No. Tulsa, I believe. Oh, no. Top 20 pick. Boom. Great set. Hands are ready. Let's go. Get your hands on him. Oh, the bull rush is coming. What are we going to do now? Dump Torque him. Oh. 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 Damn. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, my God. God. Come on. Come on. Do that. It's a great finish. It's a great finish. It's like holding to me. Hands are inside. Holding. Now we're going to torque him inside. Dragged him down. And we just bury him. Hutch. Come on. Hutch, Hutch had a big one. time third down sack this game. Yeah, two did. of them. Yep. Finally got some sacks out of him. Whoa. Finally got some production out of him. Whoa. 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 But pushing it in here we go. <laughs> look it, at that. That's not a position you want to be in. When we look at that, that's a great way to slow this thing. Watch this thing. Oh, he slides. Oh, He's like, oh, shit. Help. Oh, shit. What do I do? I miss Michigan. I'm happy he didn't get hurt in there. Yeah. 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 That's dangerous. It yeah. is dangerous. But how good is that by, he, the, by, by the rookie left tackle? It's pretty good. Awesome. Ate the bull and rush. If he would have been hurt, though, AQ, if he would have been hurt, sorry to cut you off, they probably would have changed the rules and said this is illegal. They would have, they would have, he'd be up in arms, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is well Aiden played. Hutchinson. Well yeah. played, AJ. He was the guy. He's not having as fast as the starters. I thought he had a sack this past weekend. He had two sacks he had like this three weekend. three in one game. Two had, sacks this weekend? Two. Yeah, and then he did have three in one game, but let's keep in mind. Five sacks? Pretty but, good. but it was against Carl Wentz. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? It's they five sacks. No, I like it. I think he's doing really good. I mean, he's young, too. He's got know. five sacks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you saying? I'm saying he got buried on that particular play. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Hey, we appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an entrenched Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We had to veer off there to have a moment of silence, and then that led into a conversation sure. about a guy from Braddock taking on Dr. Oz in a fucking – so he's running for something in Braddock? No, oh, he governor. used to be the mayor of Braddock. Yeah. Now he's running for Senate. But isn't Senate also, or is that just the whole state? Two of those per state. Say fuck it. Well, there's also anything. state senators, less important. Yeah, this. Well, is... the state senator was the one that came out about the commander's football field, and we mm -hmm. all thought it was actual senator. Yes. And it was a big deal, right? Yes, yeah. correct. Okay, what is Doctor Oz doing? Senate. Actual Senate? Yes. Yes. In Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Yep. Interesting. Good luck out there, everybody. Wants to change the world. Yep. Right. Good luck. You got this. Hope you do. Honestly, we're all counting on you. Yeah, we are. We're all counting on you to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Let's we hope do. we do that. Right, AJ? Oh, yeah. We'll get it figured out. Well, yep. hopefully, everybody goes to the ballot box and picks the right answers. That's mm -hmm. right. And then everything gets figured out quickly. Mm-hmm. It's that easy. Sorry, I mean, John. Look at this fucking guy. That guy's a dog. Yeah, that's Braddock, dude. Hell, yeah. That's yes. A, on, I had no idea what this guy looked like, but when we were talking about somebody from Braddock earlier, I thought of this guy. Yeah. <laughs> this is the guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a what thin you, blue line tattoo? Yeah. Dude, Braddock don't play. I'm telling you, if a guy from Braddock ends up being – that's a big deal. That's a big storyline. Yeah, I don't know why AQ is making fun of this guy. Is yeah. this what I look like? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do got spitting like image. that guy. If we get Dr. you a Dr. has double sleeves, I heard. No mustache. That's, that's what set him apart. Yeah. Just the goat at yeah, the bottom. the under part. He's got oh. some Luca Garza in it. Well, good luck to everybody running Delicious. into the thing. That I hope you're the right one. Yeah. Get I think, it done. I think those are soon. If I know anything about politics, I know a lot of talking right now. Mm -hmm. And then not a lot of walking on the other side. That's right. right. This is the year that that changes, right? Reg Should be. Yeah. Register to vote. Register to vote. And whoever you vote for, make sure it's the person that's going to fucking work. That's that right. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. Yeah. I don't know enough about it to give my influence on anybody. So I will, you know, be responsible with my platform, which other people should think about doing as well. <laughs> but I would like to let everybody know. Whoever you vote for, make it the right one because we're all living in this shit together. Hell yeah. Right. Hell yeah. Well said. I can't wait for all the celeb, the celeb videos trying to guilt us into voting. Those well, are always those are awesome. And then all the, I'm going to move, and then they never move because yeah. they've actually been to other countries. And other countries suck, you know, when you go to them for <laughs> more than four days. Yeah. There's a chance that yeah. every country has their downfalls, you mm -hmm. know. But it would be nice. It would be nice <laughs> if everybody got it right every time. Though. It would. Please. Like this time, I would like everybody to get it right. Let's do some common sense. Mm -hmm. Let's fucking get it right because, you know, yeah. our lives depend on it every mm -hmm. fucking day. Mm -hmm. And in those voting in Indiana, whoever's figuring out city planning, state yep. planning, yep. potholes, 
Would love to see what marijuana could do on the mm-hmm. on the entire ballot. Yeah, highway reconstruction. Out. Highway reconstruction. Let's make sure we vote those people in. I'm not doing enough research to know who those people are. Mm-hmm. I'm counting on Hoosiers to do it. That's right. That are much smarter than me. Get it done. Register to vote. Register to, to vote. That's our show. <laughs> That's what our show is every day, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boom. 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 That's what our show is. Oh, yeah, I tuned in. I tuned. Oh, I watched. I watched a decent amount of you guys Saturday night, and I tuned in towards the end when you guys were throwing the football back and forth. Just said, boom, boom, for like five minutes. <laughs> seven, I think it was like seven minutes, I think. Did anyone count? You guys look good. Ball See still hasn't many? hit the ground. Still you guys were spinning it. Hell yeah. What the fuck were we supposed to do for that? <laughs> that. <laughs> to make it in. What were it we? It might have been the most boring game of all time. It's tough because they knew. Like the stats 108 to nothing or something in the last yeah, 45. What are you about? The spread was only 21 and a half. That was awesome. That was the last bet I've won. <laughs> about the Patriots losing. What the fuck? I don't want to close the show on a bad note, but mm-hmm. Connor, you're not off the hook yet. We got to revisit this tomorrow yep. on whether or not the Patriots are dead. The quarterback situation will obviously break down more senator races yep. oh, yeah. across the country <laughs> as we move into political season. AJ, I appreciate you joining us. AQ, great work today. Tone, what a job. Hammer da-da. Da-da. is in like 15 minutes at youtube.com forward slash hammer. New studio about to debut here in the next week or so. Oh, yeah. The talks to table at Boston Connor, at Ty Schmidt, all the boys in the back. I appreciate you. Obviously, Jordan Schultz, Aaron Rodgers, thank you so much for your time. Let's make the world a little better place. Let's make it a little happier place. Let's say nice things to each other, and let's try to enjoy this time that is very limited we have together. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you in about 20 hours. Goodbye.